Hello, and welcome to day three of the Roach Crossing April Spring Bugapalooza giveaway and all this other stuff, and more of everything. We begin today with a giveaway that I have to figure out what the question I'm going to ask is. Let me say hello to everybody who's here already. We got Tennyson, Kingsley, Kasharin, Loki, Stephen Logan, Luch, Satchel, Devin, Duke and Enzo, uh, Exotic Wilderness. Hello. Um, I think we need more people here before I start doing auctioning, but I got to figure out what we are. Uh, oh, I got to tag everybody too. And everyone. Bidding begins. I'll even put a thing in general too in case there's any lazy bums out here. Bidding begins in Bid Central. All right. Just to bring everybody up to Steve. What's up, brother? Good morning. Lower scales, JoJo Bugs, Zen Monkey, Hive, Helopolis, Dewey. Alan came up with the best villain backstory for Dr. Humroid. Lick the like button, everybody. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, Alan, tell me Dr. Hemroyd's uh, tragic best villain backstory. I got coffee today. Satchel, I'm not 100% sure when your stuff is going to be, but it's on the docket. Probably after I going to be after isopods. That's all that I know for sure. So... Um, you're going to need that coffee. I really did. Angela went out and got it for me, and it is crucial to the game plan today. I was trying to think of what. <laughs> Ask for the um, for the giveaway. No, I asked people to come up with the best backstory is what I mean. Uh, yeah, I like that idea. I got to... I got to workshop that though. Maybe have people submit like a paragraph for backstory with a sentence and word limit. That way it really, really uh, sifts through uh, the, the gives only the people doing the, the best work cream being the most creative, the, the, the potential to shine off to work today. Enjoy the auction. Everyone mm -hmm. says hyper beam. Um, again, I'm sitting here trying to figure out what we want to do for a giveaway. And also finishing up some administrative stuff. Uh, I found out today that we will be having some more beetles in the evening, uh, evening stuff. So, um, yeah, we're going to see. Honestly, probably the best choice. Ask a question only I can answer. Um... I had a meme, a meme joke. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it later. Thirty-one viewers. Be sure to smash the like button. Also, good news. Uh, when I opened up YouTube this morning, it gave me the little notification about like uh, sign up, prep your YouTube memberships, blah blah blah. Finish your YouTube memberships, setting stuff right now and stuff so all the views from the last uh couple days have uh, pushed the channel up into being eligible for i think memberships and some other things so that's good still trying to get that monetization uh that should come naturally once we get uh, a thousand 1k subs everybody uh dewey and alan he was just a normal doctor until the hemorrhoids Reared his ugly head, turning him bitter and angry after years of intensive medical study and research. He finally isolated a compound in roach hemolymph, and now he spends his day buying roaches and extracting this component to keep his 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 uh, hemorrhoids at bay. <laughs> we will go, Kyle. Defeat the algorithm. You need 1K subs and 4K watch hours. We are far over the watch hours. Uh, but the subs is the issue currently. The watch hours is not going to be a problem. We have the auctions powering uh, powering the channel from two ends of the year. So 1K subs, here we come. Hopefully we'll be able to do it before the move or maybe it'll happen right after the move. I don't know. 
but yeah, I'm still floundering here trying to figure out uh, trying to figure out a question to ask. Kyle posts YouTube shorts. It gets you heck a lot of subs. I have been posting more shorts of the dogs, and I will continue to do that. I'm really going to go. We're going all in on the social media machine after the move. We just don't have the means and the lifestyle to do that right now. After the move, though, that will be a different story. Exotic Willingness got hundreds from shorts. Again, it's another thing that I have to think about and focus on and work into a daily routine. It will not be difficult to upload two shorts a day once I move, and I'm on in that mindset grind set. You know, a bunch of minions are ready to work for bugs, so we will be ready. It will be terrible but funny. One of the snakes again, what specific issues they know when dealing with the snakes as far as shipping and whatnot. Uh, snakes are right now, but I'm flound- I'm waiting for some more people to funnel in. And I'm also floundering to figure out a giveaway question to ask because I promised Exotic Wilderness we'd do a giveaway to start today. And um, let's do uh let's do a let's do a giveaway of um, we'll just do a dozen <clears throat> ground for Narina, Portentosa, Masola, and now I gotta come up with a giveaway question. When is Loki's birthday? That's funny. Bless exotic wilderness. Um, boy, what's a good question to ask? Hmm. Hmm. I like questions about tactical terms. Um, and you know what? We got the goats coming on Tuesday, so I've got a, I got a good one for you. Um, this 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 disadvantages uh, city slickers, but that's okay. So the question is, what is the term for for breeding a goat? in order to get a fresh supply of milk again this is this is probably if you're if in the agricultural know-how what is the last word is so loki loki is the winner beating out zen monkey freshening shows loki i'll post it in the uh, in the discord for posterity uh, but good job, Loki. You got it right off the bat. And I'm curious, how did you know that? Did you look it up or did you know it already from, from life experience? I'm curious. I'm going to write this down in my records. Ground for the right of Portentosa. Sola, 12-0-0. Loki is the winner. Chris Sniper was right there. Um, it was, I was just typing, sounds minty. Uh, a hyper fixation on livestock pays off. I I appreciate when a hyper fixation pays off. And you know what? They say it doesn't pay off, and it literally did here. So screw all those naysayers. Uh, Chris Amos said I had no idea. Hello, Chris Amos. No clue. Welcome. The Wild Martin. Martin, I haven't seen you in a bit. Welcome. Good to have you back around. Who wants to freshen me? <laughs> Oh, that's a hot, that's a zesty take so early. He had to know he was that fast, had no clue. That goat is so fresh. Uh, hello, Dynamo Terra. Hello, everybody. All right, we've got a good, we've got a good audience. Um, I think I'm going to post, I'm going to, because uh, of the way that people's brains work, I'm going to grab the rules about the snakes and I'm going to post it with every uh, snake that is up for uh, up for grabs. Uh, where is the, I'm gonna have to find it on the blog post. I swear guys, we're gonna get to bidding any second now. I just gotta find out where the rule thing for the uh, shipping was. Uh, blah, blah, blah. All winning bid orders other than hard goods, dry reptiles, blah, blah, blah. Um, all snakes must be shipped through FedEx. This cost is calculated and charged separately from all their auction wins. Rule number eight will be going up with every snake thing so that there is no misunderstanding or miscommunications here about how these snakes must be shipped. With that being said, 
No one wants to steal go. And any photos if you've got them? Oh, we do not have photos of the snakes you're bidding on. We have the snakes that you are bidding on. I'm going to get my phone out because Kim has been gracious enough to provide excessive information about all of the lines of snakes that we have. So we're going to start with our first snake here. This is got to make sure that they're labeled properly. This is this is a and this is B and of course one of them is in shed but oh well. All right, we have Lampro, I'm going to write this all out. Lampro peltis. One male Lampro peltis. Polyzona. Kosala locality. Sinaloan milk snake. With a, let's see, hatch 918. 2023 frozen frozen thawed feeding. Is there any more information? Ah, yes, the starting bid. Starting bid of 120. We will see the snake in a moment here. This is individual A. I'm going to put snake is in live stream and rule number eight there so we're going to take a look at this kosala locality sinaloan milk snake and i will read some information which kim has provided on the snakes so let's take a look at this this dude um got a couple breaks in the pattern there on the uh on the ventrum Dorsally, there's a couple of, of breaks as well. Pretty good handler. Uh, sexed male. Uh, not into col colubrids or balls. The nice thing about uh, all of Kim's stock is he focuses on uh, localities and historic lines of stuff. Any Mexican black kings. No, no Mexican black kings in this auction, but Kim does work with them. Um, any photos if you again we don't need photos we've got we've got uh, the live organism right here captive produced by Kim let's hear a little bit about uh, this um, this locality and some information from uh, about the stock these Kosala Sinaloans are from David Niles's line that he introduced to the hobby around 2008 David Lott David Niles stock. Um, Kim notes that Kosala Sinaloans remain bright red their entire lives, unlike Sinaloans from other populations, which typically darken with age. Male Sinaloans grow to around four feet long, females to between three and four feet, and typical of coral snake mimics Baby Sinaloans are jumpy when handled, but become calmer once they get over about 18 to 24 inches. Adults are calm when handled. And I like how he's saying that they're jumpy, and yet this little dude has not been flighty in the slightest. Um, the snake is like, um, I'm just trying to go for a stroll. Why am I being handled like a stim toy? Ball pythons, not at all. I keep large lizards that eat ball pythons for snacks. So... Um, thank you, everybody who's who's taking snapshots of these. These will be subjected to the same um, the same rules as uh, the the various other things are. They will go on to a pass list if nobody wants them. So, with all of Kim's animals, you are you are getting you will not find healthier snakes. I I cannot stress that enough. Um, they're all eating frozen thawed. Kim puts a lot of work into tracing his lines and taking care of the snakes. And 
there's there's not much more that I can say. Um, very pretty. Very pretty. And again, according to Kim, this locality will retain the bright red coloration into adulthood. Um, again, Sinaloan milk snakes. And I think Hondurans as well tend to darken with age. He's very neat. And he is very stim toy esque. I will uh, I will be getting some things from uh, from from uh, Kim very soon. Some some milks that I wanted, some localities that I wanted. I've been uh, I've been holding off. I get enough stuff from Kim as it is. There's a little bit of the. The flightiness, I guess. <clears throat> a lot of snakes don't like their necks touched without acclimation. So, all right. We're going to, uh, I guess we will we'll put this fellow away and we will move on to the next. And I, while I do that, I will check and see if there's any bids. If anybody, I guess if anybody wants to see the snakes, I don't know. He has, he has other ideas. He wants to stay out, <laughs> apparently. All right. Here's an X for bidding. If anybody is interested, uh, I will probably addend the rules and also add that X, uh, FedEx shipping is probably going to be in the range of $75-ish to the East Coast, $100 to the West Coast. Uh, for FedEx priority overnight, etc. All right, going, going once, going twice, and does not seem to be anybody interested, so we will pass. Um, while it's available at the starting bid price, we have one more of this locality. How many others do you have? I'm curious because I wanted to get a few, but I want to know the options and different species you have available. Uh, Predator uh, posted in the thing. We have five more snakes to go through today. So using ship my reptiles because uh, yes, but we don't, uh, we're not going to be, that, that was Kim's estimate plugging the numbers into ship your reptiles on things. So that is just, we we're giving people the worst case scenario approximation for, for things. Kim is, uh, Kim is very, Kim does not want people to be dissuaded by sticker shock or find out that, Oh, that was that much. So that's why the estimation is a bit high. It may be lower once we plug the numbers in with the box sizes and stuff. So, well, we just want it to be a very straightforward and reasonable experience. So, um, anyways, so male A, we're going to put back. We're going to look at the next individual. Male A is available for 120 to whoever would like uh, would like him. Predator wants it. All right, sold. Predator. I'm going to do a separate sheet for uh, for Kim here. With all this information copied. And Predator also, if you need any of that additional information um, uh, provided to you that I just said, I'm happy to include that about the, the origins of the stock and all of that. Uh, another thing is, the next one we have is another male available However, Kim, again, Kim does produce all these snakes, and they're, I think that at the fall auction or over the summer, at some point we will have, um, we will have more, uh, we will have females of the, this locality available, so, so you all know. Um, let's see, I'll grab my, uh, my little information here. Congratulations, Predator. You're going a females of this locality at fall auction. Thank you for adding that, Dilo. Okay, we have the uh, poly, another polyzona. This one hatched September 18th. 
Oh, wait, did these both have September 18th? Yes, both are half September 18th, 2023. Um, this is mail B. Let me go ahead and grab the uh, information via rule number eight. Let's get this little dude out here. It is unfortunately in shed. This is a little bit bigger than the other one. And on the dorsum has a complete pattern with no breaks or aberrancies in the pattern. So this is, I'll go through and grab this information from Kim while we look at this guy again. This individual is in shed. It is in shed and not, not bitey, uh, surprisingly. All right, Kosala Sinaloans remain bright, bright red their entire lives, unlike uh, Sinaloans from other populations, which typically darken with age. Male Sinaloans grow to around four feet, females to between three and four feet. Typical of coral snake mimics, baby Sinaloans are jumpy when handled, but become calmer once they get over 18 to 24 inches. Adults are calm when handled. Um, and then more information... These Kosala Sinaloans are from David Niles' line that he introduced to the hobby around 2008. I guess I don't smell very good. Hopefully I taste better than I, than I smell. Uh, also, no broken rings. Thank you to the people who are, are getting screen caps off of the, uh, the live stream. So, again... I will communicate to Kim uh, that we we need to get some uh, females into the running. This is, again, this is a trial run to see how uh, this whole thing goes with Kim. And there will be more stuff in the future uh, pending how everything goes with this. This is a very pretty snake. Uh, I don't think this is the uh, subspecies that I was going to get from Kim. But I'm the more that I handle it, the more I kind of want kind of want it. Um, why do you need to be tasting good? I don't know, in case the snake decides it needs a snack. Uh, again, I generally try and grab females over males for first snakes, says Royal Dillo. I'm curious why that is. Wish I had the money and supplies for a snake. Man, a milk boy would be so cool. Um, so there was, a, there was a post on, I think it was on Thamnophis.org or whatever a, a long time ago by some longtime colubrid keepers. And this woman had sworn by, if you live in North America, she was making the point that you should not need to give supplemental heat to your colubrid snakes because your house is going to, as long as the room is relative relatively synced up with the outdoor seasons you know if it's going to get hotter in the summer and colder during the winter your colubrid snakes will just naturally sync up and they'll they will be able to digest food properly and all that stuff with the temp ambient temperature of your house so i have my back guest room that gets very warm during the uh summertime it gets pretty cold in the winter not freezing it's like i don't know high 50s low 60s probably warmer than that um and I could see that because, uh, was it Bert Langdorf, that guy who bred all those crazy lizards and stuff, was like, you know, for three months of the year, some of these lizards are active above ground and feeding and reproducing and stuff. And then for like the other nine months, they're like fasting, they're brumating, they're not doing anything. And uh, I think Bert was, Bert, Bert kind of argued it was kind of unnatural for our uh, reptiles, for, for tempter, temperate reptiles to be active for as long as we usually have them, or as, uh, basically the conditions we subject them to in captivity were not unnatural. Uh, but our houses have AC, yes, okay, that's why I said um, if your house is being forcibly cooled during the summertime and you are an air conditioning fiend where your house has to be on 65 when it's 85 outside, um, that is that does not work. However, if you have any room that's subject to a good degree of seasonality, the argument was the snakes will be just fine. They're adapted to digesting things at those temperatures, and they will naturally cycle with the seasons just as they do in the wild. Also depends 
on the species too is another good argument um and also not just uh the southern southernliness of things but whether or not it's from um, uh, montane places we think of uh, mexico as a very hot place you think of arizona as a hot place but then you go up into the mountains and it's getting almost as cold as michigan all winter and not even uh warming up until uh june may or june in some cases some places depending on elevation so uh even corns yes i think corns is the primary member of that argument thank you for the uh the the good pictures crusty pineapple let's put an x here for this <coughs> uh kosala locality sinaloan milk snake i'll just sit here and play with snakes all day <laughs> this is a very nice individual Look at this guy. Again, really making me want to get these, but I will probably pester Kim for the, like, fresh out of the egg, uh, uh, most expensive-looking individuals. Uh, how long are the snakes going for? We're scheduled until 11, and I think we're going to be on time with that. Uh, we don't have those mountains in Texas. How does bulls everywhere? You do in western Texas, though. Because uh, there's, you know, there's places where there's Dynasties Grantii and uh, Chrysina uh, uh, Gloriosa. Snake self-regulated, I would think a still a light in the back would be required. I don't think it hurts to give snakes supplemental heat. That's not the argument I'm, that I am uh, backing up here. Because they will definitely, um, they will definitely, they're definitely going to thermoregulate. They do that. They do. We see them do that in the wild. Um, the argument was with colubrid snakes, especially non-diurnal ones, was that it's not really, it's not as critical as it's pushed to be that they need this constant heat, and that it may actually be detrimental to them, uh, even to keep them at elevated temperatures year-round. So, uh, would you say more expensive individuals? I'm curious. The same species and locale, yes, but it's more like um, I'm very, I'm very uh, obsessive, compulsive with uh, snake patterning, and this individual is very beautiful, and I would be very tempted by it. However, um, I am a little annoyed at how close these two bands are on the body. <laughs> and again, if I saw this at an expo and I was looking for a Kosala locality, I would buy it, but. Um, if there were an individual right next to it that had these uh, bands spaced a little further apart, I would buy that individual over this individual unless it was a pair. That's basically what I'm saying is I would pick the one that doesn't the one that doesn't upset my OCD fresh out of the egg and beg him to let me claim dibs on it is basically what I'm saying. However, again, if I was longing for this, uh, this species of milk snake and I hadn't seen them at an expo and I saw this one, I would almost certainly buy it, is what I'm saying. All right, going once. Going twice. All right, we will pass on individual B. He is up for grabs if anybody wants to claim him. All right. Next up, we have a we have something a little different. Kyle appreciates uniformity. I really do. The one is cool with the rings close, though. Luch arguing the exact opposite of uh, of what I was saying. I'm going to. Uh, we're going to note this individual B is not spoken for. If somebody would like to speak for it, you go right ahead. Next up we have, i got to save this to the desktop because it's a different document. Kim Snakes Auction .doc X. Um, so yes, anybody wishes to claim uh, him, he is, he is available. Uh, individual A didn't have any kinks like close rings. No, no close rings, but there were broken rings in the uh, in the pattern from the dorsum. Okay, next up we have uh, these should not be unfamiliar. Um, these should not be unfamiliar to anybody. 
Wait, why do I have? Okay. We have, let's see what my format is for the snakes. It's a mouthful compared to the, uh, the bug sales. We have one female. I'm going to look up the Latin for this. And also hope that it's properly updated. Looks like it is. Uh, we have one female. What did I, what did I write that? Cosella locality. Okay, we put the common name in brackets. Uh, Zamenis longissimus, which is the S Q. SQ Asclepian, which is pronounced entirely differently from how it's spelled. Uh, Asclepian, Asclepian rat snake hatched July 14th, 2023. Frozen thawed feeding. Um, starting bid of 250. individual two these are labeled with numbers and now with letters like the other ones were individual two could i swap and claim b if possible if not it's all good predator i think that is acceptable i will swap them on the document here that uh predator is claiming individual b over individual a and that's because Predator is the only person who's bid so far, and Predator was bidding yesterday, blah, blah, blah. So individual A is now up for grabs again. Let's look at this Asclepian rat snake here. And then we'll learn some more about the strain. Um, this was, this was uh, arguably maybe the first domesticated reptile that since uh, has fallen out of domestication. Um, take these broken rings and learn to sliver again. Slither again. Um, perfectionism and OCD are different things. Uh, there, there's, I definitely do have a, a obsessive compulsive tendencies, um, but there's also perfectionism blended in there as well. Um, now we do vertebrates, which can get almost as weird as the grain pests. Woot. Elsie says, hello, Kyle. I am broke to bid today, but I hope you and everyone else having a great day and you win what you want. Thank you, Elsie. Um, so anyways, Asclepian snakes, Asclepian rat snakes were originally arguably domesticated. Uh, there was a temple in, I think it was in Greece. I'm going to go ahead and read off of the... Uh, the uh, Wikipedia about the past. Here we go. I'll just do a nice wiki walk on this species. The Asclepian snake was first described by blah, blah, blah. Okay, we don't care about that. We want to get with the history. Um, um, here we go. The common name of this species, Asclep in French and its equivalents in other languages, refers to the classical god of healing, Greek Asclepius and later Roman also Asclepius, whose temples the snakes was encouraged around. Uh, it is surmised that the typical depiction of the god with the snake entwined staff features the species. So this is the snake of the, uh, of the rod of Asclepius of the healing staff that you often see. And also... Uh, the actual symbol of healing or, or medicine uh, is not the double serpent winged staff. That is a different symbol. It is the single serpent on the rod. Uh, that is the actual uh, staff of healing based on uh, uh, the uh, Greek mythology of As Asclepius. So, hey, you think you can let the cam focus on the snake? Thank you, Dylan. I can do that. Let's see what we, what we can do. Because this, this might be a little bit better. We can try and do the this approached approach to get to get this in focus. So this is a female hatched in 
July of, of 2023, feeding on frozen thawed, easy handling. I'll go, uh, let me pull up the starting bid prices hurt me. Um, again, these were at, these are, these are Kim's uh, discretion and we're trying some things out here. Let's see, maybe you can focus a bit better there. Snack is expensive. Oh, um, I think Kim is present in the audience and has alerted me. Starting bids are lower than label prices. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a quick edit here. My apologies on that, everybody. Somebody getting the picture of the snake next to my face. I'm gonna edit this to uh, Kim's Kim's uh, Kim's heat here. Edited lower starting. Bid. All right, starting bid of 150. Thank you for tuning in, Kim, and correcting that. <laughs> um, here we go. Here's the information on the <clears throat> any information on this line. We have um, the Asclepians are descended from animals imported from Germany by Greg Feaster back around the early 2000s. Greg was a big longissimus breeder in the late 90s to early 2000s. Kim adds that um, some populations of Asclepian rat snakes produce adults over five feet long, but these are descended from a population from German breeders and do not grow so large. The fathers of these babies are over 10 years old and just over four feet. The mothers are just over three feet. So this is a smaller population of Asclepian snakes. Should the milk snakes have gone for less too? Yes, we will do a um, predator. You, you, you won the bid, but we did apparently need to do a lower starting bid. I guess what I will say there, predator, is um, we will run the, the male Kosala locality that did not sell at a lower starting bid. And predator, if you're okay with it, we will since you, you did lock in the price on that, but with this new information from Kim, I feel bad. So how about I give you some bugs to make up for the value difference between the wrong starting bid and um, the price that you paid? If that sounds acceptable to you, we can go with that. We'll just rerun the Kosala um, bid for male A with the broken pattern. Um, any knowledge on, again, this is the information on the stock of the milk snake. I don't think Predator is watching the live stream. Uh, I will bring this up to Predator then uh, when they confirm their auction uh, stuff. Anyway, so starting bid is changed to 150 for the Asclepian snake female. They are on Discord. Oh, um, Predator is, is listening to the live stream. Just responded in the Discord, not the live stream. Um, he's watching just comments in Discord. Man, I really don't need more snakes, but I really like this. Um, so yeah, this, here you go. Here's a female Asclepian. I have one male and two females of these from Kim. I love them. They destroy any rodent that I give them. Uh, they're great. I, I look to start producing them in the next year. I'm going to hopefully start producing my own. I think it's very interesting that this snake has very strong cultural significance uh, and is, you know, symbology that has been adapted into Western medicine. And uh, it's, it's very interesting. And also that they were pretty much domesticated because they were encouraged to be in and around the, uh, the temples. Uh, so it'd be interesting. Maybe you go to one of the temples of Asclepius and as you're walking up the steps, there's just dozens of, uh, of Asclepian rat snakes just hanging out because they're so acclimated to people and nobody bothers them. Any experience with shovel nose snakes? Um, a little bit. They like eating Arena Vega and Polyphaga uh, nymphs. Cobra, the starting bid for the individuals that got passed on um, is $75. We're going to rerun the individual A bid right after... We, um, we wrap up the Asclepian here. Here's an X for this for female two of the Asclepian snakes. If anybody would like to see any, any spe specific details, but 
There is not a flaw on this snake in terms of scale damage or anything like that. And as you can see, quite good for the handling. I like the little stripes by the eyes. There you go. You can see a little bit better. I like the little stripes by the eyes and the little yellow cheeks. I enjoy that. So we'll go ahead and put this female away. She says that she doesn't want to go back into the thing. She does not have a choice at the moment. I don't think many are set up for snakes. Says Dilo. Could be. Here's the X for the Asclepian. We're going to rerun the first male uh, Kasala locality. To copy this. This auction is being redone. All right, going once for the female Asclepian snake. Going twice. Pass. All right. I'm just going to put the information for the Kosala back up here. Individual A is up for grabs with a starting bid of 75. For individual A, we will take a look at him again in a second. I'm just going to grab the information for the uh, Longissimus female. Female number two is up for grabs still if anybody would like her with a cost of 150 starting bid. It's early. Some are still not awake. Um, there's an hour set aside for these. Time for inverts isn't being cut short. Uh, hashtag big central pictures. Don't know what that means. All right. We are running the the male A again. We won't take too much time here. As we have seen this this fellow once before. This is the first uh, male Kosala starting bit of $75. Thank you for intervening, Kim. Some points about this locality. Uh, the adult size is around uh, three to four feet. Uh, they calm down more in the two foot range. Uh, this locality keeps the, the strong red into adulthood. Uh, Zen Monkey is fascinated with these snakes. All right, all right, fascination's good. Could run the ones in the wait list again later as lighting, lightning rounds if people are interested. We could perhaps do that. Well, it's been 40 minutes for three. I believe there were six. So uh, there are six, but two of them are a, are a pair, are a pair. So that will probably go as a combo auction, and I have a feeling like people may be more interested in a pair of, uh, of somethings instead of onesie-twosie. So, um, all right. So we've we've seen male A. We're going to put an X here. If anybody uh, wants him in the future, you change your mind that you want the male with the broken pattern. He will be there unless somebody comes in right now and gets him. All right. Going once. Going twice. All right, pass. Mail A is on the pass list. If you would like him for $75, he is available. And a nice little snag. Okay. Uh, next up, we are going to do these. I agree with Dewey. I think they'll definitely later in the day. Um, we're going to do next up. We have a pair of something, and I think that we will go with them as a pair. I'm going to copy this. We have one male and one female, Lampropeltis 
annulata. Uh, tamalipin, tamalipin, milk snake, slash, Mexican milk snake, hatched 7 14, 2023, frozen thawed feeding, starting bid. For the pair is one fifty. We will take a look at both of them in a second here. I should copy paste my uh, my snake the rules notes bid rule number eight. Uh, Exotic Wilderness, the snakes are officially passed on. If you want them at their starting bid prices, uh, I'll have to ask Kim if they're unrelated, considering they have the same hatch date. I do not think that they are unrelated. They are probably clutch mates. Probably, but I can ask him about that. That being said, um, I Kim shares the belief with me that inbreeding is not a huge issue with things. Uh, as long as you are outcrossed, if, if you got stuff, it's probably outcrossed if it's wild caught in the first place. Let's take a look at the male from this pairing. Then we'll look at some of the information on these guys. When do giveaways happen? Interspersed randomly? Hello, Zach Edwards. Yes, they are interspersed rather randomly. We are currently looking at a tamalapin. Rat, uh, rat snake, milk snake, uh, hatched on January, July, January, July 14th, 2023. Some notes on this lineage from Kim. And this is for the pair. You get the male and the female. Um, the Mexican milks are locality animals from founders collected in Duval County, Texas. So this is specific locality stock of Mexican milk snakes. Mm -hmm. These are really nice, actually. <laughs> um, notes, more notes on the Mexican milks. Mm -hmm. Mexican milk snakes stay small, growing to just under three feet. They're pretty jumpy when small, but once they get around 18 inches, they calm down and handle nicely, as this one is handling nicely already, hilariously. They need small enclosures when small, and will be too nervous to thrive if put in spacious housing before they are over a foot or so. Uh, and Kim recommends this for all hatchling snakes. So this is the male, the very nice male tamalapin milk snake, also called the Mexican milk snakes. Again, you have the county information, so whatever taxonomic changes happen, you are ready for. Uh, you have the information, so you won't be like, I thought these were this, actually. So here is the male of the pair that you are bidding on. I would I would dare to uh, I would dare to get the female out at the same time. That's a little too chaotic, I think, for me. So perfect pattern, nice, healthy, vigorous individual, eating frozen thawed for sure as well. Don't forget the importance of having a well started snake that is actually taking frozen thawed, so that way you have the option. If you cannot, uh, if you cannot or don't want to use live, you have the easiest thing in the world: just a sack of uh, sack of pinkies or mice to feed. So here we are. For some reason, this the the spacing on this guy is not doing anything with my with my perfectionism and whatnot. The spacing is seems to be pretty fine. Good coloration, etc. You can't really tell because of the lighting on the stream, but the bands have a slight yellow tint to them. What a cutie. Thank you, Lizard Beans, for saying what a cutie. I think we're going to take a look at the female in a second here. As you can see, all very well-behaved, mild-mannered sna snakes. Uh, Kim uh, personally sees to their disciplinary actions. If they misbehave, uh, they, they, have to, they have to skip supper. Oh, the black belly. We've got some people who are liking the black belly on the uh, Mexican tumul tumulopin milk snake. 
Is it just two females for the rat snakes? Loki, it is currently two females. We will be looking at the second female. However, I know Kim is producing more of them this year, so it's very likely, should we run another snake auction again, that there will be uh, males in the fall or even over the summer auction. So take a look at the belly here on this Tumalopin uh, milk snake. Everyone liked the stream, by the way. Thank you for reminding everybody, Bree. Uh, we're going to put the male away. We're going to take a look at the female now. Now we have the female Tamalapin milk slash Mexican milk snake, Duval County. Ooh, she's got a nice orange band to the back of her head. Like that. <clears throat> Uh, probably get more bites if you did snakes the first day. I love snakes by much lower on money than I'd like. Um, yeah, we're still toying around with things. Maybe we do a separate snake auction at some point. I'm not sure. Um, so let's take a look at her. Dorsally, there's no major breaks in the pattern. There is one incomplete here. Doesn't really seem to irk me, though, for some reason. Uh, Duval, I like snakes by much lower on it, yeah. Uh, it is what it is. Again, that's why we're trying this out, testing the water, seeing how things go. <clears throat> Again, here's the female to the male that we just saw, Duval County, Tamalapin milk snakes. You can see that her, the bands on her head is a little bit more orange or yellowish than the bands on the body. Easy handlers. Thank you to the people who are annotating things of the female. After you move, you will do more auk often. I should legally herp and catch some locality snakes to you and then have you auction them for me in the fall. I maybe we'll do a bigger snake day or something like that, perhaps. I would I'd be down for that depending on uh, the timing and a lot of other things. But uh, we wanted to see how this would go. Um and, uh, you know, one, one snake's not bad. And maybe by the end of the stream, other people will, will have seen these guys and think, yeah, you know, I think I could do that. But at least they're out here. Again, quality stock. I would, I would heed everybody to, if you, if you want any of these snake species, get them from Kim. You will not find better snakes for the price overall. Um, Loki say, I think people would really like some garters or locality hog noses. I feel that way too. We're going to see. Uh, again, I eventually I'll be producing some snakes. I'm looking for and willing to sink money into locality Pueblin milk snakes. And that opportunity has not arisen in, in a hot minute for me. And that's unfortunate. But I'll keep holding out there. There's There's some people working with them. And I really want those really badly. Um. But also, Kim's kind of sold me on some of these other milk snake species. So there's there's a pair that's going to be coming home with me pretty soon. Sorry, I meant that as a question. Will you do more auctions once things are stable? Uh, we're all we're already running about six auctions a year. Is the number of auctions that have been had approximately between last spring and this spring? There's been about six auctions. So um, and it's likely. Once I move and I have, you know, I like to pay for things up front for supplies and renovations and all that, that I will say, oh, hey, we need a new goat fence. Uh, let's do an auction for this today. Oh, hey, here's the uh, uh, Kyle wants to buy the freshwater stingrays auction. So there will be things that pop up here and there. Well, this, these are the big auctions. This is the big three-day thing. It's very unlikely I'll do more than two three-day things a year uh, for now. Kyle's weekly auction. I've considered doing small auctions weekly. Uh, not now. With the move coming up, it's just too much. Anthony Green has risen. Anthony, we're looking at these beautiful tamalapin milk snakes, captive bred, eating frozen thawed, a sexed male, female hair. Belly, yes. A lot of people have been commenting on the belly of these snakes. It is quite nice. Uh, maybe at some point I'll show off some of the other snakes I've gotten from Kim. His uh, Okatee corn snakes are literally the best Okatees I've ever seen in my entire life. 
I have never seen a better OKT corn snake snake in my entire life. And they're the color on them makes all the fancy mamorphs look just just pale in comparison. They're just like flaming orange and red. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh I G to G Kyle, I say I want something than you. Uh, I swear to God, Kyle, say I want something than you say you're going. You're getting it or have it already. That color is insane. It is. They're beautiful snakes. Again, they look more washed out in the lighting here. Um, but they're they're every bit as colorful in person as you could imagine. This is a very convincing coral snake mimic, too. Having seen a coral snake once in my twice in my life, um, I I can say this is very convincing coloration. So we'll go ahead and put this female away. She really calmed down with the handling. We'll go ahead and check and see if there's been any bids. If there's not, I'll put an X for wrapping up bidding on the pair. It seems that uh, snakes are something people really consider uh, before buying, and that's good to think about a, an organism that may live over 10 years before you purchase it. Um, at the same time, these are very easy snakes. <laughs> This is you're not buying a uh, you're not buying a rainbow uh, what, what are those not rainbow boa rainbow um what are those ones from the swamp the the ones from the swamps down south rainbow snakes maybe it is just rainbow snakes you're not buying a file snake or an elephant trunk snake you're buying well started house mouse feeding uh, rat and milk snakes where is the last the last Asclepian. Oh, there she is. Individual three. All right, going once on the on the Tamalapin uh, milk snake pair from Duval County. Going twice. Pass. All right. They're up for grabs on the pass list. This pair is up for grabs for 150. They may be claimed at any time. All right, we are going to do our last snake for today. Uh, and considering the other uh, Asclepian snake did not sell immediately, um, maybe the, this one probably will will uh, be about the same. That's fine. People can claim them if they so desire off of the list. We're going to copy the Zominus information here. Individual three, same stats as the first female that I showed. Feeding on frozen thought, etc. Same hatch date and everything. I think that these are siblings. So here is the other Asclepian rat snake. A person asks, "How large do rat snakes get? Anywhere from three feet to I think the biggest one's like ten feet. Um, it depends on how you define rat snake too. Rainbow snake. Make sure you have feeder eels on hand. Yeah, these these are these are good beginner snakes overall. Um, do you breed your own feeders? Yes, I do breed my own feeder rodents. I have, I work with uh, soft furs, and uh, and uh, house mice, and I have strains I've been developing of both of those. Uh, Devin says putting a species list out a couple weeks before the auction might give people a little time to research and prepare. Um, I, I concur. Part of it was we wanted to see if maybe the, uh, the mysteries, uh, the mystery of what could be going up would, uh, would entice people. Maybe a list beforehand is, is the way to go. <clears throat> that being said, all of these snakes is just basic colubrid care. You, you can keep them in, if you really want to, in a Sterilite, uh, bin with a, with a hide and a bowl of water, or you can keep them in a big, complicated, fancy bioactive if you want to these are very adaptable snakes and are definitely very suitable for beginners the um so so easy and adaptable one of my female asclepian snakes escaped into the house i think it was three months ago um i hadn't quite figured out those reptile cage clamp things uh for the tank and she pushed her way out 
And I was just uh, like, you know, she'll pop up eventually. They always do. And uh, three months later, this is a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I guess it was about a month ago at, at this point. Uh, I went down to the laundry room and I looked into the, the the tub in the laundry room and there was the escaped female Asclepian drinking water out of the uh, the tub. Uh, and she also looked as if she had gained size since the last time that I had seen her. Um, snakes were on the first day. I would be jumping to get one of the rat snakes. I understand. I see. So it looks like the takeaways here is maybe do the snake sooner into the auction and get a list out beforehand. So again, this is a trial. We've got some input here. Unfortunately, Asclepian snakes are illegal to own here without a permit as they are protected native fauna. That's right, we do have some Europeans here. So we get to keep some fun stuff uh, that you guys don't necessarily, as they are protected in Europe. Uh, they are an at-risk species in a lot of places, I believe. A person says, I think people are just a bit more careful about buying vertebrates, as, as you should be in, in most cases. Um, Satchel says, I mentioned that my gray rat snake is one that I just randomly found in my house once. Uh, I think you had mentioned that before. People mentioned they need a bit more prep time. All the feeder rats that escaped in Kyle's laundry room sustained that snake. Yeah, occasionally, well, we get white-footed mice. Oh, look at this. Look at me, guys. I'm a, I'm a medical staff. Look at that. Um, you know, it makes you wonder, where, was this... Did, did some some ancient uh, Greek person pick up an Asclepian snake and it coiled up their arm around their finger like this and they just thought the imagery was so cool uh, that made them feel so good that that kind of drove the myth of the whole of the uh, the mythos of Asclepius and whatnot look at this um, Farouk says they're protected in France at least I don't know Germany as they can keep many things more things than us um, yeah so uh, Again, this is old German stock from German breeders. Put it in focus. Good pick right there. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can get her. I think the magic moment may have gone. She's uh, she's the flight of fancy of curling around there was is over. So, um, also I have never found a snake that I lost in my house. I think I'm up to three escapees that were never seen again. I I have almost I have found every single snake that's gotten out both at my parents' house and at my house. I had a, a butter corn steak in my parents' house that was gone for eight months. And one day I went to print something and the printer was giving me the jammed error. And I opened up the printer and the butter corn steak was wrapped around the internal wiring of the printer. Completely fine, completely uh, fine and unscathed. But it had been gone for eight months and did not look like it was suffering in the slightest uh, Seth says the snake on the stick image is likely a reference to a method of removing guinea worm from people's feet, actually. Thank you, Satchel, for giving us the good historical context and making me look like an idiot. I actually do appreciate that here. Um, do you have a source for that, though? you have a source? Um, a person, I wonder what sort of BS I'm allowed to just pick up and breed over here. It's a good question. Thank you for Chris. Uh, some the crusty pineapple got some good pictures of the Individual number three of the Asclepian snake. This is the last snake as well. We will be on to isopods shortly. I am going to take a quick break to go to the bathroom. And uh, I think basically that I'm also going to move the snakes out of here. And uh, then we will be into isopods. So, all right. Here's the Asclepian snake female three. We're going to go ahead and put an X here. Again, you know what? It would be really cool. It would be really cool to have like a big enclosure with a bunch of like Ionian pillars and stuff and a lot of like really nice marble looking surfaces and uh, have a bunch of Asclepian uh, snakes in there. I'm curious if you could, if you, you made the enclosure just so, maybe if you had a basking spot in the center of it and all the vegetation and whatnot all around it, if you could um, get the snakes to mostly use the bathroom in the lower levels and away from the basking spot so it would stay looking nice. I think I'm going to work on that. I think I'm going to work on getting a big, uh, a 
nice big communal Asclepian snake thing. And then, you know, somebody sees a, a YouTube video like that of a big snake communal and it looks all fancy and stuff and then group feeding and then all of a sudden everybody wants Asclepian snakes. Um, history repeats itself, people. This is your chance to be uh, 2,500 uh, years uh, in the making of a trend coming back. I do like these guys. I also like Natrix. I want to get Natrix one day. I think there's a handful of people in the U.S. working with Natrix. I do want those eventually. All right, going once on the Asclepian on female three. Going twice. Pass. All right, we'll put you uh, back on in here. Your little pumpkin. All right, she is up for grabs at the starting bid pricing, if anybody would like her. And with that, we are out of <clears throat> the snakes. There were um, there was another species I was going to put up that I have, but I'm, uh, I'm going to hold on to them and probably put a pair up at the fall auction, if anything. So um, I'm going to just say... And snake bidding. I'm gonna run to the bathroom really quick and put the snakes out of the uh, out of here. And then we're on to isopods, everybody. Thank you for tuning in for the snakes again. Maybe some people are gonna ruminate on it. Maybe somebody's gonna decide they really want those tamalapin milk snakes. Who knows? Maybe you want a companion animal, Asclepian. We'll see. So I will be right back. All right, everybody, we're on to the next topic, which is isopods. We're going to finish up the pods today with, da, 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 da. we got three, three pages of other stuff. 
And for remaining isopods, we have one, two, also three-ish pages of remaining stuff. Goody, goody gumdrops. Uh, did you make taking pictures of rainbow scavers? No, but I should probably do that on a break for promotional uh, purposes. Let there be pods. We're going to kick things off with a group of 25 Cubara species, Panda King, Panga King, Panda King, comma, Red Panda is the, uh, the, the, the name. I wrote 23. It should be 25. Um, starting bid of $1.00. Again, uh, I think the, the morph name is Red Panda, but they, you know, the, the stupidity of the whole Cubaris thing, they would call species Panda King, species Red Panda for the Red Mutants. Um, something I have noticed, I want to I wanna note here, uh, is some of these, these commercial lines that I've acquired seem to have not been refined fully not for the color but i've noticed there's red pan or species panda king citrus which is all orange slash red and there is species panda king red panda red panda i would assume based on the name is supposed to be red and white however they do still produce those solid individuals which is probably where the species panda king citrus come from so just letting you know that this is how they are. I'm going to work on getting it to being just the panda-like individuals. But I imagine this is how all the stock for these, these are, um, is going to throw some solid individuals. In fact, in this very in image that Roly Poly's on a roll posted, you can see the bottom individual does not have the white on it. So it's very likely that early on to the isolation of the stock, they started throwing these solids, and it was never worked out of it. Thank you for those uh, for those pictures. As you can see, citrus appears to be a sport of red panda, and thus it still pops up in red panda colonies. I am working on calling it out and getting it out of my personal lines, not because I don't like it, but because I already have a colony of citrus, and I want just the the orange slash red and white phenotype of red panda. Here's an X for Kibara species panda king red panda. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To, I'm going to do a control R, but it looks like crusty pineapple with a winning bid of 30. We're going to see though. Crusty Pineapple with a winning bid. Of, oh, wait, no, no, no. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to put edit. It's Patrick edited. Patrick with a winning bid of 30. My apologies. Patrick with a winning bid of 30. Congratulations, Patrick. Sorry for the confusion. The caffeine is still kicking, kicking in this morning. Uh, all right. Let's do a group of. 25 Cubaris species red edge. Cubaris, Cubaris species red edge starting bid of $1. Not the red edge orange, which we auctioned a couple of days ago. One of my favorite isopod uh, strains actually is the red edge orange. Red edge orange. Uh, still very cool with solid and white skirts. Yeah, I'm not saying the citrus aren't cool. I do like them. I like all, I like many different sports of isopods. I'm just saying that, no, when you get these and you see the selected pictures of people just taking pictures of the ones with the white and they don't have any of the solid ones in the pictures, I believe that red panda is meant to be just the orange slash red and white and not the solid individuals. The horned one woke up late. Horned one, if you want snakes, check the pass list. There's some stuff up for grabs there. Uh, I've already got the Eriomotensis mistake, uh, Miyako, unfortunately. Um, I have those as well, too. I think that their identity is still up in the air, as with pretty much all isopods other than Porcelio Scaber. 
Long live the Porcelio Skaber Master Race. All right, here's an X for the uh, species Red Edge. The horned one, most of the snakes were passed on. You didn't miss much. I think he missed much. I like those snakes. If I'm being honest, it was criminal that nobody wanted the tamalapin milk snake pair, and I'm very tempted to get them, but I think Kim already has some stuff set aside for me. So, alas, say la vie. Going once for the species red edge. Going twice... Sold to Dr. Humroid with a winning bid of 44. Dr. Humroid has appeared today. One of the apex predators of the Bugapalooza auction. All right. We have a very special offering. Very special offering. We have 12 Armadillidium vulgare Arizona Sunrise starting bid of $10. These were isolated by everybody's favorite no-name hero, Devin Noname. Um, it seems to be a uh, seems to be multiple genes at play here. There's a simple recessive thing. There's some other characteristics going on with them. But Arizona Sunrise is intended to be a mixed culture. It is intended to have a diverse phenotype at the culture level. I am working on refining certain characteristics out of it. Pick, uh, Devin's got a pick. I might be able to find the pick that Devin sent me. Um, this is Devin and his uh, daughter um, who did the, did the selection and work on these guys. They're called Arizona Sunrise because of the diversity of colors that you see. Oh, yeah, this is a golden picture. Look at this. Devin, thank you. Give me a second. Devin's trying to find a picture. Probably going to post it in the, the auction, but I have it on my phone. Um, the diversity of colors, again, it'll look less washed out when it gets posted in the actual auction channel. But come on, focus, you son of a sea biscuit. There we go. Uh, so you can see already there's a couple of different traits in there that could really be teased out. Like that solid, those, those white individuals, not the yellowish ones, but the solid ones. Um, and this was started, I think, Devin said, from three individuals and uh, blossomed into this, this treasure, this true treasure. Thank you, Devin. So look at all those projects there. Again, I already started on isolating those uh, white individuals. That really sticks out to me. I think those sort of pinkish individuals are probably hets for whatever the characteristic, whatever, whatever trait the yellow ones are. But I think the whites are something, there's probably a couple of different things going on with the full white ones. So, all right, here's an X for the Arizona Sunrise. Again, Devin and his, uh, his daughter's pride creation. Currently, many, many, many good things coming out of Devin, one of our Arizona residents, uh, working very hard to get us a bunch of eclectic stuff out of Arizona. Going once on the Arizona Sunrise Vulgare. Going twice. Sold. To, uh, could be Sleeve or it could be JoJo. We're going to see. Devin says, yes, three individuals, two albinos, and one very light individual found in my yard. The two females were already made into wild pods, and they produced the mix of colors in the offspring. So look at these horribly inbred isopods, everybody. They're clearly suffering. Uh, Sleeve McDykel beating out JoJo with a winning bid of 33. Thank you again, Devin, to you and your daughter for doing the work to uh, create this strain. And I'm absolutely certain that we're going to get a lot more cool projects out of it based on just the mix of phenotypes. All right, next we have just a group of 25 Armadillidium Depressum. This is just the unlabeled hobby stock, starting bid of $10. These first came in at the beginning of the isopod craze, and other than morphs, they've kind of fallen to the wayside because they're, they're no Cubaris uh, species, uh, the dark side of the moon or whatever. Um. But 
plenty of diversity in this culture, plenty of projects that he just like me for real. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, plenty of plenty of things that you can toy around with uh, in this in this line of depressum, good color variation and whatnot. I think there's potential there for some very intensive line breeding. Uh, is that depressum? Kind of looks like no, it's not granulated, so it must be a depressum. So again, run of the mill depressum. Here's an X, just your average everyday depressum for wrapping up bids. It seems we've got somebody who would really like to get some regular depressums going once. Going twice, sold to Roly Polies. Uh, Roly Polies on a roll. I wish there was spacing in your name, Roly Polies on a roll. Winning bid of fifteen dollars. All right. Next, we have a group of fifty Cubaris species, Panda King. Rats, rats, we are the rats. Starting bid of $1. I like to call them panda rats because of how fast they breed. There's actually a culture that, that swells and shrinks in size in with my Banana Bay Dyscordalis. And uh, I do nothing to take care of them, and they just kind of come and go. Sometimes I'll look in there, and there'll be hundreds, and other times I'll be like, yep, they're finally dead. And then a couple months later, they'll start to rebound. Nature is fascinating. That is for sure. Got quite a bit of interest in the panda rats. Kibara species cash grab. Ain't it the truth? Uh, maybe something like Punta Cana, but able to be isolated by color. Uh, yeah, I, I'm still... There's somebody who, who put me in touch with somebody who has pure Punta Canas. I'm absolutely certain that Almost all hobby stock is compromised. The little yellow flecks are are not something seen in the original Punta Canas. They would have larger globules of yellow color, but it's deeper in the carapace. Those yellow flecks, it's uh, I think it's might I think it's uric acid um, that is concentrated in the upper cuticle. That was not in Punta Cana or in Saint Lucia before. It is definitely a sign that they've been compromised with U.S. stock of Volgare. So I have a lead on somebody who's apparently got a colony from 2018, hasn't added to it, supposedly just swaps back and forth with one of their uh, friends every time they keep the genetic diversity. So I'm going to try and I'm trying to get some of that stock. I'm waiting for the guy to reply to my email, but I really need um, that. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pester and see if any of the, the big isopod breeders have smuggled anything in lately and be like, hey, can I pay you an obscene amount of money to just get Punta Canas from Europe because they're not going to be messed up like the U.S. ones are? Um, Devin's working on more projects from the Volgare colony uh, to isolate. Which isopods do you think are most day active that's good for display tank? At, at high densities, most of them are. The most photophobic isopods I've seen are like Gideon. They're very photophobic. Uh, Dewey says, I've noticed two distinct panda kings. One has more opaque white. Uh, Luch has got most of these species. One is very porcelain, right? Stella Springtails has the porcelain stock by Sally Lawson in the freeze of Feb 2024. Um, I'll have to ask Stella's to give me some of those more opaque ones. Uh, can't edit either. Uh, Bon. Yes, uh, Bon, please, uh, you can, no editing bids. There is a specific process for doing that. You have been outbid, but just know that is no, that is a no-no without, uh, without proper form. Uh, here's an X for wrapping up the Panda Rat auction. Uh, Dylan says uh, the Adon Halevis Dalmanai Intermedia have been claimed, if you want to write that down. Uh, that is something I, I will go to the past list and grab people's names off of that probably during uh, after the auction during the week. Uh, it's kind of the officially unofficial way of keeping track of the past stuff. Um, so make sure you contact. I think it's Bree has been managing that, and I really appreciate that. Um, but if you claim those, just, just tell Bree or respond to the thread, claim them or whatever. And when we go to square up, which will be sometime next week, we can uh, make a note of that and work that out. Thank you for claiming those, too. I don't know why the uh, Lava Odontolabus were kind of slept on. Going once on the Panda Rat Isopods. Going twice. 
sold to Roly Polies on a roll with a winning bid of 23 for the Panda Rats. Roly Polies on a roll. You are on a roll. Thank you, Bree, for being the unofficial official manager of those affairs. All right, next up we have a group of 20 Porcelio Flavo Marginatis. Starting bid of $10. I, uh, I failed with these guys two times before I started really getting success, and I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> so very promising to everybody looking to get them. Nifty, a day, a day active, kind of more, keeps its body off the substrate more than other Spanish species does. Uh, doesn't get titanic, uh, but does get larger than most other isopods do. Hyperbeam says, these are my favorites by far and love. And Bree thanks everybody who helped manage the pass list while, uh, while they were absent. We've got some interest in the Flavo Margs. We're going at a great pace, everybody. We might get through isopods in a reasonable amount of time. And I like the sound of that. We also have 46 people in chat. Perfect. I have a feeling we're going to get to 70 by tonight. I think there's going to be 70 concurrent viewers, and that would be sick. A friendly reminder to like the live stream if you like it. If you like it, give it a lick. Uh, day active and likes it dry. Keep them with my E. Giovannica. Yeah, they definitely do like it a bit more on the dry side, uh, although I had a good initial results keeping them moist and then poor results after that. Uh, this is another species that seems to appreciate calcium supplementation. You, you could do cuddle bone, but I just do that dolomite. It's, it's cheap. It's dirt cheap. It's cheaper than bags of potting soil actually by the pound. Will there be expansives and or white antenna hoffs? There may be one and or both of those. Smash that like button from Marshall Arachnids. Thanks for that energy today. We need that. Here's an X for the Flavo Marginatus. Marcelio Flavo Marginatus. Also, nobody bats an eye when we use strictly Latin names for isopods other than all the Cubaris species uh, 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 left left to die at, at, at the at the altar, left at the altar or something like that. Everybody's fine with Marcelio Flavo, Flavo Marginatus, Expansus, blah, blah, blah. Going once on the Flavo Marginatus. Going twice sold to Matt put in a last minute bid but I think Dr. Humroyd is uh, is is in the lead let's do a print screen Dr. Humroyd with a winning bid of 50 memes always appreciated everybody you do not have to you do not have to keep memes out of general you do not have to keep them out of bidding I encourage those things uh, all right. Just don't like actual conversations. None of that. Okay, let's do a group of 40 Cubaris species with a capital C, Kyle. Cubaris species. Platin Tung Song starting bid of $10. This is a species that – oops, that's the wrong thing to scratch out. Um, this is a species that grew on me. I thought they were stupid at first because uh, pictures, people take very poor pictures of them, but I've come to appreciate them. They're not one of my favorites, but I'm not just like, oh, this is a cash grab, plainly. Um, somebody asked about Expanse's witches, witches Potion. I did get a group of Witches Potions from Orin in February. They haven't produced yet, but one of the females has a full marsupium. So any day now. There almost certainly will be some at the the summer auction or the fall auction of Witch's Potion. Uh, Inventory says, so you just use regular garden dolomite uh, lime powder as calcium source? Oh, yeah. I just buy a sack of it. Um, the, the brand that I liked the most was uh, – I said it the other day. I'm going to look it up. Dolomite is uh, down-to-earth. Uh, dolomite, prilled dolomite line, calcium, magnesium, carbonate, down to earth brand. You can get off of Amazon for why is that so expensive? Oh, it's because I'm, I'm logged in. I don't know why that's so expensive there. 
Let's see what qualifies for Prime. It says I'm logged in. Uh, no, here we go. Prime one day, five pounds, organic, blah, blah, blah. I just use that. I use the industrial grade uh, 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 Dolomite, too. That's just the 40-pound sack of stuff, and that's what all my isopods have been getting. Just as important or more important than it being a calcium source for the isopods is it makes the soil more basic, which discourages the growth of the bacteria or fungus that causes porcelain disease and also makes it more appetizing to a healthy springtail community. So, all right, here's an X for the Platin Tongue songs. Uh, whoever's pictures those are that photo gallery showed, that second picture really catches, I feel, what they look like in, in life. That's, that's a good thing. Uh, it's that's that's a good representation. All right, going once for the Platin Tongue songs. Going twice. Sold to Loki with a winning bid of thirty-one. Congrats, Loki! Correcting your bid at the last second there, or rather, making a fresh bid at the last second. Close save. Um, I'll answer the questions in the live stream in a second. We can get the next thing posted up. We're going to have a group of 25 Cubaris species, red tiger, starting bid of $1. I like these. I, they're, they're like, I guess you could argue they're slightly cooler red edges. Um, I'm not going to sing too many high praises for them. They're, they're just neat. Um Amanda Ray says, what about dusting reptile calcium in the bin with the alisos? That should work. Uh, Farouche adds, adds that reptile calcium is just cal carbonate calcium rebranded and sold at a higher price pretty much, and I second that notion. Uh, I make my own calcium cubes. Apparently snails like them too. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm finding that the – it started with seeing that flower pot fungus seems to acidify and make uh, coconut fiber uh, – less conducive to raising different types of insects when it infects the, uh, the substrate. And that's sort of evolved into more of a broader perspective on pH management in the bins. And the easiest way to combat uh, acidification in a bin, in a bin you don't want it to, you know, in, in, in the bins that you don't want to become more acidic, a lot of things don't necessarily care. Or like with roaches, if you have enough of them, you keep the colony healthy the substrate kind of becomes an extension of their gut microbiome and it kind of buffers everything anyways. But to offset soil acidification, you can add the dolomite and that will help to balance the pH as well as providing food for some things. So that's been another thing I've really been edging into lately. Is there such a thing as too much calcium for ice pods? I don't think so. Um, I don't think you can give them too much calcium because of how high the calcium content of their exoskeleton is. I don't think they can eat too much calcium. I, I don't think they can possibly intake too much of it either. Uh, that being said, not all of them need calcium supplementation. I've had colonies that have thrived for decades without added calcium, but I am suspecting that a deficit of calcium and either the effect on the soil chemistry and ecology or just not having enough calcium available did play a role in the decline of some colonies in the past. I'm seeing much less dramatic decline in colonies now than I did five years ago with these new approaches. All right. Here's an X for the uh, red tiger. Photo gallery picked the least flattering photo on the internet of them. That's okay. <laughs> um, let's see. I'll get back to the live stream after we wrap up the bidding for the Red Tigers. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Patrick with a winning bid of 51. No, this is Patrick. All right. Cross off the red tigers. Next up, we're going to do a group of 25 Arma Dilidium 
Vodari, Inverness, Florida, starting bid of $10 gets big. Um, this is just wild stock from the middle of nowhere in Florida. I suspect that there is a clay to Volgari that goes from Georgia down into central Florida. And this is where you get bigger individuals. And this is probably, again, what I think would be the clay that Magic Potions originally belonged to is this Georgia, Florida clade of introduction or gene flow. Just a theory. Could be complete bullcrap. That's my suspicion, having seen individuals from that uh, stretch of areas and their morphological characteristics. Uh, let's uh, let's touch on... Uh, let's touch on... Um, uh, people's calcium discussion. Loki's glad to have the platinum tongue songs back. Luch comments on using oyster shells for for chickens. And uh, oh, you I didn't know you had chickens, Luch. Uh, Tal's reptiles, welcome. I think I think this is the first time I've seen you at the auction. Uh, I also put pelletized lime in my soil, and I've not had many fungal bacterial outbreaks in the ones that was in there. Never made the connection about the chemistry of the soil in that. Um, yeah, again, I feel it's it's something that's going to become – people will keep a bit more of an eye on it. Uh, it's very common knowledge that isopods in the UK where they are the most studied prefer calcareous soils and that different isopods are found on different soil compositions. You go through Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, northern – I guess Kentucky, Tennessee area-ish where the soil is very – parts of Georgia where the soil is very heavy clay – you see more armadillidium nizatum than vulgari. In some places, vulgari are completely absent, and nizatum is the dominant species. Um, and then here in Michigan, you go to like an organic garden or something, and you see nizatum and vulgari in roughly equal numbers. More magic potions today? I, I suspect so. Um, are you using high calcium substrate for the pseudo armadillo? Uh, no, I was actually keeping them in with my. Uh, uh, African giant millipedes until they became too annoying to fish out of the pieces of wood and bark in there uh, to the point where I, I broke the spines off of one trying to get it out of the wood. So I've since moved them to a smaller enclosure, hopefully with more accessible points. Um, and I've just been, been giving them the standard amount of isopod, calcium, leaf litter, and what have you. Uh, all right. Do they get this big? Uh, circa that I, it's hard without anything to tell for scale, but yes, that's about um, the TF. Am I supposed to do here? I'll go try and fish a picture off INET maybe from Inverness. See if there's any records for Inverness, Florida. Hey, what do you know? There are some records. We're gonna just bump the uh, size range out here. Um, there's a one rep report from uh, 2019 of a solo individual on uh, on a blacktop or something. So also my computer feels very hot and turned on the fan. My apologies if it, uh, if anybody can actually hear the noise it's making. All right, going once on the Inverness Vulgari. Going twice. Sold. To Tally Sin with a winning bid of, I'm going to write all this stuff down in my sheet first, Vulgari, Inverness, Florida, 25, 10, winning bid of, $19. Congrats on your first win at the auction, Tally Sin. All right, let's do a group of... Twenty-five Armadillidium Scaber, Scaber Rhymum. Starting bid of $20. Another colony that was sent to me uh, by one of our, our chat members and is somehow outproducing 
the original colony that I got and some of my other isopod colonies. I have no idea what, what, what's being fed to them. Dewey doesn't know the difference between Cubaris and Armadillidium. What are the characteristics I'm missing? I would love to know that answer too, Dewey. Re adds calcium powder into the substrate mix, but I think picking up some pelletized or pulverized lime would be better. You think pelletized would be better? I like I like that the um the pelletized stuff comes in little granules. When you spray it, it starts to leach. I like that the granules, when mixed into the substrate, are slow release. I like that. But I also give, uh, when I'm using the pelletized stuff, I will also give a little pile so the ice pots can go snack on it if they want to. Um, a person asks, so that's why there are no scaber in my area. Yeah, it's, although isopods, when they don't have competitive pressure in captivity, a lot of them seem to have very overlapping niches uh, in the wild. Although they do, although you can find like in Michigan, you can find like all 12 species of, of introduced isopod under the same board. You can find them, but they are not going to all be in the same ratio of, uh, of individuals. Uh, in my in my backyard, Phyllosia muscorum is not common. I think Phyllosia might want more basic soils. Uh, common isopods in my yard, spinacornis and drier areas, scaber, very common around the compost. They love the compost. Uh, Procellionides prunosus is more, um, more around the chicken coop and stuff. It's sort of very, uh, very rich organic matter right out of the chicken butts. They seem to like that. Uh, Vulgari are pretty common. Aniscus are pretty common as well. Um, Nizatum, not very common. They're present, but not very common in my yard. I'm trying to think if there's another one I'm forgetting. Not another Porcelio. Um, I feel like there's one more I'm forgetting. Trachelopus are hit or miss. Very hit or miss. All right, here's an X for the Scaborimums. Roly Poly's on a roll, posting some excellent pictures. Going once for the Scaborimum. Going twice. Sold. To Walrus with a winning bid of 26 with a mini snipe. Winning bid of 26. All right, let's do. I'm gonna find this. I posted some of these in on the other day of uh, isopods. Why is it searching general? I don't want to search general. I want to search this. I want to search bid central, armadillidium maculatum. There we go. We have a group of 25 armadillidium maculatum from the original 2014 import. These have a good diversity of simple recessives popping up, good diversity of characteristics without that weird kind of piebaldy, whatever heritable pathogen or genetic trait that kind of causes the whole body just kind of become warped with this blob of color. These do not have that. Stephen Logan says, I found nothing but peace gaber and trees 80 plus feet up. Like, in the trees, 80 plus feet up. Uh, Levis, we're going to have we have plenty of Levis coming up and aft Levis as well. Um, Luch loves Parachi. We'll have some Parachi in a bit. We're going to do some, we're going to have some Parachis. Thank you, Photo Gallery, for fishing that picture off of the website. These are the strain of maculatum that captivated the bug world before we were overwhelmed by Cubaris and Percelio that everybody killed. They find Levis in my yard. No, Levis are not in Michigan. I think we're too cold and probably too wet overall for Levis to uh, to, to have staying power. I think the, the most north outdoor locations of Levis is probably, I think, in Kentucky. You'd have to check Bug Guide. It could be southern Ohio, too, not Bug Guide. You'd have to check INAT to see. Uh, Dewey thanking me for meticulous care in preserving strains. Thank you. You, I should not need to be thanked for doing what is the bare minimum for some of these things. Uh, it's 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 not unreasonable to 
keep track of where something came from when you receive it, when it has information. It's the least you can do if it has a strain name or locality. It's the least you can do is keep it straight. Parachi are my underrated faves. I do love Parachi. Um, Parachi joined the club of isopods that have eaten Kyle. I One day, one of my colonies was uh, starving and underwater, and I put my finger in, and all of them started creeping up to it and started nibbling on it. Um, but muscaba are protein hungry. Um, this has happened with rubber duckies. It's happened with ambers. It's happened with procellarinides. Satchel has uh, has a story, and I think maybe pictures of a blabberous gigantis freshly molted getting eaten by procellarinides. So all this my protein, my this, my that, it's all BS. Isopods are detritivores. Nitrogen is important to their diet, but not necessarily from fresh protein sources. Uh, this applies to terrestrial isopods. Aquatic ones are probably different, especially marine. Uh, but the fact of the matter is they're after microorganisms when they feed on things. They want stuff that is colonized by bacteria and fungi that have digested whatever they're eating to a point that they can extract the most nutrients, not just from the food that remains, but also from the bacteria and fungi that are growing on it. I will probably one day, maybe this summer, if I can keep the dogs inside long enough, I will lay out a piece of steak and a piece of fresh chicken or dog poop on the compost pile and then go out after an hour uh, on a nice humid night and see how many isopods are on the piece of poop and not on the piece of steak. I've done this before with Skaber in captivity. It was a not significantly different, the amount of scaber that went to the steak over the um, piece of poop or apple. I think it was an apple and then a steak. Uh, there was not a statistical difference in the number that went to the steak versus the apple. And this is a starving colony of Percelio scaber. First and foremost, they were after the moisture above all, all other things. Anyways, rant over. Here's an X for the Armadillidium maculatum, original 2014 import. Uh, Devin says, millions of Avalgarian Agabiformius lentis in my yard with only the occasional scaber, prunosis, and P. levis that pop up. Uh, yeah, so you can see the dry adapted species are definitely thriving in the dry place. Interesting that there's not more levis, though. Interesting. Uh, Steven says, in them on, like, broken branches that had cracks uh, 50 feet up in the tree, 80 feet up in trees uh, was where the scaber were. Icaria says, what's coming after pods? And you have an approximate time when pods will be done. Roughly six. And everything that's not a roach or an isopod or a large display beetle, although we'll have some large display beetles, is after. Basically, everything we haven't done yet is after isopods. Uh, Luchasine, uh, Parachi eating other Parachi. Pak Chong's eating springtails. That's pretty crazy. Eating springtails. All right. Going once on the OG Maculatum. Going twice, soul to beetle pixel with a winning bid of 42. Maculatum 2024. Beetle pixel really wanting that OG maculatum stock. Cannot blame you. All right, let's keep moving. We're going to do a group of 25 Corselio Scaber. CF Forma Lusitanus Lava. It's a mouthful, but it's the most accurate currently with a starting bid of $30. Pure Lava straight from Alan Gross before he disappeared. Again, their locality, we don't know where they're from. Nate's looked at them, believes that they are subspecies or Forma Lusitanus, which may or may not be a valid taxon, but these are the Lavas. They are 100% pure they have been obsessively in my care since 2017 or 16. I got them after I moved into this house or shortly before I moved into this house. So they're either from late 2016 or early 2017. Uh, you will not see yellow calicos. You will not see simple recessive oranges. You will not see Dalmatians, although I am in correspondence with somebody who has very convincing evidence that they had the Dalmatian mutation pop up in pure lavas. Very convincing evidence. 
I'm waiting to see what they do with the stock. I'm waiting to get some to evaluate on my own. Um, but from everything they've told me, the pictures they sent, it's very, it seems very likely that they had Dalmatian pop up independently in their lava colony. And if so, that would be sick. It'd be absolutely sick if that was the case. But other than these meticulously tracked colonies, if you're seeing other characteristics popping up in your lavas, they are absolutely compromised for sure. Here's an X for the lavas. Um, Lusitanus, Latin name, would indicate Portugal. Thank you, Farouche, for bringing up that extra bit of information. Um, but Agnara Madagascariensis aren't from Madagascar, so um, are these part of your Roy G. Bibbs? Uh, lavas were worked into the uh, original lineage that created Roy G. Bibb. They do have lava mixed into them. Uh, Tennyson says, Lusitanus is thought to be a false subspecies, last I heard. It's suspected to be described off older specimens of Scaber Scaber. Um, yes, Nate and I have gone over this. If anything, he believes that they should just be a form instead of a published subspecies, and that's why I'm using CF forma instead of subspecies. It's all very uncertain. Without locality information, we cannot be sure. Ah, the zebras, ah, I cry. Um, I got to read what Alan said. People are saying... Um, what Alan said. Alan said, uh, craziest thing I've seen with Ice Pond is Purcellio Levis hunting down a parka blada zebra nymph. It bit the head and started eating it. Uh, yes, leave it. All isopods, it's probably a basal behavior for them. Anybody seen that video of uh, they've got like a deep sea like bait station and there's like all the, the giant amphipods and bathynomus and like the, the uh, chimera fish and stuff like that, like at the bait station. And a one of the bathynomus or one of the, the, the deep sea isopods um, grabs onto the head of one of the fish and just like holds on. And the fish is thrashing and flailing. And the isopod is just eating in through the top of the skull. And then later on in the video, you see that the fish is dead and the isopod is eating it. Um, but I don't even know if it was like directly predatory behavior. Maybe the ice pod just was holding on to secure place on the carry-on, just started munching, and it just so happened what it was eating was alive. And uh, that's what went on there. Um, so anyways, the, believe the fish was a dogfish. Thank you, a person. You've seen the video. Great. Any gene machine today? We might have some gene machines later. All right. Going once on the lavas. Going twice. Sold. To control R. You're going to get aquatic isopods, Kyle. I'll, I'll go off on that in a second. Unilagia with a winning bid of 54. Fierce competition for the lavas. All right, we're going to do a group of 25 Cubaris species. Capu, cappuccino, starting bid of $1. I had a colony of aquatic isopods going at U of M, and then they closed the bug zoo, and I didn't move the container home. I might have some nifty aquatic amphipods, though, going on. Those may be offered later. Uh the uh, the thing about the isopods, the aquatic isopods in Michigan, is it seems a lot of them, they will reproduce, maybe reproduce at room temperature just fine. But I never really got confirmation that I wasn't just seeing the babies that were producing captivity and they grew and they never reached full size and they just sort of stayed in like a preserved adolescence for years. I never got evidence that that wasn't happening because they never got the same size as the wild isopods when I found them. You can find like big, almost inch long aquatic isopods in Michigan, but they're a winter thing. They're, it's interesting that it's a, you, you don't usually find them in su summer. They seem to uh, breed from fall through spring, die. The immatures grow up all summer, and then by fall, they are full size, and then they reproduce, and the cycle repeats itself. So I never got them to their full adult size. I don't know if I ever observed copulation, 
but uh, I did get them. They lived in the tank for years. There was always like a hundred in the tank for years, but I always I wonder, were they not getting the trigger to, to reach their final size? And so they just remain basically neotenic for years, you know? So I like to try some more southerly, uh, some motherly, uh, or southerly uh, aquatic isopods again. <clears throat> Here's an X for the cappuccinos. Ah, uh, so there were some some cool ones I found in a drainage ditch in Alabama <clears throat> that I set up and I failed with. I think I should have used an established tank, and I think they wanted more calcium in their water. I think hard water was was going to be the key to raising those. Uh, unlike Michigan ones, which don't seem to be too picky about the the uh, pH, the hardness of the water or the pH. All right. Here is an X for the cappuccinos. The Dewey lost freshwater copepods and hydras infested the tank. I do love hydras. I love me some hydras. I think they're fascinating. <laughs> I need to sink. After I move, I'll sink some money into buying from uh, Carolina Biological. I'll get the, um, the photosynthetic hydras for sure. All right, going once, going twice, sold. Looks like whoever bids 60 is the winner. I'm refreshing just in case. Sold to SS Jaws. With a winning bid of 62, a snipe that didn't show up until after I refreshed. For a group of, what was it, 25 species cappuccino, winning bid of 62 by S. S. Jaws. Good job. Okay, let's do a group of 20 Porcelio Hasai High Yellow, starting bid of $10. This is the, the larger... Uh, more popular of the two Porcelio Hasai that I keep. I can't complain. I do like them. Mm. Alan's got aquatic limpets going. Alan, I need to get some of those from you again. I think mine uh, died out when I accidentally got them. Uh, Dewey's hydras covered every single surface of the tank. That seems to be how hydras go. They'll just they'll infest the tank and they'll be everywhere. And then something will change about the temperature, the water pH, they'll exhaust the prey, and then they'll just disappear until they pop up again later. I uh, got a group of these a while back, but a lot of them died. I think it's because they were all adults when I got them of the Hasai High Yellows. Uh, these will be probably the ones in this auction. Again, I don't know the, the sizes on everything until I open up the colonies to ship. But these should be in the... Uh, uh, 7 to 12 millimeter range, these ha size that are going up for grabs. That should be about how big they are. Doing well for me. All the Spanish stuff has been doing well for me. I'm glad I got Sakinctus. I wish my Expanses White would get with the program. And uh, I think I'm going to beg Alan for some of his Orange Expanses. I'm gonna, Alan, I think I'm going to ask you to send me your best... Unless you're already breeding for this, in which case, just flip me the middle finger. I think I'm going to beg you to send me your best orange, your best eight orange Porcelio expanses, and I'm going to try and pick up the mantle that Julio uh, dropped off. Um, Do we try everything to get rid of the hydras? They never went away. That's unfortunate. Uh, Bree, how are you keeping your house? I want to do my best to keep the few left alive. Good ventilation, good calcium supplementation, lots of pieces of horizontal bark. There's some bugs. There's some uh, roaches in there. There's some, I think, dubias and hissers in there to make lots of poo-poo, fresh poo-poo for them to eat for that good bacteria. And they're doing, they're living their hashtag best life. Alan says he only has 12 orange, orange expanses. It looks like I'm going to go have to, uh, to, to pick up orange and shake them down uh, for more isopods. To get a restart of the oranges. 
I think the orange stock that I have is is pure from this other source, but I need to raise an F1. I need to raise these F1s to full size to, to triple check that. Um, we'll see. I want I want the Julio stock again. I want what everybody fell in love with. And if it's gone, I wanna I wanna be the person who recreates it. But we'll see. Would you keep Spongilla? Let's see what Spongilla is. Oh hell yeah. I'd keep freshwater sponges. I did. I kept I have a story about freshwater sponges, I'll say in a second here. Here's an X for the Ha Sai Hai Yellow. I'll tell my story and then we'll wrap up the bid. Um, I used to work at U of M and we did pond programs at the Rose Garden Pond, which is a big cement pond. It used to be a reflecting pool. They've let it be reclaimed by nature. All kinds of weird stuff pops up in there. It was uh, the site of the epicenter of the yellow floating heart in inv invasive species in Michigan. Uh, nobody knew what it was for years. And I was like, hey, this is yellow floating heart. After nobody identified it, didn't key out to the native bull lilies. And then the DNR, like, bum rushed the site to do a complete removal of it because they're terrified of it getting out. Um, but anyways, all kinds of cool stuff in that pond, despite being man-made. Uh, one day after a program, I either fished up something in a net or I saw it floating on the surface. And the kids, they take their dip nets, they go over the aquatic vegetation, they pull out the invertebrates, we ID them. They find cool stuff. There's tadpoles and diving beetles and water scorpions and all this crazy cool stuff. Kids love it. It's great. Um, and one day in the aftermath when we were putting stuff away from the program, I think I saw either floating or in a net a fragment of vegetation that looked like it had a sponge on it. And I was like, in, the, in this pond, in this kind of stagnant pond? And it's like, this isn't algae. This is a sponge. So I took it home and I put it in my, uh, at the time at my parents, I had a white cloud mountain minnow tank on my dad's bar in the basement. I put it in the front corner and it slowly started to expand outwards. And then I don't know what exactly what happened. Maybe either I stopped taking care of the tank or I was going to move or blah, 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 something. I overfed the fish. I don't know. But eventually the sponge stopped growing. But I would like to try the sponges again. They're not rare. They're not freshwater sponges are not rare in Michigan. There's sites in the Rouge River, which used to be one of the most polluted rivers on the planet, um, where you can find freshwater sponges not far from where I live. Um, it's just kind of being in the right place at the right time. But it seems uh, summer, June, July, August is the time to go looking for freshwater sponges in Michigan. One day, I'll try them again. I'll give them a good go. Maybe I'll do a, a kiddie pool. Uh, I'll say, okay, next year I'm going to keep freshwater sponges. And I'll set up either a big tank with a good moderate flow through it, good oxygenation and bright, brightish lighting. I'll get some copepods or something established in there. Nothing else, no fish, no nothing. And then the next year I'll be like, all right, I'm going, I'm going to go find me some sponges. And then I'll toss them in there and see how that goes. I had freshwater jellyfish, too. That's the story I'll tell next. All right, going once for the Hasai High Yellow. Going twice. Sold. To could be Sleeve McDichael. It could be Beetle Pixel. We're going to see. I think Sleeve's got this in the bag. Sleeve... McDi oh, well, you know, even if Beetle Pixel's at, uh, offer went through, it was only for it was 62 with no period. So, Sleeve, you win with a winning bid of 50. Congrats, Sleeve. Let's put another thing up while I get ready to, to rant and rave. We're going to do a group of something basic, 50 Cubaris, Marina, Papaya, starting bid of $1.00. Oops, actually, Kibaris species, papaya. We'll do a winky face. Uh, the jellyfish story. Uh, my my friend Kay, uh, there's, they're very common in certain places in Michigan. It's like a July, August thing. Brought me some, what are those called? Uh, 
what is, what's the jellyfish form of the jellyfish life cycle? Is it metazoans or something? Uh, brought me a bunch of those one one year. Uh, I threw a tank together really fast. They lived like, I don't know, a, a couple weeks. The Medusa, thank you, Alan. Uh, and nothing ever came of it. I, uh, I mean, I quickly got bored with the tank and, and dismantled it. Uh, but they were neat to have for a couple of weeks. They're good. They're good size. They're like an inch across. Uh, maybe in the future, I'd uh, I'd give those a try. It's just they're poorly understood. What causes the blooms? What they like? What they even do? Where they're found? What their life cycles really like? Um, so maybe. Maybe one day when I have a big, uh, big water trough for the for the the outdoor and for the goats and dogs and, and emus and whatnot, um, maybe on a, on a on a whim I'll try and find some of those jellyfish and just dump it in the dump them in the the, the, the watering trough and see if they colonize it. Um, maybe they need a round tank. I, I don't know if it's the tank size. I think it's more like we don't really know what they do, what they eat, like what their life cycles like. They're very like, oh, one year there'll be hundreds of thousands of them in a freshwater lake, and then next year there'll be none, and then there'll be none for a decade, and then a bunch of them will pop up. Pop up. Just uh, we we don't know enough, and I don't. I'm not ambitious enough to give those a go like I am the sponges. But if I can, if I can half arse it, I'll give them a try. I think I won't go out of my way. I won't go out of my way to work with them again. Uh, exotic wilderness, yes, I do have pseudarmadillo spinosis, and they've been breeding for me quite well. Um, Kyle and his retired saltwater guy era will be a force to be reckoned with. I want a saltwater tank. I like Will's uh, Will's desire to have a. Uh, Will wants to do like with a West Coast uh, kelp skeleton shrimp tank and i like that idea a lot to have a skeleton shrimp style uh, tank with a lot of uh live uh uh what's kelp what what group is kelp in is kelp a protist whatever group you know there's there's all the maybe it's a macro macro algaes. um a tank with all kinds of macro algaes and stuff like that would be a lot cooler than a tank with a couple slapped in pieces of coral and like uh, one fish in it. I want that whole the tide pool experience, and I want the things in the enclosure to breed to perpetuate. All right, here's an X for the Murina papayas. Kyle and his retired saltwater guy. Um, well, I'm probably never going to retire, so there's that. But at the same time, it's a business investment to look into saltwater invertebrates, so I don't really care. <laughs> All right, going once for the papayas. Going twice. Sold. To Kasharin with a winning bid of 27. Sharon, that's your first winning bid of this auction. Congratulations. Uh, let's do some 40 Cubaris Murina. We're just going to get some Murinas out of the way. Cubaris Murina Citrus, starting bid of $1. This is the Orange Mutant in Murina. Uh, John Doe says, I had a bloom of th hundreds of thousands at my cabin in Wisconsin one year and never, ever besides the one year. See, that's, that's what I don't like is we don't know what to do to really, to really produce them. And if you're going to commercialize something, you have to have somewhere to start off of. Them. Oh yes, I can have some consistency and availability of this product. Uh, oh, the host in the discord is very experienced with saltwater and skeleton shrimp. That's good to know. The host, if you're listening, you should get in touch with Will to help his uh, saltwater dreams come true. Obey the Snarf adds, yes, macro uh, kelp is a macroalgae and a protist. Thank you. Um, you know, we went to 
the day we went to that um, Medina County Fairgrounds Reptile Expo, um, uh, me, Brandon, and Angela, on the way back, we saw um, the building for Ohio's largest saltwater fish uh, store, which is great. It was great. The the when you walk, if you can go see that store, the building is just beautiful. How they have everything set up, all kinds of cool saltwater stuff. They got a big uh, captive bred seahorse thing at the back. It's great. It's exactly what I want Roach Crossing to be, except with roaches and probably not open to the public. But that building is great. So, anyways, um, they have this uh, this big foyer. You walk in, it's like a greenhouse, and they've got all these big open troughs of salt water with the live rock, and it's got macro algaes. And you look in one, and you're looking there for a couple of minutes, and all of a sudden, this huge angelfish swims by, and then it just disappears into the rocks. Super cool. Um, but when we were looking at the tanks, you know, they've got all this uh, clownfish and all this stuff from all over the world and blah blah and the thing that catches my eye is the little the was the mice shrimp that are in the enclosures and how gracefully they move and how they're clearly reproducing in the tanks and i thought oh yeah that's what i want i want a tank that looks like this with all these little these little invertebrates in it that would be cool that's really entertaining you can sit there and watch it for hours and it's so much easier so lift him Wow, those are some big isopods. Thank you, Exotic Wilderness. Here's an X. Again, this is the orange mutation in Cubaris marina. They are also locality animals. I need to contact the person who originally uh, isolated them to confirm the locality, but they're from somewhere in Florida. Thank you, Kasharin, for the matching gif of put him down. I like that a lot. All right, going once for the Cubaris Marina Citrus. Going twice. Sold. To Danny Katz with a winning bid of 25. Congrats, Danny. I'm pretty sure this is your first win at the auction. We've got a lot of new faces here today for the second day of isopods. 56 people in the live stream. It's only noon. Excellent. Uh, lick that like button. Use 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 the distal point of your tongue. Lick the like button. Let's get some more likes. Any Verneri going up? Ask and you shall receive. Let me just find out where they are in my sheet so I can cross them off. We have another group of 20... Orcelio Verneri. Let me see what the starting bid was prior. Uh, this is from April. Oh, wait, it is April. My brain, everybody. My brain. Starting bid of $20. Orcelio Verneri. Greek Shields. Uh, Zach Edwards, hello. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome, welcome, everybody. I wonder how difficult breeding Bathynomus would be. Um, I would I would probably try to keep them in a bigger tank than they usually display stuff at public aquariums in. I think for a group of a uh, of a of a marine isopod, a species if you had a species that was in the six six-ish inch range or or a little bigger. I would say you probably want a volume of, got to think volumetrically. Uh, I'm not going to go with gallons. I'm, I'm going to go with, with square footage. I think you'd want a square footage of at least uh, 20 feet by 20 feet and then maybe an additional 10 feet, however many gallons that is. I think you could probably get good results. Heavy feeding. Heavy feeding of, uh, of like, uh, dead fish and carry-on and the whatnot. I think uh, they would need a, a different style than most aquariums keep their, their organisms. A dirtier style. Have a little bit more gunk and stuff for the immatures to feed on. That's my gut feeling. <clears throat> Circa asks, what's the difference between citrus and Florida orange? To my knowledge, they're the same strain. 
the um, the isolator kind of went back and forth on what they wanted them to be called. The last time I had talked to them, they were going with citrus, but they are the same strain. They may have been distributed as Florida Orange before they decided to change it to citrus. <clears throat> I've never seen uh, marine isopods for sale at a, a saltwater fish shop. I've never seen them. All right, here's an X for the Porcelio verneri. I don't know why there's there's a big isopod crowd. There's probably a bigger isopod crowd for marine isopods than for terrestrial isopods because it piggybacks on the saltwater uh, fish hobby. All right, going once for the Porcelio Verneri. We've got some Titans duking it out here. Going twice. Sold. Two. It's close. Obey the Snarf may have uh, may have may have weaselled in there. Doctor Humroy with a winning bid of ninety nine. A refresh. Snipe, one of Dr. Humroyd's many specialties in a devious arsenal. Let's do a group of 25 Cubaris species. Pack Chong Red. Starting bid of $20. I'm a big fan of Cubaris species Pack Chong. I think the straight wild species resembles... Bernie's Mountain Dogs. I think their color resembles that, and that is very endearing to me. Definitely not an overhyped isopod. Believe the hype for pack chongs. Cooling tanks is expensive. Yes, a tropical one or one from warmer water, or if there's any, if there's got to be a, there must be free living, good sized marine isopods from tide pool environments. There were some really cool ones when I was in Washington and got to poke around um, on the uh, edge of the water. There were some really cool, like, quarter to half inch isopods that were very round with very broad uh, pleopods or uropods, I guess. Uh, I like those. That's, that's the kind of thing I'd want to mess around with. The host has kept marine isopods as well. He mentioned having Ligia thriving in some sort of Overcomplicated setup a while back. Pretty sure he's mostly kept the small types. Uh, I bred Ligia baudiniana without problems. The only thing was uh, they wanted fresh. They wanted small quantities of fresh fish flakes daily. And when I stopped giving them small quantities of fish flakes daily, they immediately started cannibalizing the young. I had from a starter group of like, it's been a while, Somewhere between eight and twenty, uh, I got. I had a couple hundred immatures. They grew fast. Um, this was all over the course of about a month. They were fine at room temperature. They were in brackish water. They had a bubbler um, to keep the water from being stagnant. They did exceptional in this uh, enclosure with like slate pieces and stuff. Wonderful. The second I stopped daily feedings. And thought, oh, I'll just put a pile of fish flakes here. They'll eat the pile of fish flakes. Over time, I don't have to do this every day. They started cannibalizing. They cannibalized all of the young. And eventually, I was left with just like five absolutely gigantic Ligia. I think the biggest one was about probably 50 millimeters long. It was a huge male, maybe even longer than that. It might have been as much as probably around 50 or a little over 50. And they did fine without um, without the daily feedings and all that stuff, but it's like they just either need so much space or they need daily care in my experience. They had plenty of hiding space. They could hide underwater too if they wanted to. All right, here's an X for the Cubara species Pak Chong Red. Uh, Kasharan says, if I didn't hate water changes, I'd give them a shot. Would more hides help? Probably not. I want to try again with diving beetles. I'm done with diving beetles. I'm done trying diving beetles. Except for maybe like little, little really teeny tiny ones, I'm done. I'm done trying them. 
Um, especially hides that only babies can get into. The problem there is the babies have to leave, leave the hides to feed is the problem. And who's to say it wasn't the babies cannibalizing each other is the other issue. When are piles of plant matter or something would help? You would think that. I gave them that. I gave them rinsed seaweed snacks to get the oil and the salt out of them. And they that didn't seem to affect it at all. Um, sounds like the best option is to separate the small ones. Yes, but that's work. I don't like working. I have enough work. I don't want to do more work. That's the problem. All right. Going once on the Cubara species, Pak Chong Red. Going twice. Sold. Two. We're going to do a control R. Looks like sieve, but might not be. Sold to Civ with a winning bid of 60. All right, let's do some 40 Porcelio Levis Caramel. Uh, Porcelio Levis Caramel is the oldest multi gene. Uh, line of isopods in culture started at Roach Crossing. Let me open up my isopod, uh, my isopod notes here to see the stats for caramel. The I think I copy pasted the information from something else and we cross reference the Roach Crossing website. Um, say seven years over seven years of selective breeding, and this was written in 2017, so that means 20. There's a typo in my records here. Um, all right, saving. Uh, this this strain of isopods, multi-gene color. This is not simple recessive and has been worked on at Roach Crossing since 2010. These are descended from the old hobby stock line of Levis, which are probably from California or Washington. One of the first isopod species brought into wider culture. And they are an important component of uh, creating lighter lines of oranges and have been, they are the progenitor of the How Now line of uh, Porcella Levis. How Now popped up in Carmel. And now we've crossed orange into How Now as well as into Carmel to create a couple of other varieties, which are super cool, which we will, uh, we will touch on. Um, any Marulanella? We will not have any Marulanella. I'm sorry. I don't really work with a lot of them at the moment, at least not Marulanella proper. Um, Mooch says, I own aqua tanks in New Jersey for 20 plus years. I install and maintain fresh and brackish salt reefs since 15 years old. Mooch, that is amazing and really awesome. You should start working with some Ligia and stuff for sure. Uh, I don't think feeding dead fish. I don't want to feed them dead fish. That is a recipe for all kinds of disgusting stuff. And I don't want to do that reliably. They need to eat fish flakes. They need to live on my life schedule or I'm not going to really want to work with them. All right. Here's an X for the Porcella Levis Caramel. I continue to refine this stock to this day, calling for the brightest individuals. This is the best caramel stock probably on the planet. Again, 14 years, almost over a decade, going, going to be going on two decades soon of working on these. Going once, going twice, sold to control R, could be Loki, could be Jojo. I got to catch up on chat. You guys are moving the chat so fast today. To Loki with a winning bit of 36 beating out Jojo. That might be a first time happening. Somebody beating JoJo in this particular manner. 
Okay, let's do some 20 Porcelio F. Hoff Men's Eggii Sevilla. Starting bid of $20. These key to Hoffman's Eggii, but two months going on three months of data suggests that they cannot reproduce with Hoffman's Eggii proper. And thus, it is very likely that as originally labeled, they are a different species from Hoffman's Eggii. Also, yes, Tennyson brings up the caramels are true levis. Not aff levis, as the uh, dairy cows and kin are. Um, always dead stuff on the coast. Maybe they appreciate small prey like oversized springtails. Um, yeah, maybe like amphipods or smaller isopods in the mix. Zero Cool Ninja has a hunch. Dr. Hemroid is a real doctor that spends his millions on his bug hobby. Dr. Hemroid, adopt me as your son. Adopt Zero Cool, cool Ninja. He's always wanted a dad like you. He always wanted to, he always wanted to apprentice under a heel. Tennyson says, starting to use compsodes and bioactives. Currently have a small colony and some crested guest geckos and corn snake bioactive. Jojo says, I'm going to start bidding earlier instead of last moment. It has failed me today. I like to hear that. Roach Crossing likes to hear that in this context. All right. Here's an X for the which side are you on? Exotic Willingness, thank you for the beautiful meme. The wonderful meme uh, with interesting uh, context in the background. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, photo Gallery's got a good picture of uh, Sevillas. They've been around for a while. Um, in terms of large size and hardiness, this is the best Spanish species to start working with. If you're on the fence, this is, you figure these out, you can kind of extrapolate to other Spanish species, but these are the most forgiving. And they get very large, too. Loki says, does an entomology degree pay off like, like at all, or is it just get a pest job and suffer? Uh, I think an entomology degree, there's always demand for entomological services, but uh, whether you're going to do like this, I, I don't think you're going to necessarily get a straight up job doing this, except for when Roach Crossing starts hiring again, pending who accepts jobs first. Bid is 60. Amaz, don't let them know that. All right. Porcelio species Sevilla. F. Hoffman's Eggii Sevilla. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Dr. Humroid with a winning bid of 65. All right, let's do some 20 Armadillidium Verneri, not orange, straight species. Starting bid of $30. Uh, these you don't see available. I never saw them available until one of the auction members offered me a group with some other stuff. And I gladly accepted. And they're nice. Care is the same as Klugiai or the Verneri oranges. Um, that seems to show their picture a little. The stock that I have is not quite so saturated in the back. And the, the seller made it clear that they were throwing a lot more lighter individuals. Where that dark gray is more of a light gray. Um, but that's still pretty spot on for the overall look. I like them. I like the fact that they're just the species of also... Somebody get me front of triangulum. I need to restart my front of triangulum. I want the Albania, uh, spotted Albanian, and I want just the regular run-of-the-mill front of triangulum hobby stock, too. I need both of those back. Please contact me if you have them. Siv says, lots of jobs at mass rear pests to sterilize and release in the wild includes a lot of surveying, cool traps, full of neat bugs at farms, worked for the government doing that a little while. Thank you, Siv, for some optimistic... Um, uh, optimism about uh, about uh, entomology degrees. Nobody's ever said I can't find a job with an entomology degree. I'll say that much. Now, a PhD, an entomology PhD, m might be kind of more variable what you can get. Uh, you know, you might think, 
I want to get a job identifying rare, unique butterflies from the Amazon. Nope, you're going to be doing corn bullworm work. You're going to be the head of the lab figuring out what chemicals and uh, 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 para parasitoids uh, can, can destroy them. Okay, I guess I okay, honey. It's time for your 2 p.m. corn bullworm research. Yes, dear. I'm gonna read Obey the Snarf's Liggy Exotica uh, notes here. Um, I kept Liggy Exotica, set them up like Carlos instructed. I offered fresh hair algae, rotala cuttings, river shrimp, fish flakes. They just parked themselves at the algae and eat and poop for ages. They had babies and they were growing up until chaos occurred in my life and they dried up. Happens. They wouldn't touch the rotala until it decayed. I just left all the algae and plant matter in there and piled more in there, and they kept eating it, leaving them alone most of the time went well until they dried out. Kyle, how late will today's stream go until I have school tomorrow? I don't know. Could go pretty late. Wish there were associates in entomology so I could dip my little pinky toe in it. Also, Loki wanting to move uh, you'll sect a job from Roach Crossing to go on paid bug finding trips. You gotta. Here's how you get money for bug finding trips. Show some results first. Alan has a decade of experience showing his very high capability to collect many, many things. Um, it, to get crowdfunding for these things, I think it would be a good show of faith to demonstrate your abilities first. And then once you've demonstrated some things, I think people will be very willing to fund your endeavors. Alan is the GOAT. Alan is definitely the GOAT of finding U.S. stuff. Thank you, Photo Gallery. You found a perfect picture of what most of this strain looks like. Here's an X for the Armadillidium burneri group, just the species, not orange or anything like that. Uh, a person did that. Armadillidium species cookies and cream of Ben Quintana's site go out of culture. They just poorly labeled Dalmatians. Uh, I was never aware of that, so I don't know what happened. Bob Harrison says, Entomology PhD equals entomology job with a heightened sense of pride. That's a good way to look at it, Bob. I, I second that notion. That being said, I do know several people with entomology PhDs who are happily and gainfully employed in respectable positions. Um, big ag and big, uh, big pest will pay you lots of money to manage labs. So know that. That being said, even if the job may seem soul-crushing on paper, both of those people that I know also maintain very extensive, very well-curated, and usually very coveted-slash-rare collections of insects. So keep that in mind. You don't have to make that the focus of what you do with your degree, but you can do it on the side, and it seems pretty common for us folks to get in those kind of uh, lines of interests. Going once on the A. Verneri. Going twice, sold. To Bob Harrison with a winning bid of 42. Bob gets a snipe in today on Isopod Day on an interesting strain of Verneri, not the usual oranges. Uh, let's do 40 Arma Delidium. Karachi, starting bid of $10. Some people have spoke up that Parachi is one of their, their favorite, most reliable little isopod guys. I second that notion. They're good little guys. Uh, I actually, I have a, oh man, this is funny. One of my spinoffs of Porcelio Scaber White Tiger is in my Armadillidium Parachi culture. And the white tigers are so similar to Parachi. When I open the bin, it's very difficult to tell them apart. Uh, they both got that kind of very minor striping going on, overall light color. So when I looked at the bark and I look at that to take a same, be like, okay, how are the Parachi doing and how are the white tigers doing? I can't really tell because they look so similar. Um, all my money for bug travel is being spent on your current auction, sir. Uh, Jojo says you need to force your pinky toe in. You don't wait around for someone to invite you to dip said pinky toe. Alan says maybe I chose my name right when I moved to the U.S. Some Korean guy picked Alan as my name for me. And when I when I put it in a Korean translator, it translated to hunting dog. Hey, that's pretty interesting. That's some good Alan lore right there. Hornwin says my degree is in history. Anyone want to fund my trip to Europe to hit up some archives? Uh, budget Texture 
says uh, obey the snarf. Size for Parachi, I think the biggest one I've seen was probably around 19 millimeters, usually lower than that. The true underrated and incredibly easy species. It's kind of like a deluxe version of uh, of Nazatum, kind of. It's so weird how similar they are to Scabarivum, too. Got some good pictures going on in here. Again, starting isopod people. Um, here, here's some. Here's a good set of a, of a nifty species. For the record, Parachi is insanely gorgeous in person. Gets crazy tints of light. Yes, they have a, a luster similar to Procellionides in the right lighting and in dry conditions. Very pretty, very easy. Going once, going twice, sold. To Beetle Pixel with a snipe winning bid of 38. Beetle Pixel. Still not considered the heel of the auction. We had that we had that vote the other day. All right, let's do 25 Armadillidium uh, Klugii Dubrovnik. Pure stock from 2018. Starting bid of $30. Uh, pure Klugii are harder to find now. There are some dedicated isopod people who have been safeguarding them. For a couple of years now. Slano, despite me not getting it until this summer, Slano seems to have been in good hands in general with smaller scale keepers. Montenegro, probably out the window. Get you you, you gotta get some guaranteed stock to Montenegro's. And in worse shape than the Montenegro's is the Dubrovniks. It seems that Dubrovniks were con contaminated very soon after getting into the United States, and thus get the guaranteed stock. Dubrovnik and Slano are the two larger localities of Klugai. Dubrovnik uh, has less creamy tan uh, colors on the, the sides of the body than um, Slano's do. I would honestly place Slano's at the bottom of my, my, my tier list of the three Klugai in culture. And I think Montenegro's and Dubrovnik's are tied up there. They're, they're both unique in their own ways. Not, not to poop on Slanos, but uh, the Dubrovniks are definitely tied for favorite for me. With that being said, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be back.
back. All right. I've decided also we are going to take a break at 1.30. I'm going to set an alarm for that right now. We'll take a two-hour break. i got to go touch baby bunnies outside. i got other stuff i got to do really quick. Two hours goes by like nothing uh, during the auction stuff. Devin says, these Dubrovnik are very consistent. The only group of Dubrovnik I received that has actual consistency uh, look like it is and look like it is supposed to. All right, here's an X for the Dubrovniks. Uh, true, uh, they were talking about the Parachi. They look, they look alloy. I don't know what that means. The luch, luch, the, the, uh, they look alloy. But uh, anyways, yes, quality Dubrovniks. Devin singing the praises of this strain of Dubrovnik. They are larger on average than Montenegro's, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is the strain to get. You cannot get this from Big Isopod anymore. All right, going once, going twice. Soul. To Beetle Pixel with a winning snipe bid of 55. Beetle Pixel with two wins in a row. Will Be Beetle Pixel make it three? All right. We have a group of 25. Armadillo, Officinalis, Israel, starting bid of $30. I like both of the localities of Armadillo Officinalis. I have these used to be CF Officinalis. Maybe they're still CF Officinalis. Not sure. Uh, this is These are larger than the Sicilian ones. They have different markings too. Really like them. Armadillo Species Israel, Tennyson says. I'm going to edit to put Species Israel because apparently that's the the up-to-date here. I'm going to put edited because Tennyson said so. Edited to species Israel because Tennyson said so. These are big. I like them. Um, the adult length can be... I think the biggest one I've ones I've seen have been around like 21 to 22 mil, millimeters. Let me check my documents to see what we have written here. I have 20 millimeters written down for the average maximum body size. Um Check your text from me for a moment, Kyle, it's regarding the Israel Armadillo. Let's see. Um, all right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that information, a person. I, I won't say any more about that information. It uh, doesn't, doesn't, uh, don't have to apply per se. All right. Thank you for sharing that, though. Confirmed uh, uh, confirmation of stuff. Anyways. So anyways, listing it as Tennyson says, too. Here's an X for the armadillo species Israel. Marking that there. Um, again, they used to be a fish, CF officinalis. Used to be just a fish analysis, but um, now apparently being back to species. Going once. They like it dry, by the way. Going twice. Sold. To Loki with a winning bid of 51. For the species Israel, Loki giving them another go. Let's do a group of 20 Porcelio Nichols Eye, starting bid of $20. Uh, the forgotten stepchild of, um, of uh, Spanish Porcelio, overshadowed 
by uh, Bolivari in many people's eyes, overshadowed by Magnificus, um, intimid intimidated by the uh, the faster reproductions and s slightly smaller size of Porcelio species Valencia orange, to which it bears a extremely strong resemblance. Uh, I like them. I'm going to give them the Roach Crossing stamp of approval for uh, favorite, Roach Crossing favorite setting on the future site. They've been very reliable for me. They take it very dry. Haven't given them any issues. They get a lot larger than I think people realize. They get larger on average than Bolivar I do in my experience. But uh, obviously they're competing with Magnificus in terms of the size and colors categories. People will almost always choose Magnificus over Nickel's Eye. So unfortunate That's how it is, though. Obey the Snark says, going to make it so dry for you. We need a Loki emoji. Love the Rubavin. What's a Rubavin? Rubavin. Oh, I lift things up and put them down. All right, here's the X for Nickel's Eye. Going once, going twice, sold, two could be luge, could be inverterarium, we're refreshing, we're going to see, luge 3737 with a winning bid of 36. Come on, you could have done 37, Luch. You're Luch 3737, my guy. All right, let's do... Um, we did those already. We did those. Let's do a group of... 20... Cubaris species... White Shark, starting bid of $1. I like these guys. Uh, the, some of the pricing on them is, is way too ridiculous, but I like them. They're very cool. They're not worth the whatever ridiculous price tag they used to have, but they're very cool. They're definitely worth keeping. They're not overhyped. Kyle, I will need a walkthrough on how I'm supposed to get Armadillo to breed. You put them... In a full-top ventilated enclosure, you give them two inches of just random isopod substrate. You put a piece of bark over the top of it, and you feed them fish flakes once a month and maybe water once a week if it's dry or once a week if it's if it's uh, humid and more than that if it's dry. And I just popped the top off of this pen, and I don't know where it went to, and that's going to really annoy you. Oh, Crisis averted, everybody. I got the pen cap back. Um, hypothetically, well, it's my third try with them because they hate me. 37 is my favorite. I didn't think of it because I'm so slow. Good call. Um, oh, man, I got some. They were list still listed Nickel's Eye um, with the Porcelio Nickel's Eye. They're in the U.S. now. Siv, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, Rubin is Porcelio Violasis now, not Nickel's Eye, I believe. Uh, I didn't hear any updates on those. Porcelio Violasius, I'm going to just look those up. Poor Man's Magnificus, yes, Bob, that is the title for those, Poor Man's Magnificus. Porcelio Violasius look pretty cool. I'd like to get those. You know... Those Porcelio Violaceus look very similar to Porcelio Hossi Light. Just kind of suspicious. Not terribly similar, but similar. Uh, water one corner with sphagnum moss. Should they get moisture on the whole thing? Um, all my isopod substrates are moist throughout. It's just the top layer that I manage for dry or moist. So... But at the same time, if it gets too moist, they just sort of burrow into and curl up in the dry areas too. Kyle, those Simon Doe, I won last auction. I'm going crazy. I got like a dozen adults now. It says Bitter Blood. Good job. Excellent. Uh, Porcelio Violaceus Rubavin. I think I'd like to get those. 
Nikolzai Rubavin, Violacius is their old ID. All right, so Porcelio Violacius is now Porcelio Nikolzai Rubavin, apparently. Nikolzai was their new one. I was confused last we talked. Talked to Nicole Luis for clarification. Well, I want those now because I love Nikolzai, so Stella can type now. Stop, Austin. You can have these. Here's an X for the White Shark Cubaris. Again, Nifty Dudes would be a good candidate for a communal with something like an Armadillidium, I think. How do you get the bottom whip but not the top? You just add water. I, When I make the substrate, it's all moist. I put it in, and then when I water, when I add water to the substrate, I only add it in the back corner or the back half, and when I spray, I'll spray the whole top, but not enough that the entire substrate gets resaturated on the dry end. Oops, oh, I hit a button and it pulled up a bunch of things. Okay, there we go. All right, going once on the White Sharks. Going twice. Sold. To Bob Harrison with a winning bid of 62. Congrats, Bob. Bob has been a little, a little more active in the last couple of bids. Uh, with, and by that, I mean he's won. <laughs> uh, let's do 40 Silisticus Convexus Dearborn, Michigan, starting bid of $10. I appreciate the Bob the Builder gift. Uh, a species that was has, again, fallen to the wayside amidst all the other, uh, not necessarily bigger, but fancier isopods. Uh, unfortunate because it, they're they're interesting for having a more porcelio body shape, but also still being a conglobulating species. Bob Harrison, American Sniper. Luke says, Tess, any update on the pods? You have a file of all the update information names you can send me if possible. I need to get the new names labeled. Oh, yep. That's the eternal battle is uh, updating names with isopods. As, as it always was and as it ever shall be. Damn boy, he ballin'. Love it. Photo Gallery put some good pictures here. Here's an X. Again, one of the old, old guard of isopod species. Hmm. Pardon me, everybody. I have Longmont County locality of these sniping. Going once on the Convexus. We'll make a good bioactive cleanup crew or feeders if you need them to. Going twice. Sold. To might be JoJo, might be the host. Let's see. JoJo with a winning bid of 15. All right. Let's go back to something fancier. Let's do a group of... High five. Armadillidium gestroi, one of my favorite isopods. Starting bid of $20. And you can quote me on that. One of my favorite isopods, Armadillidium gestroi. I think they're the largest Armadillidium in culture, or they at least on average grow to be the largest. Um, I have, they are unkillable if kept moist uh, with regards to the Silisticus convexus. Yeah, they're pretty pretty sturdy. I'm working on some multi-gene. Aren't Rufoi larger? I don't know, Tennyson. You would know better than I do on that. If Rufoi are larger, I do want those too. Um, anybody got Rufo Eye available, let me know. Haven't seen Rufo Eye in person yet, so not confident. I would like Rufo Eye if they are larger. But yes, Roach Crossing, stamp of favoritism approval. I do love me, my gastro eye. So much that I have not one but two colonies of just the wild type. <clears throat> and somehow I killed my zingers, but I need to get those again because I really like them. Mm. 
we have uh, three ish total pages of isopods left. Here's an X. I think we're going to be in, we'll make some good time uh, going into the evening. Alan wishes he had an extra container when he visited coming because there were a bunch of Silisticus there. Um, but again, I'm not confident they're larger. Um, have you seen orange or yellow gestry instead of being black? I've seen the zingers. I had the zingers and I killed them somehow. I think they were too moist. I want to get them again. I would like to pick up more gestry uh, morphs from credential breeders because apparently when the zingers were first distributed, they were still throwing regular and stuff like that, even though apparently it is very easy to get them to just breed true to the phenotype. Steve, they have zingers. I've never seen orange. Yeah, somebody sent me pictures of it's it's hot off the presses. Apparently, there's some orangish individuals popping up now. Beetle Pixel are typing. We are doomed. Uh, going once for the Gestro Y. Going twice. Sold. To Unilagia, who corrects to 48. Unilagia, you're in hot water here. Um, would, would you like to concede bid to Beetle Pixel? The period system isn't working as intended. Again, up to my discretion to interpret, but I'm going to ask if he'd like to concede the bid to Beetle Pixel. We will see. Remember, you got to use X's to correct your bids too, not just stars. If I'm allowed to correct the no, if not, then yeah. All right, we're conceding it to Beetle Pixel with a winning bid of 46. All right, let's do a group of Aniscus Acellus Orange, 20 Aniscus Acellus Orange, starting bid of $20. Not Maple Orange, the stock came to me contaminated, so I have reselected for just the orange coloration, and since it was contaminated, it is no longer considered Maple Orange. You should ask if Roach Crossing allows refinancing. Devin's had some Batium get nearly the same size as Gestry. My Batium have been on the lower side of size range, like just typical Bulgari size. Steven has some that the black part is more of yellow and orange. Yes, yeah, I would like I like that. That seems to be more what people are kind of selecting for, what uh, what's being uh, – some of the morphs are moving towards. <clears throat> Here's an X for the Acellus Orange. Going once, Acellus Orange. Going twice, Sold. Amos with a winning bid of 28, a nice, succinct, Snipe, not even a jump in pricing snipe, just a good incremental snipe there. Let's do a group of, I just saw them, 25 Cubara species, white pigeon, starting bid, $1. I'd like to tell everybody that I have very fairly conclusive anecdotal evidence that white pigeon is the least cold tolerant isopod species significant evidence that they are the least tolerant uh, i think it was for the auction in the fall or last spring or whatever i think i killed three sets of these shipping them out because they just can't take any cold and it's uh it's weird that rubber duckies are fine uh, the white sharks are fine, troglodyllo is fine, but for some reason these white pigeons have next to no cold tolerance. Can they at least go down to 60? I don't even know. I don't know. I would think so, but um, 
I would think maybe you get into the, the mid fifties. They uh they don't do so well. Roach Crossing should take payment plans. Wonder what the exact locality on White Pigeons is. I wonder that myself. Dewey says I keep my house temp around sixty at night because I have Highland plants. Again, I would laugh in Arizona heat. I, I would really think that probably in the low fifties they just they just die. It seems they are the least cold tolerant. I've had more DOAs due to cold of this species than I think every other isopod species combined that I've sold. White pigeons always catch me off guard. These have no feathers. Uh, Bree says that hers survived down to 63 while the power is out. So we have a number. They can take down to 63 degrees Fahrenheit for sure. If there's a camel spider in this arachnid section, we're mortgaging the house, boys. Nobody's outbidding me. Um, Patrick G. Parker had the white pigeon shipped to Texas, um, and half of them died last fall auction. So, again, it might be 50s might be the, the great filter for white pigeons. Might be. Here's an X for the white pigeons. 29 minutes till break. I can't wait to eat food. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Double Z with a winning bid of 48. Congrats, Double Z, on your white pigeons, and let's hope that they don't die in transit. Next up, let's do a group of 25, Armadillidium vulgari, Orange Vigor, the OG, straight from the creator, Winky Face. Starting bid of $20. You won't see any wild types in these. This is the fully refined stock. I am the originator of Orange Vigor, created from red males that Alan sent me in the winter that I had to dig under the snow and find wild caught uh, Michigan vulgari females to cross them with to, uh, to create the line. They are very vigorous and they are very orange. I'm working on and have been for a couple of years. It's proving difficult. A red, red uh, vulgari out of these that has red from birth to death. It's proving difficult. I'm going to keep selecting the adult phenotype heavily and then work downwards in the, uh, uh, what's that called, ontology, and see if I can get a, a pure red vulgari out of this line that is red from birth to full adult size. We'll see how that goes. Again, I got about three years into that project. I almost lost them last year. They really rebounded, so we're going to see. There might be more later. I'm not sure. Might be. I'd say there's a good chance. No guarantee. Uh, Alan says, the first ones I got from you were producing purplish browns initially. The first cross of Orange Vigor to the Michigan, um, the Michigan Vulgari. The first cross produced a wide array of colors, some of which I have never seen in any crosses since then. And it kind of makes me want to cross another a male orange vigor to one of my Dearborn uh, line vulgari to see if I can throw those interesting ones. They will take it quite dry. Uh, Alan's wondering if anybody's tried to isolate purples. Uh, I haven't tried, but that would be interesting. That might be what these uh, these red ones I'm really selecting for, actually. Uh, maybe you're, we're talking about the same thing here. Going once... Going twice. Sold. To JoJo. Beating out Beetle Pixel and Loki. And C. Elegans with a winning bid of 38. For some good orange vigor stock. JoJo's ready to sell the house for that one. Uh, let's do some just uh, Armadillidium granulatum, 
starting bid of ten dollars another species that's kind of fallen by the wayside in the wake of all the fancy cubaris and yet they are still here and not just to suffer they gave us the magic potion granulatum which i guess we can be happy for that so always a good idea to keep these old stocks going luch loves his orange vigors and jordan henderson Bulgari don't necessarily like it dry, but they, they will tolerate a lot of dryness. Uh, one of my main orange vigor cultures is kept in with my Elliptorina levigata, so they're getting hot and dry, and they do just fine in there. Control F for something. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Here's an X for the granulatum. You can see in this beautiful macro photo their granulated experience. Tennyson says that mine are the best granulatum that he's seen, more yellow than any other stock. I haven't I haven't selected my main colony for the yellow. Whatever color is in there is just what's in there. I was trying to breed for higher yellow, then stressy, depressy, blah, blah, blah happened. I lost that stock. But to be honest, I didn't see much progress breeding for higher yellow in my granulatum. But apparently they have more yellow than other stocks. So whatever. From Kyle. Thank you, Lizard Beans, for showing those off. Cute little guys. They're um they're uh, Costco brand uh, grand, uh, Costco brand gastro eye is one way to look at them. Here's an X. I think they probably like it or take it drier than um, than gastro eye, but that's not really saying much. A lot of armadillidium have a good degree of dry tolerance. Going what? <laughs> Going twice, sold. It's either Bob Harrison or Amos. Let's see who, when the dust settles, who it is. Tennyson keeps him with uh, his Masola hissers. Nifty. Bob Harrison with a winning bid of 16. Yeah, hissers, are, hissers would be a great, uh, great, great companion for granulatum. Great companion for a lot of armadillidium. All right, time to watch the world burn. We have a group of 12 troglodillo species green spots. Starting bid, $1. We like, you'll, you'll love to see the world burning sometimes. Some isopod keepers just want to watch the world burn. Anyone uses ice pods and other invert calls in their compost bins? Where's that, uh, where's that blue? I was going to skip with that. What did I do with it? There it is. Uh, best composting job is honestly going to be stuff that eats through everything and destroys the substrate. Dwarf whites, uh, maybe a gabaformius. Porcelio dilatatus would be really good for composting. What do you keep your paraplanina in mind used to escape no matter what? I use these uh, these uh, faunariums of the underlayman and the barrier. Works great for paraplanita. I use gasketed 10-gallon lids. I also have some old. These are ancient for me. They're all, all, over a decade old, going on a decade and a half. Some hexagonal candy containers with good press-down lids. that I put brass microscreen over holes in the sides. Uh, nothing gets out of those. They are 100% scaped escape proof in all contexts um just humidity management can be a little little difficult with those sometimes i think you can say sold now what's going on oh dr humroid uh, slamming into everybody of course okay here's an x anybody want to challenge dr humroid for the green spots i love the uh, this weird even crazier than exponential one dollar Five dollars, ten dollars, two hundred dollars, two hundred one from double Z. All right, going once, going twice, sold. 
to Beetle Pixel with a winning bid of 253. Beetle Pixel not playing around this round. Dr. Humroy wasn't playing either, but Beetle Pixel really got in there. I mean, that really got a hand. I mean, Bill, Beetle Pixel, what is it? What is it? Beetle Pixel, uh, I got, I got, a, I got pulled the full anchor man quote. And that really escalated quickly. That escalated quickly. Um, I, I got to find the full transcript for that. We, we got we got to get the full transcript. I say that. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand. Let's see. I got to have the – here we go. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Um, and then uh, uh, <laughs> Beetle Pixel with the, uh, yeah, I stabbed the man in the heart. And I'm like, yeah, I saw that. Uh, uh, Beetle Pixel killed the guy. Did you throw a trident? Rick? Yeah, there was there was Dr. Humroid and uh, who else participated? And Double Z. And uh, I killed uh, Dr. Humroid with a, with, a, with a snipe bid to which I say, uh, uh, Beetle Pixel, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. You find you should find yourself a uh, mental asylum or relative close by, lay lie for a while, uh, get some help because you're you're probably wanted for assassinating these people's bidding careers. Make sure Pot Kyle can pay for the goats. I appreciate that, greatly appreciate it. Beetle Pix Pixel, American Sniper. Oh my God! Oh my God! All right, let's tone it down just a touch. 40 for Celio Levis Cali Mix, starting bid of $1. I've gone off on these before. Whatever they have, it seems to be a heritable, heritable pathogen or condition that causes them to have that marbling color. You can't breed for it. A lot of them are sterile. It seems like they just kind of continual, continually become reinfected in the colony. Um but it's heritable because some smaller individuals pop up with it. And whatever is going on, this phenotype is not genetic. That's all that I can say for sure. Who's the best sniper poll? We got uh, who is the best sniper? It's almost like asking who the heel is uh, of the auction, but not quite. We got Beetle Pixel. Dr. Humray will put him up there. And then uh, who else snipes? Chris Sniper obviously snipes. I feel like Bob Harris. Bob's been doing a little bit of casual sniping. We'll put these all up there, see what people think. In the fall auction, was definitely hemorrhoid. Loki, you don't, you don't really do don't – don't really necessarily do snipes per se. Um, photo gallery, that doesn't seem to be of Cali mix. That seems to be of just some poorly refined, low-expression Dalmatian uh, Levis stock. Joy highly recommends. Joy seems to have a good colony of Cali mix. From Joy's video, I'm seeing a, a, this is more what you should expect from your Cali mix of the, the type of phenotypes. Take note of the light individuals that are not Dalmatians but have something else going on with them, but it's pretty close enough. Here's an X for the Cali mix. I, see, I hear Angela's home. I think she went out and bought bagels. I'm super excited for bagels for lunch. Uh, oh, yeah, we got, some, we got some good stuff coming up. All right, going once on the Cali mix. Going twice. Sold. To JoJo, winning bid of 22. Jojo stocking up on what species he can get for his living situation. All right. Here's a really good, here's a really cool Scaber project. Very proud of, tried and true, absolutely kick ass. 25 Porcelio Scaber, Agni Kai. These are the ones that I torture every year. I do a mass murder of them by drying out the culture to get them as dry tolerant as possible. I would go so far as to say among the non-rolling isopods, well, an exception maybe for actual Porcelio ornatus, um, you know, the same species that witches brews in. With the exception of those, 
these are the most dry tolerant isopod. They need just a smidgen of a moist corner to breathe, to survive. They will take bone dry and very low air humidity, even with airflow. Um, they have they've not been selected for a standardized phenotype. The pictures, the the uh, they they kind of all over the place. They get leukistics popping up. Um, you got some lava phenotype. You got some white tigery phenotype. You got all kinds of stuff going on in there. The main purpose for these is the utility of a Loki's offended that I think that that uh, they wouldn't snipe. Um, it's not necessarily you wouldn't snipe. It's just there's a very specific connotation with the kind of with the heel uh, context. Kyle, you're trying to keep create the answer to people asking why I spot to use with their bearded dragon. Indirectly, yes. I, I do want to supply the best bioactive, dry bioactive strain. Cute bear, thank you for showing off a mixture of what you can expect from your Agni Kais. Again, Leukistic is in this line. I think it's responsible for some of the lighter individuals' colors that they're heads for Leukism. Um, primarily, primarily Lavas. They are a cross between the California stock that created the Leukistic, the Lucy line, and Lava, and selected only, only for their dry tolerance. That's the only thing that they've been selected for. I don't care about what phenotypes pop up in this strain. Is this a live auction? Marcus Gone Wild. Yes, it's in the Discord. So um, that's okay. Or, or Yeah, Marcus Gone Wild. Anyways, um, here you go. A utility line of Skaber. Tried and true. Again, I, I commit mass murder once a year to make sure they are still conforming to my dryness expectations. Um, the roughest one... The roughest one was, I think, in 2022 or 2021, where I was really pushing the strain, and I dried them out so much that we were down to three individuals, and they were barely alive. Like, when I went to pick through the container, I was like, is this one alive or dead? It's like doing that thing that dried out isopods do, where they go, like, they move very feebly, like their hydraulics are all messed up because there's no water in their system, and... Uh, uh, I was like, okay, I hope we're going to save the line. And what do you know? What do you know? They uh, they rebounded, and I have plenty of them now. And I still do this. Uh, not I haven't done a ruthless call like that one. I really should, but um, they they did get a they did get an almost to that point. I didn't water them for two months, and they have full top ventilation, etc. We didn't quite get to the uh, the the cumbersome. Uh, exacerbated movements, but I think they were last down to as of early February, they were down to probably about 20, and then I, I watered them heavily, and now we've got the numbers back up again. Kyle is bringing a triops version of isopods. Kyle isopod torture. All right. Going once. That being said, also I should say they still do, do well in human enclosures, but Definitely, you can keep these full top ventilation, let it get quite dry, and still keep a colony going without issues. Going once, going twice, sold to control R ring. Wish you could call via selling, but that kind of ruins the reason you do it. Um, yeah, I, uh, nice try. JoJo with a winning bid of 51. JoJo's got two Scabers under, no, sorry, two Porcelios under the belt. Uh, but, yes, I am very proud and happy with this line. Expect it to become more popular. It's a Scaber. You know, the people who are really into the permitting thing uh, will latch on to it. Variable phenotype, so Kyle doesn't have to be very uppity about you're mixing up the simple recessive. Simple recessive should always breed true, blah, blah, blah. It's a very practical line. Uh, break is from 130 to 330, and there might be more Scaber White Tigers later. Did you reset? Mine shows above. Oh, no, no. It shows here. It shows that JoJo's got the win in mine. Here you go. I'll take the, the picture. Um, okay. Here's something really cool. We got a group of 25 pro professional, 
Procellio, Procellio Volcanius from Glen Rose, Texas. Starting bid of $30. These guys have a good degree of dryness tolerance as well. These are um, these are fresh in culture as of this summer, I think. Nothing particularly tricky about them. I see potential for those poor scavers. Kyle, thank you, Burb. Burb, I am pinning this here. This is literally the inspiration for the Porcelio Scaber Agni Kai. Literally this. That's literally me in that picture. Literally. That's great. Uh, let's see if I can find some Pro Porcelio Volcanius. So I don't know why, but when I Google um, – oh, it's because it's in Glen Rose. When I Google Pro, Pro Porcelio Volcanius Glen Rose, Texas, the first thing that pops up is the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, which is uh, very amusing to me. So, wow, a lot of these pictures don't make them look all that flattering. They're definitely a lot cooler in person. Um, TJ's got an okay picture. There's definitely the colors more intense. There's a picture from the global GBIF something database that shows some of the, uh, the more intensity of the coloration. I think there's good potential here. I think there's good potential to make some nice morphs from these guys. I think there's some very good potential. Uh, if you throw up a small colony of white lilacs in the misc, I won't be, uh, I won't be mad. All right. Keep that in mind. Hey, we live right outside of Glen Rose, Dinosaur Valley. Amanda, get some uh, get some uh, Pro Porcelio from Dinosaur Valley. I really want that. That would be cool. It's a good selling point. Do I want some deformed A. Vulgari, Nightmare Wolf? Welcome to the live stream. Sure. Send me a – shoot me an email. I'm curious. Maybe it's a genetic thing that can be bred for. Cute Bear posting an excellent picture of Pro Porcelio Volcanius. They definitely have a more complex look to them in person here's an x for the pro porcelio volcanius glen rose texas i checked the marine species database for proper spelling it is volcanius with a k not with a c how are they deformed is also a good question we're getting closer to break everybody We're going to have to pull some cool stuff out before our, uh, our last bids here. Going once for the Pro Porcelio Volcanius. Going twice. Sold. To Arbs with a winning bid of 35. All right, let's do some lost media. Armadillidium vulgari, St. Lucia, starting bid of $30, pure 2017 stock. They have, these guys have gone through multiple population uh, bottlenecks in my care. They are currently not just rebounding they're doing well again they have lost some of the traits of original saint lucia's i don't see many there used to be orange individuals that popped up in the colony i don't uh, i don't see those anymore somebody asked me if i want chylobrachis natanicarum slings uh, you know what, Jordan Henderson, uh, shoot me a shoot me a message about those Kylo brackets. That might be something I'd like to stock for my retail inventory. Um, a person says they have a variable skirt and miss mold consistently, from what I understand. Get me in on those. I want to give them a try. I think that's the Vulgari with a skirt talked about in the general chat. Sometimes that can be from nutritional stuff. Um. Sometimes that can be the uh, that can be the cause of that that sort of uh, warping on the sides could be genetic though could be environmental conditions but yes I do want those I want to give them a try I uh, I tried them before when I lived with my parents and I had them in a really tiny deli cup and I was I was I was an idiot then whatever I was trying to do it wasn't uh, 
it wasn't uh, wasn't a good good effort. Royal Dillo, the snakes were bred by Kim Wisman of uh, First Stop Reptiles is going to be Kim's business name. How many Genesis Thula do you want? By the way, I'm legit going to start playing to get some. I will take up to 30 adults and or larvae from the same location. Um, I'm fine with as few as you can get also. Bread the Snakes is Kim Wisman. Soon to be first stop reptiles. So snakes? I can't remember if it's snakes or reptiles. Uh, is this real life? Oh, that's a different Discord server. Sorry. Uh, I got to get back to Bid Central. Got to get the inhale. So, Volgar and St. Lucia were always less popular in Punta Cana. So, um, it's very likely that they've been fully compromised now, especially from one major isopod dealer, almost certainly compromised with Midwestern stock of Volgari. So, I cling to these. All right, going once. That photo gallery's first image is probably compromised stock of St. Lucia with the ratio I'm seeing. Again, I got about 100 St. Lucia from the primary, the person who imported them in 2017. Um, they threw about maybe about 5% uh, of the colony was oranges slash reds. 10% were like very strong true yellows, and the rest was a variation of grays without the little yellow flecking. Again, that seems to be indicative of mainland Volgari contamination. Uh, going once, going twice, sold. To Beetle Pixel with a winning bid of 43, wanting these pure St. Lucia's, this ancient strain of St. Lucia's. It's funny, ancient is now seven years old. Very interesting. All right, let's do a group of 25, and I think this is the only strain of these in culture. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Of 25, Armadillidium. Christchurch, UK, starting bid of $30, Armadillidium depressum. I'm pretty sure this is the only locality stock of depressum in U.S. culture. I could be wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I like to be wrong if somebody has the right answer. Um, and these get larger than the standard hobby stock of depressum. Any badium today? Yes, badium are on the docket. Um, I do not like to. I do not like to participate in in public gossip of various things. I don't. I don't think that's. I if people have questions, they may ask me individually. Uh, I think it's unprofessional to gossip by name. And if I've done that before, uh, I apologize for being a hypocrite. But I'm pretty sure I haven't done it before. And if I have, there's probably one particular. Uh, Facebook riddled individual that has that causes so much ire in myself and other people that I apologize if the name has left my lips. I think we all know who this one particular uh, eccentric uh, asshole of an individual is, uh, but will not name drop. Bad for business, yes, that is true. That being said, with some people, if if there's the 130 alarm. If their practices are so unethical and infuriating that it, 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 I cannot contain myself, I will speak out. But again, I think everybody knows this one individual that I'm talking about, the source of much ire across professional bug keepers. So will there be any slugs and snails in the misc section? Yes, there will be. It's not a good look for vendors and community leaders, though. Yes, that's very true. So I will bite. I will bite my tongue, but you all know this one particular individual. Uh, photo gallery posts a picture of depressum, but bigger. Here's an X. If you wanted depressum, locality stock, larger than the regular hobby stock. Um, probably, unless it throws a mute, it'll probably never be more uh, more publicized, but. Uh, these were these were received from a very unconventional source, and I appreciate I appreciate that we have them. 
and that I will not lose them. They are a treasure, precious to me. All right. Going once for the Depressum Christchurch, UK. Going twice. Sold. Pass. Our first pass. Interesting. The hobby string sold, but the Christchurch locality did not. They're up for grabs if anybody wants them. Okay. That was supposed to be our last bid. We're going to put... Um, we're going to go out with a bang, though. Just, just last minute here. We're going to do semi-lightning round, everybody. Uh, 20 Porcelionides... Beer Goddess, Big Pine Key, Florida, starting bid $1, a.k.a. Species, bid Big Pine Key. Starting bid of $1 on the way out. Uh, I'm trying to copy it so I can post it in my records and everybody's bumping this stuff up like crazy. I did 20, starting bid $1. Whoa, lots of uh, lots of stuff. Carter, we will have at least two pairs of adult really cool beetles at the auction this evening. Um, Alan John says, sometimes I wonder how those people continue to persist in the hobby at certain individuals. Um, it happens. Uh, Royal Dillo says, you're not even the person who first appears on Google when looking up Agni Kai Isopod, the first person... And the person who's first doesn't even mention any arid tolerance. Let's see who the first person is. There's only so many people that I've sent them to. Let's see. Huh. Jam Jam Exotics. Never heard of them. That being said, I also don't have them listed on Roach Crossing. Uh, yeah, they don't list any of the important part of the strain. That being said, props to them for getting it on the internet before I do, but they don't miss an, they, they miss the entire purpose of the strain. Uh, oh, well. Jam Jam is James. Oh, then I need to have a talk with James. I was going to say, there's only like only five-ish people I've sent Agni Kai's to, and James is one of them. So I'm going to have to tell him, hey, add these to your sales pitch, my friend. Uh, Illumas are thriving, so thanks for them, my friend. Alan's the best. Alan's too depressing to bid on stuff. Uh, most active isopod from Kashard. I think Aluma, Aluma Silata, I think they're talking to. Jam Jam. Uh, James, James is a good guy. James is a good guy. Uh, some of the stock that, that is going up later originates from James. And I'll give James this credit, too. James, I, I did some uh, uh, some wholesale groups of stuff to James, I don't know, six months ago or something, or maybe even last year, of at least three species of stuff that I then proceeded to lose. James kept, kept going, and he sent them back to me, and they did not get compromised. So, um, like my Penny Pack, uh, Penny Pack Park Gold Armadillidium Vulgari went to James, lost him here, sent me some back. Bada boom, bada bing. So I have thanked him for saving those things for me. All right, let's see what's going on here. Uh, uh, Tally Sin is claiming the depressum. I'll put that into the notes right here. Tally Sin, congratulations on Tally Sin. Congratulations on claiming the depressum Christchurch. You won't be upset with that strain. Here's an X for our last thing, the Big Pine Key Isopods. Um, Penny Pack, I, I have to check my sheet for the name straight from, uh, from Bill Yanon isolated them in 2016 or 2017. And the official name is Penny Pack Gold. They come from Penny Pack Park in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and they were... Uh, isolated and refined by Bill Yanon around 2016, and they were acquired from directly from Bill 
The stock is directly from Billion Known in 2019. So this is the, the penny packs that I have are pure straight from the person who isolated them. So they are also a locality um, of, uh, of Volgari. Boy, lightning moves a lot slower nowadays. Yeah, thank you for commenting that. We got to wrap this up. Sorry, guys. I got, you know how I am with isopod stuff. Going once on the big pine key. Going twice. Sold. To Beetle Pixel with a winning bid of 43. All right, there we have it. That was our last isopod pre-break. We've still got plenty to go from there. Trust me, there's plenty more where that came from. We have, again, uh, roughly three pages of stuff to go through still. The Sniper player title. Love it. Thanks, Alan. I'm going to like that. All right, and everyone... Bidding paused until 3, uh, we're going to have to do 3.30, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. I got my board already written written up here. I got Kyle will be back at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. We will pick up with even more isopods as we get in ready for our crazy evening. I'll leave this here for everybody. Crazy evening inbound. Guaranteed to be a time of fun and a half. So I will see you all at, what did I say, 3.30. Have a fun chair stream, everybody. i got to move all my stuff out of the way. Lower this. Do that. Boy, Kaloy. Boy, Gavalt. All right. Perfect. See you all at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time.
Hello everybody, I have returned. A little past our estimated time, but that's okay, better late than never. Cool. And with more coffee, squeal as you like, but I'm lighting up the barbecue. Uh, all right, 42 people here already. Wonderful, just what I like to see. I'm gonna ping everybody and say, Bidding resumes. We're back to isopods. I don't know if you guys noticed what I did there. Um, I usually say electric boogaloo, but instead we've got eclectic bugaloo. Same thing. Back just in time, got Yankees playing NCAA Women's Championship game. Since Kyle is uh, five minutes late, we will be extending the auction five hours more. Uh, oh, that's a very interesting gift from Dewey. I like that. So it begins. All right. Let's get something thrown up here for everybody. Let's do a group of 25 troglodillo species soil. Starting bid of $10 Ghibli pod. What, what, uh, what, what, uh, what Ghibli Ghibli film is that from? Kind of makes me want to watch it just so I can see what the context is for that. Let's see if there's anything important that's popped up on my phone. I think we're going to take the next break at 6.30, and then we're going to go as long as physically possible, depending on where we are on the uh, agenda. Uh, also, I have an addendum to Kim from, uh, from Kim about something. Um, talking about the guinea worm versus the... Uh, uh, rod of Asclepius mythos, um, and that the guinea worm disease dates back to 1000 BC. The myth of Asclepius appears later. The guinea worm predates the myth of Asclepius, but no information regarding the emergence of the guinea worm cure was found. Uh, the editor regrets the error of privately asserting that the, um, the Asclepian staff predates the guinea worm trick. Um, but apparently there's no evidence that the, the guinea worm cure was, uh, was found, uh, previous to the rod of Asclepius, only that the, uh, only that the disease dates back to 1000 BC. So there you go. In case anybody was extra super duper curious there, uh, it took you time to get the rainbow picks. We understand. Thank you for reminding me that I have to go get the rainbow picks again. Wait, no, I might have some pictures on here from uh, somebody who, who bought some a couple of uh, days ago. I know I have them here. It was one of the things they requested pictures of. A lot of goat pictures I'm seeing. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, here we go. I do have a picture of the uh, rainbows, and I'm going to try to digitize it. You know, I can upload it directly from my phone when the time comes. I'll, I'll use mobile Discord. The GIF is from Secret World of Arietti. Girl is shrunk into a small size. And Kasharan says, new website when? Chris is working diligently on it. Do you think you blabbers Argentina's well-being culture? Jordan... Thanks for telling me about another Ublabras I'd wanna I'd wanna get. Let's see. They look a lot like Ceranus. They look like they're probably the size of Marajora. Maybe one day we can be hopeful. All right. Here's an X for the Troglodillo species soil. I like these a lot more than I thought I would. I, uh, I originally thought they were very ugly from seeing pictures of them, but in person, the little white antennas really pop, so I do like them quite a bit. Mm. Lifeblood. All right, going once. Going twice. Sold. To Beetle Pixel with a winning snipe of 44. Oops, not $4. 44. 
Beetle Pixel also won the last uh, last round of auctioning that happened before the break. I'm fast as fudge, boy. All right, let's do a group of uh, 50 Porcelio Levis Orange, starting bid of $10. This is just the, uh, the orange, simple recessive orange in Porcelio Levis. Maybe good for uh, for just your, your your bulk viv edition, your feeder for lizards colony. I'm not sure. Uh, earwigs tend to really like uh, eating isopods. They use Levis as earwig feeders sometimes. Are they? Do they behave any differently? Uh, I'm not sure what that. Uh, maybe at Bree talking about the soils. Might have juvie, so hopefully they get a steady colony going. Silly little wide guys. They are very silly little wide guys. Other than soil and green spots, are there any other troglodillos floating around currently? I haven't really kept the kept tabs on that, but if there are, I think I'd like to put them on my list of things I want to get. So if anybody knows of more camos, sphinx, troglodillo camo, let's see. Species camouflage, which just looks like uh, green spots. Don't seem to see any available for sale anywhere. Uh, let's see Sphinx, what those look like. Uh, Adinda species, Trogodillo, Troglodillo species Sphinx. Um, oh, now those are cool. I like those a lot. Um, where do I get some from and that don't require me to refinance my mortgage? Anybody know? Sunset question mark yellow dust might come back sometime. Now, when you say come back, does that mean that like nobody uh, nobody got them going and they got to be re-imported or smuggled in? All right, here's an X for the Porcelio Levis orange. Going once, going twice. Soul. To Beetle Pixel with a winning bid of 39. Beetle Pixel uh, is really bulking out these last couple of rounds. JoJo probably not feeling too hot about this. Bitter Blood and Baked Season also trailing a bit behind. Uh, Tennyson said nowhere, new still. All right, so that means nobody's really doing anything with them. Well, that's, that's promising. All right, let's do some... 40, Porcelio, Scaber, Spanish, Orange, Pure Stock, circa 2000. I think 9 is when I got them, so we'll put that there. Starting bid of $30. These are, these are straight from Oren way back in the day. I have always kept them separated since that day, and I will forever keep them separated. Um, let's see. Beetle Pixel be like. I'm curious what the meme is going to be here. Also, I uh, Devin uh, Noname, if you're uh, if you're if you're in the chat currently, um, I believe the person I sent you has them actually already. Sunsets aren't too high though, and available. I will check in with some of those pod people. G slide be getting some deals on pods, but these bitters are nuts. It is like that sometimes. Uh, Devin Noname, um, how's the how's the reviving the orange embers going? I think you said there were going to be some ready to send back at some point. Uh, Devin has single handedly saved pure orange embers from extinction. I cannot give enough credit enough to Devin for saving them. And uh, again, a re another really old line from, I'll check my, my records, but probably at least at the latest 2013, orange embers. Oh, shoot, I didn't even put them on my uh, isopod list because I don't have the colony anymore. They've been salvaged at uh, Devin's place, but that's an old project. I started on orange embers a year or two after I got the Spanish oranges. Thank you, Devin. Sending some in the next box. No marulanella today. I don't. I do not smuggle marulanella, so I don't have cheap ones available. 
Um, but yes, Devin Devin saved the Orange Embers. Devin saved uh, potentially 14 years of work, basically, because again, big isopod uh, breeders have definitely compromised their stock, as uh, and was definitively comp compromised comprehensively as long ago as 2018. So uh, six years of bastardization probably lost a lot of its characterization since then. So thank you, Jojo, for getting it back uh, back into the circulation. Did I say Jojo. I saw Jojo's bid here. I, my brain probably said Jojo. If I didn't say Devin, thank you, Devin. Jojo, thank you for bidding on the Spanish oranges. Here's an X for the Skaber Spanish oranges, pures. Going once, going twice, sold. Two, I'm control R'ing. Some people putting the little gun on a Beetle Pixels bid. Let's see, I'm control R. I'm going to control R. Sold to Beetle Pixel with a winning bid of 44. I feel a rivalry coming on here. Beetle Pixel cleaning up the last four bids. Insane. Any Spirillo dreams? Ask and you shall receive. We are going to put up a group of 10 Spirillo species dream starting bid of $1. Up for grabs here. The dream Cubara species Cubara species, Spirillo species dream. What a meme. A, a meme dream. Does so anyone in the chat have L'Oreola species durian? Let's see. They're $5 billion on Morph Market, six for $5 billion on Reddit. Uh, those are really cool, but um, I don't trust them to. Oh, fly on my nose. Uh, I don't trust them to, oh my gosh, on Morph Market, it says <clears throat> uh, six count. This is a reserve. So does that mean you pay for it and you don't actually get it? This is the reserve means this person is taking reservations on stock they already bought, but they haven't produced yet, I guess. Reserve requires the full amount. Huh. I oh my gosh, I love this. Uh, I don't know who this is, but somebody on Reddit says their username Osmerica. Uh, holy F man, are these just isopoda species or is there anything close to a formal ID for them? Um, funny. Very funny. They're also tiny apparently. Can I claim? We have somebody wanting to claim the Lampropeltis annulata. I will go ahead and mark those for you. So, oh, they already been claimed. Sorry, I got to retract that. Somebody already claimed the uh, the uh, Lampropeltis annulata. Check the pass list. Okay, I haven't been checking it. So, sorry, OG Original Gecko. Somebody else already claimed the annulata. But uh, there might be more in the fall, and Kim's going to be happy to hear this. I figured somebody would be eyeballing the pass list and would be picking up a lot of stuff. All right, here's an X for the Spirillo. Also, again, produced domestically. Uh, somebody from the auction sent me, somebody from the auction server sent me some last year in the spring, maybe. So I've been, get, I've been keeping them going since then. They're doing well. I tried low humidity. They didn't do the best. They still did okay. They didn't do the best. I'm trying higher humidity now. Seems to be getting better results. Put them back for auction between the two. LOL. <coughs> Kim might like that. All right. Spirillo species dream going once. <clears throat> going twice. Sold. Two looks like crusty pineapple. Let's see upon refresh. Crusty pineapple. 
with a winning bid of $61 before Monk Sloth's non-perioded bid. Thank you, Exotic Wilderness, for perpetuating the meme. Crusty Pineapple. Gross. Uh, we did that. We did that. Let's do a uh, 25 count of CF. Nasodillo, Arc, Angelii, Silver, Ghost, starting bid of $1. No longer just Nasodillo, Arc, Angelii. Now they are still, they are CF. Just the whole thing is CF now because we live in a fallen world. What a meme. I love how stupid their faces are. Which species? Uh, how many more pads you got to go through before misc? Uh, we're still at about three pages. Still at about three pages here. Maybe 40 to 60 more isopods to go through. It looks like 40 to 60. I think... Uh, it's looking like we'll probably finish isopods, take the break at 6.30. It'll just be an hour break. And then when I when we come back, we'll be here pretty much all night. And then Angel's going to scrape me out of bed at 8 or 9, probably 8 tomorrow morning. And we're going to go see the eclipse tomorrow, and I'm going to kind of take the, the week off. And by that, I mean I get to relax vaguely tomorrow. And then Tuesday, goats, yard work farm work, blah, blah, blah. Wednesday, we're doing indoor skydiving. Thursday, I will probably get to getting everybody their auction totals and lists and all that stuff. And then Friday, I will finish up getting everybody the auction totals and blah, blah, blah. Finish emails, pack for the expo Saturday, and then Saturday, I have an expo from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then after the expo, I have a pleasant activity with some friends. And then after that, I don't know what happens, but I hope my body doesn't fall apart before them. All right, here's an X on the Silver Ghosts. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Potato Dog, 64, winning bid of 40. That's, uh, I'm pretty sure they recently changed the genus on this, so Tennyson can correct me. We have uh, 25 Isopata species, Saba, starting bid of $20. Please uh, correct me what the, the current, the, the genus actually is now. Photo galleries typing. Got some Yetis. Yes, we do have Yetis. <clears throat> seeing the totality. I've never seen the clips before. Uh, I saw or tried to see the one in 2017 locally, but I didn't really see much. Filipino Dilo species Sabah. Okay, we're going to edit that. Edited for proper genus name. These guys are neat. They're little camo guys. Is the Saba the Saba Gold Flake? I was never. I never heard them sold to me. They were just sold to me as species uh, Saba or Saba. Um. So I'm not. Uh, I don't think it's. It could be the same thing with how isopod names are. Super nondescript, but breeds fast and eats well. Uh. Probably the same as the gold flake. Gold flake is a strain, I believe. I mean, these the the bottom picture looks like these ones. There's no uh, there's no common name, I don't think. Apple says he's wrong, so apparently just the straight species Saba gold flake is the species name. Saba Saba gold flake is the common name. I don't know if they're deserving of that common name, but whatever. Common name Saba Camo. They really look more like they're camouflage. They look a lot more like Alaniscus than they do Gold Flake. 
Borneo Biotope. That's a great idea, Dewey. You get some of those Willosia from TJ, which I failed with, so get them from TJ. You get these guys. You get the Epilamprony uh, species, Kota Kinabalu. You could do all that stuff together. Uh, throw in some Scolopendra as an apex predator. Okay, here's the X for these guys. I have to say, everybody, I'm usually self-conscious about not having a lot of cool isopods, but I think for the first time in all these auctions, looking at the list and everything that's gone up for grabs, I think I got a pretty good selection, I think. I think I got a pretty good selection. Going once on the uh, Filipino Dillo uh, Saba. Saba? Saba? Somebody correct me, please. I want to say it the right way. Going twice. Sold. Two. Looks like sleeve. We'll see which winning bid, though. Uh, Kibaris Marina Borneo, if you want to lose everything else. <laughs> That's funny. A person. Kyle missed your response to my question earlier. Will you be auctioning any Rulinella? No. Uh, I don't import or do any of that, so I don't actually have any Rulinella available. And I have failed with Tricolor uh, twice. I'm not ready to really take them on and try to mass produce them. So I refresh, and it's showing that Sleeve's bid of 49 stands. So Sleeve McDykel with a winning bid of 49 on the Philippinadillo species. Sab, I butchered that in my little document here. Winning bid of 49, Sleeve. Everything's coming up sleeve. Okay, let's do 25 Armadillidium Versicolor Ukraine starting bid of $1. This is the only Versicolor I keep. I got them 2018, so they're still fresh, pure stock. I don't, I don't even know if anybody keeps track of the different Versicolor lines. Even like any more, even when they were coming in, people weren't really keeping good track of them. I remember getting some and asking the seller. It was a reputable seller. I will not mention their name. They're a great person, a great bug keeper. But I asked them, like, what strain of Versicolor are these? And like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so I got rid of that strain, and then I got these. I tried tricolors in high humidity, low humidity, uh, low ventilation with frequent spraying, High ventilation with frequent spraying, and although I got some babies to almost to adulthood, I didn't get any continual culturing. So I'm going to try what I'm pretty sure is going to work, but it's going to be a daily care setup. Did you give them vertical height? They had 6 to 12 inches of vertical height in the last setup that I had them in, and it didn't seem to matter. So I'm going to try. Any Tylos? No, but we'll have something similar to Tylos. As long as the sky is clear, you're in for a treat. If it's quiet enough, you'll notice animal sounds and behaviors change throughout. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping it's going to be quite something. All right, here's an X for the Versicolors. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Arbs with a winning bid of 40. Beetle Pixel's reign of terror has ended for now. All right, next we have a group of 12. Porcelio Expansis Orange with a star being evaluated for purity, but looks good. Starting bid of $1.00. Thank you for the uh, the Mr. Clean image once more. Dr. Humroid right out the gate, uh, crushing the hopes and dreams of millions, as is his, his villainous, uh, villainous uh, capability. Um, people reading that things are arboreal, but remember seeing Eddie set up on Facebook as a flat tub. I have no personal experience with Marula Nellis, so just speculations. My friend had a couple of tricolor mismolts, and they think it was because they put the enclosure next to the wall. Lack of ventilation. 
see, there's just so much inconsistency with it that it makes me hesitant to try. But I have an idea for what would probably work without a doubt. But I want to move first so that I can put them in a location. Like the, the, the office is pretty much closed up, and I have more roach and for certain projects coming in. So I can't just toss something in here and be like, all right, this is my new Marulanella breeding corner at the moment. Um, so when I move, though, I'll set up a super duper extra high priority rack, probably right next to where the work work desk area is going to be or workbench area is going to be, so that I can literally just look at them and be forced to take care of them daily and multiple times a day and make lots of observations and lots of micromanagements to try and figure them out. Um, this, I think, is the only... Porcelio Expansis up for grabs at this auction. There will be no white. There will be no uh, witch's brew either. A person is going to get some Hammerschmied locale versus color soon. Oh, that would be pretty cool. I would want those a person. Uh, it's not the only morph. It's the only one available. These are the best expanses. Now, you say that, but the whites I do really like, and honestly, the witches' potions are super sick. Seeing them in person is uh, is something. They're so to see a big isopod with such a complex color and pattern is truly something. Kibara species Thai blue angel, something available. Uh, I have blue pigeon. These look like they're all over the place already and they look like a lot of other stuff god help the isopod hobby they need they need they need a temple jesus to flip the uh to flip the the labeling system is what they need thai spikies are another i don't think people have really figured out either blue pigeons when they'll be coming up soon all right here's an x for the porcelio expanse is orange not 100% sure on how pure the stock is, but it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Um, that's all I, I have to say. I'm going to try and get more of orange stock and start picking for a Julio's original criteria and really um, hone in on that also. Okay, going once. Going twice. Sold. To Beetle Pixel emerging from his hiding hole with a winning bid of 149 on the expanses. He can't keep getting away with this. I appreciate that every time it's posted. Um, let's do. Guys, I'm gonna be a big isopod seller on Morph Market. I'm gonna do some some use some questionable tac tactics here. We have 20. Porcelio 90s. Please pin this. Yeah, I'll pin that. I'll pin that. Popular request. Porcelio 90s, Virgatis, New Park, Alabama. Starting bid of $30. May ship later than other auction things uh so i haven't confirmed babies in these but i haven't messed up with your goddess yet except for the north central florida ones i got back from james but um all the other lafayette ones the um or the other ones that i have of those uh lafayette louisiana north central florida etc uh this is these are fresh out of the woods at uh near allen's place the famous new park locality that is slowly being developed and eaten away at so uh angela is, is is a very lucky person and when we went there with alan alan has only found like two uh porcelio 90s of your goddess at that location and the only, only in the whole time that he has been going there we didn't see any when we went last spring and i guess maybe it was because it was earlier in the year or because it was kind of wet and cool we saw uh, Angela was finding lots of Virgatus. So I think I collect, we collected a group of like somewhere between 10 and 20 of them and brought them back. 
So uh, here you go. This uh, this little locality that won't exist uh, in the wild much longer. You mean you don't like 17 names for each species? It happens. There's new IDs and all this stuff, but everybody, like, it should just be a testament that the locality information for all this Southeast Asian stuff is just tossed out the window the second they get an eye on it and they say, oh, this looks vaguely like a, this vaguely looks like a My Little Pony. We're going to call this a Cubara species My Little Pony. And it ends up being a completely different genus. And it doesn't even look like Gen 1 or Gen, was it Gen 3 My Little Pony, you know? Any bromeliads for today? Uh, we might have we're gonna have a false bromeliad later. Invertoran would Aaron Vega Boliana cohabit with desert darkling beetles in a fine sand based enclosure. Probably if you had a lot of leaf litter in there and a moist corner. Uh, circa oh hey, a single observation from that area. Thank you for pulling Alan's uh, observation off of uh, INAT. New Park Drive, Montgomery, Alabama. At least I assume this is correct. You are correct, Circa, for this uh, locality of your goddess. Again, I have to check. I have to do isopod husbandry, not this upcoming week, but the following week. If they've got enough babies, it'll ship with the other auction orders. If they're not, then they will be shipped at a later time as soon as babies are confirmed of good size. Alan says that is my pick. There they are. All right. Here's the X for the P. Vir goddess. Not anymore. Um, P. Vir goddess. New Park, New Park Drive, Montgomery, Alabama. Um, I don't think Alan cares about giving people that information because it's the forest is not going to exist for, for all, or has the potential not to exist for all that much longer. Going once, which is a shame. It's a, it's a sick place with crazy native biodiversity. Going twice, sold. To Bart Toos, winning bid of 30. Bart Toos's first win at the auction. Good job. And you got something very unique that nobody else has other than... Alan, I don't even think you have a colony of them. Did you keep a colony? Maybe you, maybe you should as a backup. Um, all right, we're going to do 25 Porcelio Skaber Red red Edge starting bid of $20. This seems to be some maybe border of France and Spain or maybe French stock that has uh, orange is innate to this line. Orange seems to be innate to this line, and it does not breed true because you get red-edged ones. You get orange, solid orange individuals. Um, I'm gonna try and find try and find a picture of uh, of them from the border of France and Spain, I guess. Okay, who on who picked the common name for Porcelio Scaber as common scabby? on inat please nate if it's you i will judge just a little bit less but i'm still judging the common scabby are you serious uh how do i just look it up um view observations we're gonna go zoom into uh, france and spain Uh, there's a couple pictures on INAT. Somebody might have to bum a photo from somewhere else. Thank you, Photo Gallery, for that. I like the who's that Pokemon picture. INAT common names are Ness. Explain the Skaber common name. I think I, I don't want to, I'm not going to point fingers at Nate, but I think Nate does have uh, has, has authority on INAT for moving and classifying things. But never once in my entire life has anybody ever called Porcelio Skaber scabby we have called them the rough wood louse or rough isopod for a long time oh here it says common common rough wood louse on the uh on the thing on uh, inat when you zoom in it's just at the higher taxon for some reason it says common scabby that being said i don't don't dislike the name but you know 
But still, nobody's ever called them that. Get some scabbies. Uh, the picture of them is not the best on the uh, on the thing, but they're a lot cooler if you see them. Maybe uh, Mr. Jam Jam has a picture. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bum this uh, these pictures off of uh, here. James was happy that I gave him a gave him a shout out before, so I'm gonna I'm gonna exploit that. We're gonna borrow this picture of them. So here's an X for them from, from Jam Jam Reptiles. Definitely a lot cooler and very unique in person. Uh, you have to see them to appreciate the the diversity of colors and stuff. They don't breed true. I think that, again, orange seems to be a question. I won bids on Friday afternoon. And I may want to get more stuff, but it'd technically be over the toy for it. No, you're okay. Again, it's only it's after the whole bug of Palooza ends. You have to contact me. Uh, that's, that's after the whole thing's over. So you're good. I think Chris Sniper won the poll. Thank you. I'll take that down. Chris got a... 45% uh, is the who's the best sniper with a 45% vote margin. Thank you, Photo Gallery. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Two, scroll up. Looks like JoJo. JoJo with a winning bid of 26. All right, we're going to do 25 CF, Nasodillo, Archangelii, Yeti, starting bid $1. Again, here when I thought there was some consistency in the universe, of course, my hopes are dashed against a stone. Uh, no wonder half of them are lowercase. Anyone can add common names on INET. Oh, okay. Okay. Isn't there that there's that one Reddit post that uses a weird thing for roly polies? I don't know. I think it maybe it was somebody trolling, but somebody was like, "We used to call these blah blah blahs," and it was something really obscene, and they they sold it very convincingly. Um, there's also Cubaris species citrus, which is distinct from citrus panda. Again, buckle in, everybody. It's only get. I, hey, hey, everybody. I know you're hanging in there, and things look pretty bad, but it's only gonna get worse. Are these the shame is Shiro Itsuri? No, these are the whiteout mutation in this uh, species slash strain of um, of isopod. Uh, Luch, Luch, uh, Luch made an attempt at correcting their bid. There's an X there, so I guess that will, will take that. Thank you, Luch, Luch. I see you're making an effort. You read the rules. You're good. My five month old hit. Sorry, hit on, hit it on me. You're good. You're good. Luch has corrected bids. Luch used an X. I like X's on both sides of it, but you, you, you you're good. You got there. All right. Here's an X for. The uh, Archangelii Yetis. Again, this is the whiteout mutation in this species. Uh, Shiro Itsuri is appears to be the Dalmatian mutation in it. All right, going once, going twice. Soul. To looks like Matt. We're gonna see with a winning bid of 35, but we're gonna see. Refreshing. And it is Matt with a winning bid of 35. All right, somebody was asking for Cubaris uh, blue pigeons, so we're gonna do 25 Cubaris species blue pigeons, starting bid of $1.
And let's see. Yeah, I got still got plenty of good stuff coming up here. We are getting a little down to the wire. Nothing wrong with that. Got some Arriva Derchi isopods coming up. Here's an X for the blue pigeons. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To looks like OG original gecko. I'm refreshing though. You know it's good bidding when you got to refresh. Looks like OG original gecko with a winning bid of 40. Congrats. I like this pace we're moving at. Next up, we're going to do 25 Armadillidium Maculatum. Yellow, I think these are supposed to be called yellow stripes. They were sold to me as yellow. Starting bid, 20 bucks. This is a good strain of yellow spotted slash yellow striped maculatum. This is the best that I've seen for consistency of color. There's been some pretty crappy ones floating around for a while, but whatever this stock is, it's very good. Um, I feel like the color is a little duller than that picture, but the best individuals definitely look like that but at least they are all definitively yellow. You cannot look at them and say, oh, these are still white or cream colored, cream colored markings. They're definitely yellow, and that's better than what I've seen out of lines that were coming out three, four, five years ago. So whoever refined this or has been tinkering with it, it definitely looks really good now. Good enough that Kyle can tinker with it and hopefully make some good stuff out of it. What is this? Okay, something, something. Don't know what that says. Here's an X for the yellow maculatum. Are any more efficient Alice or Dreams? Yes, we will have more of uh, at least one of those. Local shadow person. Hey, my birthday is next Saturday. I really want to participate in today's, but I'm broke at the current moment. We'll be all right to purchase and pay once. Get all my birthday money. All I can say is you are responsible for paying your bills for the auction if you bid on things. So just keep that in mind. I'm not going to give a direct answer for that, but um, you'll have to make that decision for yourself uh, with this. If you, you're going to hold off, if you're going to beg for mercy in your auction email, that is on you. That's all I can say. All right. Going once on the maculatum yellow. Going twice, soul. To Beetle Pixel again with a winning bid of 49. Incredible. Uh, let's do some of the 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 most unimpressed the most impressively unimpressive isopod. 20 Armadillidium Insulanum, starting bid of $10. This is an iso... You may remember me struggling to say anything good about this isopod. It's the most average... It's just... It's the most isopod of all time. The most isopod of all time. The isopod ever... Uh, I think somebody who got a, the group from one of the auctions said that they were working on something out of it. Like they got a mutant or there was a, some variation that they were going to start uh, pulling for. Gangsta, somebody called me Gangsta. Uh, he's good at allowing you some time if it's reasonable. I won't let anybody speak for you, but I will let other people speak for themselves. Um, I bought them last time, and they died, so might as well. Might as well give it a try, see what you can get out of them. Again, the most isopod ever. The isopod ever. Here's an X for the Insulanum. At this point, it's kind of ne necessary that I put up a group of them in the auction. I don't want to disappoint all those people who want to work with them. Going once. Going twice. 
sold. The Isopod Ever to Loki, Kyle Butter. Oh, God. Winning bid of 13 for the Insulanum. Okay, we'll take it. Shift into an upper gear. 20 Cubaris. Cubaris species. White Shark. Starting bid of $1. See how this goes. We've got a nice pace here, fellas. I'm going to clear off some of these other pages, too. I'll lean on, uh, see if Jam Jam's got any more. Jam Jam. Hmm. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Can't seem to find nobody's uploaded pictures of my uh, of my angel maculatum yet, so I can't bum pictures off of James even. What? When is Grain Pest crossing hours again? Whenever we get to them, we're gonna go pretty gonna go pretty hog wild tonight. Do you keep Porcelo Flava Marginatus Crete? I do not have them at the locality level. Here's an X for the white sharks. I would probably like to get some Crete Flava Marginatus, probably. <laughs> Got the 4 p.m.s hitting. All right, white shark Cubaris going once, going twice. Sold to sleeve McDykel with a winning bid of sixty. Next up, we have a group of twenty-five Arma, Delidium, Maculatum, Angel, starting bid of thirty dollars. These were refined out of a hypo project. Actually, they are several gens removed from the skull stock, so they are out of skull stock. But uh, they're they're very close to being solid white. Uh, if you keep them keeping them humid, they appear solid white. Keeping them drier, they do have some black markings on them. White shark. White tiger, white ducky. Alan says, too many whites in the Cubaris. I think that I had these up for auction, that one auction where I took the camera and I showed some of the, the cups that were available. Um, but I don't think... Uh, they are high whites, a true breeding high white strain but not the high white completely completely different founding stock there we go jojo reporting back on some success with the uh, lucanus elaphus breeding so the this, uh, the picture that photo gallery linked, uh, that is more black than I've ever seen on any of the angels. So even less black than that. They're also not Dalmatians. These are not the uh, Dalmatian line that I used to have. These are different. Everything, all of my Maculatum projects, except for Oopsie and, uh, except for Oopsie, and the yellows, all of my Maculatum projects are out of the original uh, 2014 stock. Uh, that looks pretty good for them, actually, their photo gallery. That looks, that looks pretty close. Again, this is true breeding, though. You will not get any, any solids or weird mixed coloration on them. 
Uh, that's pretty close. Again, maybe even less black. That would be a very low quality individual there. I would have probably called that when it popped up. So anyways, here's an X. I think whoever gets these, you'll like them a lot more once you see them in person. Borsalio Flava Marginatus Creed are so beautiful, I believe they're the same species. Let's see. Yeah, that is hard to believe they're the same same species. Maybe they're maybe they're not the same species. Maybe. Very nice. They look like a giant spinicornis, basically. Armadillidium spe Cubara species, high white Dalmatian zebra. Are these from your original stock? Yes. Again, all of the uh, all the maculatum that projects that I create and all the maculatum I work with, except for oopsie and yellow are from the original 2014 stock. I've never crossed them to other things. Going once on the Maculatum Angel. Going twice. Sold. To obey the snarf with a winning bid of 55. Congrats. Obey the snarf. That's your first win at this auction too, I believe. Cubaris, Armadillidium, Porcelio, Sadness, Rox. All right. All right, we've officially ended another page. Let's do a group of 25. Porcelio, Scaber, Orens, Calicos, starting bid of $20. Stock straight from Oren. This is the – these guys gave rise to many other lines. They gave rise to Sherbert's. They gave rise to Scorpio in part. They gave rise to Spanish Orange. This is the stock that Spanish Orange was originally pulled out of. They gave rise to, by extension, Orange Embers. Uh, they were obviously the initial and foremost important component to creating Roy G. Biv. This was the stock that got me interested in really pulling out these different colors and whatnot. Um, so... Uh, photo gallery that that looks the stock in the photo gallery's image is far more refined. I wonder if I can find a better picture. It's also pure Spanish stock is another thing about Orange Calicos. Orange did not add U.S. mainland stock to it, nor have I. Um, let's see. Can't. Eh. It's, it's a mixture of phenotypes. It, it has more color variation and brighter colors than Scorpio does for misc reasons. Um, I think some of these pictures are showing intrusion from U.S. lines of uh, Skaber, but uh, rare lottery mix from Frog Daddy. What do you mean rare lottery mix? It's already a mix. Oh, well. Here's an X. So anyways, other than Gene Machine and Lava, this is one of the other best lines for making projects. Uh, you are a, a, over a decade late to pulling stuff out of them, though, because I've been doing it for a long time. But that's not to say there's not fun stuff to pull out. Sherbert. Sherbert also comes from these. Going once, going twice, sold. To JoJo with a winning bid of 28. All right, let's do a group of, let me see where they were last time. Uh, 12 Hilaria Brevicornis, not the Elba, the other, the more common strain that's in the U.S. The largest terrestrial rolling isopod in the world. Uh, a certain Czech seller has armadillidids and arm, armadillidids listed armadillidid D. I'm not sure what that... Uh, they just have everything at speed uh, at family level. 
Obey the Snatch says, I've spent like two years trying to get a hold of Zebra Dalmatians or something local, but it seems like these will be cooler. You'll like these. You'll like these. Uh, again, they're very consistent in expression. Um, they're out of a very deeply line bred line. They come out of original skull stock. And uh, so they they may be uh, they may be these may be simple recessive. It's even possible that this is just the Dalmatian gene popped up in the skull stock, which is already hypo stuff. Um, or already possess some hypo characteristics. So, but again, the consistency, true breeding, the I am not happy with the high white Dalmatian or the yellow Dalmatian maculatum that oh, addendum. My high white Dalmatian maculatum and cheetah are from non-2014 stock. And I do not like the high white Dalmatians. They're not consistent. Uh, the colors all over the place, the patterns all over the place, just not a good proven outline to have a, a name, not a mix or not. That it was not I was not told that there was going to be this crazy unproven out component to this strain. Um, do these get big? Yes, these get huge. Hilarious get huge. 64 viewers. Everyone like the stream now. 66 viewers. We will probably hit 70. We can get 70 viewers. We can hit 50 likes. Let's do it. Let's go. Is anyone working with maculatum to make them as boring as possible? Like some, that a person is oopsie. Oopsie is a solid black maculatum based on that weird trait that was introduced to a commercial maculatum stock where it's like a weird globulation covering of color on them that makes it uh that makes them solid colored i've been working on that for a while i think the project kind of keeps coming and going uh in that uh i i the, might be again might be this pathogen situation that makes them look the solid color um hopefully one of these days I'll get it. I'll get a large number of them and be able to make them available consistently but i'm still figuring out what the heck is going on Kyle, let's do a poll for some of that hype. Let's do a start a pool poll. Coolest armadillidium species, including all cultivars. Let's do armadillidium gestroi, armadillidium vulgare, armadillidium maculatum. What's another cool armadillidium? Let's do armadillidium badium just for the just for the fun. I need whoopsie. Rufo I. I forgot about Espanol I, I'm sorry. Cause there's no there's more there's no mutants in uh in Espanol or in Espanol I yet. What are we fighting over again? Oh hilaria. Uh Photo gallery provided the locality. It's Provence, Alp de Alp Cote d'Azur, France. France. Here's an X for wrapping up bids for the Hilaria from the long locality name. Thank you for the Gurun Lagan reference. I love to see it. Honestly, I was a little uh, the ending to Gurun Lagan was really trippy. I, uh, I'm not sure if I would rank it as my favorite space battle climax anime ending. I would give that to Space Dandy. I think I will give the space battle climactic uh, finale award to Space Dandy over Gurren Lagann, honestly. All right, going once on the Hilaria Brevicornis. Going twice... Sold to Brayden with a winning bid of 86. Brayden finally gets a snipe in. Congrats, Brayden, on the Hilaria Brevicornis snipe. Psych. It was a good ride. Gastrowai is earning the lion's share of the voting. I only saw a bit of Space Dandy, and that surprises me. It's really good. I really love the ending. It the ending really knocked my socks off, I gotta say. Um, I can't, no spoilers, but you know. Okay, we did Hilaria. Let's do some 
40, Purcellio, Skaber, Dalmatian, starting bid of $30, OG stock from the hills. Uh, this is this is pure uncompromised stock. Pure Porcelio Scaber Dalmatian stock originates from Riceville, where this uh, in a certain population of wild Scaber in Riceville, Tennessee, uh, I believe as high as ten percent of the population is Dalmatian. So, you think Spinacornis has more morph potential? I'm not sure. We haven't seen any morphs out of Spinacornis. And a lot of the color and pattern seems to vary with temperature, humidity. So uh, it's kind of, it makes it kind of difficult to put your thumb down on, on, on a true breeding line of those when they're variable based on fluctuations and other conditions. Same guy made Bebop and Samurai Shampoo. He only got better. Pied Scabers. Um, Maybe we'll have some pied scabers on here. I gotta, gotta, gotta check that. Do people still try to make new Levis morphs? Yes, we're gonna have a brand spanking new uh, U.S. originating uh, Porcelio Levis morph uh, going up for grabs. <clears throat> Obey the snarf. I graduated from weeb to furry and then disappeared from the art and fandom parts of the internet for a few years. And now I'm posting Pokemon fanfics. Maybe I'll get back into anime someday. Colby Jack? Yes, Loki, the Colby Jacks. <clears throat> Colby Jack is the... the. Oops, armpit hair slip. Wrong side. Oh, whatever. It's okay. Everybody knows her. We're mammals. We, we got hair. Everybody's got hair. Fate worse than death. Um, I prefer Levis for Oklahoma weather. Uh, what was I going to say? Colby Jacks. Yes, Colby Jacks. Um, Colby Jack combines traits of how now, caramel, and orange into one organism. And uh, I I wanted to do that, but I never got off my butt to do it. So Derek actually did it. So Derek uh, did all the preliminary cross work to get how now crossed to... Um, how now crossed into orange, and then he sent some to me for finishing refinements. And so I finally I picked like the last six to take them on to the last stage, and I think I'm going to make some of those available. But they're really cool. Anime has gotten so badly that I haven't watched many new animes. Kyle, check general chat. Uh, high yellow badium. That's pretty cool. I had a couple of those. Uh, of those pop up pretty nifty here's an x for the scaber dalmatian these do not produce wild types and again this is actually a locality stock too it's from bryceville tennessee not to be confused with this is the best part we have scaber from bryceville tennessee and as of the trip that i took with angela we now have scaber from riceville tennessee crunchy roll is Cringe, we're getting to some anime discussion. Um, I see the word friend and I think smiling friends. I'm super excited for the next uh, season of smiling friends, everybody. That show's great. All right, going once on the Skaber Dalmatian. Going twice. Sold. To JoJo with a winning bid of 37. JoJo's bulking out some quality stock for purposes. <clears throat> okay, now we have a group of 200 Porcelionides, Prunosis, Orange Cream, starting bid of $20. A, uh, another combo project between uh, between Derek and I. I think Derek was the one. I, I did I did the legwork for this one. I did the crossing and whatnot. Uh, it was at the behest of Derek. Derek was really pushing to try and get to get something to get this particular combo out of Prunosis. And uh, then we did. I think these were released in 2021. I think or 2022. 
All they are is just uh, cookies and cream or Oreo crumbles crossed with orange and then picked for both traits. Nothing, you know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, but really cool. I really like how they look. As do a lot of other people. They rose to popularity pretty quick. They made, what, ten of those? There's a lot more good animes than the last five years. Literally just named four that wasn't. Here is an X for the Prunosis Orange Cream going once. Going twice. Sold. To JoJo, the winning bid of 37. A really good deal on this group of, of orange creams. JoJo with a couple of wins in the last couple auctions, uh, auction sets here. I'm going to go ahead and put up 15 for Celio Magnificus and run to the bathroom. Starting bid of $1.00. Have fun while I'm gone, everybody. Behave. Have a good time. I will be right back. I have returned. Let's see what's going on. A lot of anime discussion. Have all the common tropes. Uh, good animes from blah, blah, blah. Anime discussion is a ploy to take attention away from the bid. Anime always gets people heated for no reason. It's just a show. It's just like how video games are just a game. It's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? Here's an X for the Magnificus group. That's a good picture I took of Magnificus. That that does them good justice. That uh that old Roach Crossing picture there doesn't doesn't good justice. All right, going once for the Porcelio Magnificus. Going twice. Sold. To Beetle Pixel with a winning bid of one two three. Good bidding, guys. Even even Dr. Humroid, I like the, yeah, there's the meme. Everyone else, you can't keep getting away with it. Keep the memes coming, everybody. They power me. They feed me. All right, we have a group of 15. Cubaris species. Blonde, ducky, pure, original, 2018 import. 
Starting bid of $40 for these guys. I'm proud at how fast I'm moving through things. We have 40 have about 40 isopods left to go through. There may be some isopods in lightning round. Um, Kyle's favorite animes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to put some animes up here. I'm going to, I'm just going to off the, I'm not, this is no particular order. This is just, I'm trying to get you guys worked up. What's the best anime? No particular order. Just off the top of my head, Dragon Ball, not Z. Uh, Sword Art Online. Um, I was going to put a meme one up. I'm not going to do that. We're going to keep this PG. Um, what's another? What's a good, uh, another good random um, anime? What's one that people will, will get vicious over? Was it Lucky Star? Gonna make sure that's the full Lucky Star. Yeah. And uh, what's another more brutal? What's another more brutal? Uh, here we go, Berserk. All right. <laughs> Here we go. I get to watch the world burn now. Are blonde duckies com compatible with regulars? Um, I'm working on crossing them to uh, species rubber ducky to see if they are actually the same species. But they were originally imported 2018. They were god-awful expensive. I didn't buy them in 2018 when the wild cots were brought into Tinley in, um, in fall of 2018. They were five for two hundred or four hundred dollars, and they were the biggest I've ever seen a Cubaris. The adults were at least they were over twenty millimeters, potentially as big as twenty-five. Fresh wild caught individuals. They get larger on average than species rubber ducky. The color is more consistent. These should not be confused with people picking solid individuals out of species rubber ducky and separately breeding them. They call them lemonade or rubber ducky, blonde ducky. This is a wild stock as of 2018 that was brought in and now has been mixed up with species rubber ducky. No devil man on this. No, again, I, I just, I just, uh, I just went in and uh, I just, I just went, and I tried to be, I tried to be uh, antagonistic here. I'm going to leave that up there. A lot of people are saying Berserk. The original Dragon Ball has a couple of fans there. That's that's uh, before Z. That's before what was it before uh, the whole. Uh, this from before the Frieza arc. Yeah, free, before the whole Frieza arc, I think. Okay, here's an X for the species Blonde Duckies. Species Blonde Duckadoo. Going once, going twice, sold to double Z with a winning bid of 80. Okay. Let's do a group of 20 Porcelio Bolivari. I got to see what the starting bid was before. I think it was 20. Oh, it was $1. Never mind. Starting bid of $1. 20 Porcelio Bolivari. We're really whittling down this isopod list, everybody. Will female hissers produce sterile ooze if they are never fertilized? Yes, that is correct. Not bad, but odd. Uh, Duke and Enzo, the Iggy's talking about the anime Devil Man. Devil Man is too old. Most people don't remember. I think my friend was trying to get me to watch Devil Man. Let me look it up. If I recognize it. Yeah, it looks familiar. No, you know what? I did watch. I watched. I watched an episode or two of Devil Man with my friend. I think I I think I don't I don't know if I enjoyed it all that much. Maybe maybe not. We watched another one, another one those I think it was a grittier, older anime. Uh, let me see if I can figure out the name of the anime. What I, I could have swore it was Tokyo Bowl or something. 
it was like a good cop, bad cop anime. Again, it was like an 80s, 80s, 90s anime. You got like the you got like the the, the one out of line cop guy who's like, you know, having sex with hookers and all this stuff, but he's got a heart of gold type thing. And then you got the like, I think it was more straight edge. Either he's just into the academy or or something like that. His like partner he's assigned to, you know, classic, classic duo there. I think it was pretty interesting. I can't maybe it was I could have swore it was Tokyo Bowl or Gold Bowl or something like that. Um I I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. Mad Bull. Thank you. Thank you, Satchel. Thank you, Satchel, our, uh, our silent anime historian sitting here. Golden Boy is fun. I loved Golden Boy. I did really love Golden Boy. Uh, I was actually familiar with it through, um, through, through some anime music videos when I was in high school, but I never knew what anime some of the clips came from. And then finally watching it a couple of years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like my mind was blown. Trigun is fantastic. Golden Boy would get canceled now. Yeah, almost certainly. Uh, Trigun is fantastic. I have friends who like Trigun. I haven't actually watched it myself. Perhaps one day. Here's an X for the Bowl of R.I. Uh, Angel and I started watching, uh, was it Ranma? And uh, I enjoy it. I've been enjoying Ranma. It's pretty good. I like that. I think we were a couple of episodes in. I'm curious. It seems like uh, it seems like a gag that can only get you so far, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Akira, Ninja Scrolls, Vampire Hunter D, Ranma is classic. Um, what's another old anime that I really liked watching? Brandon and I watched a couple of really good ones. A couple of good old animes. There was some we watched. We went to Yomacon in the fall. We went into a room to watch. They just had a bunch of rooms of, you know, different animes playing. And it was, uh, again, another 80s, 90s anime about a bunch of uh, girls who are cops um, and worked at, like, a car repair shop or something. It seemed good. It seemed pretty good. I forgot about – I forget what it's called. All right, going once for the Bull of Our Eye. Going twice. Sold. To Beetle Pixel again with a winning bid of 111. Monk Sloth says, bro. 111 from Beetle Pixel. Nuts. The absurdity of it all. Even Dr. Whom. What's the, the, the JoJo uh, quote? Even Speedwagon is scared. Even Dr. Humroid is scared. Uh, let's do a certain somebody stealing tactics, says Dr. Humroid. A, uh, a certain somebody has been begging and buying up. I can't say begging because I've been begging this person for bugs, too. Um, this is the... the you got to find the proper name for this. Uh, somebody's been buying up all my rubber duckies, so I don't have a whole bunch of them available at this auction unfortunately, but I will, and I hope they don't hear about this. I'm sorry if you're listening. i got to do at least one group of these. Original 2017 import starting bid of $20. Um, somebody's been buying them all up, so I don't have a lot of them available. And I recently, for the first time since 2019... I've uh, I've refreshed my rubber ducky bin. They were they have been they had been living without they've been living in the same enclosure, same substrate, etc. And it was just building up insanely. And I finally decided to move them to a fresh enclosure, and that kind of put them a little behind in uh, production. A lot of uh, Roroni Kenshin. Uh, what was the other one? Was it Roroni Kenshin? Not that one. Like the the, the uh, what's the one that I always mix up with Roroni? Just because of the names. I don't know why. Yu Yu Hakusho. That was it. Yu Yu Hakusho. I've heard lots of praise. How can I forget this? Inuyasha. Angela and I, over the last four or five months, watched all of Inuyasha. Really loved Inuyasha. Really wish they stuck with the, the early art style. Um... The, the, the Inuyasha enjoyment graph is like this. It goes up, 
And then you get to the Band of Seven arc, and I was like, I don't like this very much at all. And then you know, it just kind of kind of flatlines a bit more. And then you get to the to the final act, and then everything goes through the roof. Final act was amazing. Love the final act, but the Band of Seven, just 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 skip it. Is my opinion. You've got the weird guy who says nothing but Gersh, and then uh, then uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, but then uh, he doesn't say Gersh anymore. Manga was better, says Dewey. Films of Inuyasha. Uh, we were going to watch those, but uh, I couldn't uh, find them. But find a site to pirate them off of in a short amount of time, and thus we have not watched them. But I do want to watch those for sure. Alan's reminder to refresh the live stream. Dewey saying that I did auction off 100 lots of rubber duckies last time. That is very true. Uh, Monk Sloth, properly correcting your, your bid. Beautiful. I love it. HomePod, HomeWord got me, though. Thank you very much. Monk Sloth being a model citizen. Everybody, applause to Monk Sloth. Good job. You know exactly what to do for correcting. I applaud you. All right. Here's an X for the original Rubber Duckies. Godzilla. Godzilla. Godzilla's an anime? Or are you talking about the American animated Godzilla series from the 90s with everybody's favorite uh, side character, Godzuki? You can't forget Godzuki, everybody. Very important. All right. Going once for the Cubara Species Rubber Ducky original import stock. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Two looks like Sleeve McDyckel, but maybe Beetle Pixel will win on the refresh. Let's see. Sleeve McDyckel beating out Beetle Pixel just barely with a winning bid of 131. Good effort. Good show, old chap. Good show. Okay, we have a group of 25. Arma, Dilidium, Klugii, Montenegro, original 2016 import, pure starting bid of $30 from the very first batch of Klugii, Montenegro, when it was the only locality, it was the only locality, as a matter of fact, at that time in culture. And I got in on the ground floor of it at one of the Tinleys. I think it was Tinley in spring of 2016. No, I don't. I didn't. Did I go to the spring 2016? No, it was spring of 2017 that I vended. So it must have been fall of 2017 that I got more uh, of the. Sorry, fall of 2016 that I stocked up on these. So a long, long time ago, do your Montenegro show three white lines occasionally. For the spots in them, um, green, white, and yellow are all, those are all fine. Those have all popped up in that stock the whole time that I've had them. So if you see any of those colors in them, that, that is not a sign for alarm. If you get individuals growing over 15 millimeters regularly, in my opinion, that's a sign that you've got Slano or Dubrovnik, most likely Dubrovnik influence in them. Um, I honestly want to be scared and nothing hits the vibe. Your mind, uh, oh, I see. I see. Um, another big batch of true magic potions. Uh, yeah, we can, we, can, we, can, we can do that. Uh, what's with people obsessively mixing Klugii locales? Again, I have nothing against mixing locales as long as you keep track of what you're mixing and you're not going to go ahead and sell them as something pure afterwards or unmixed. Uh, I mix stuff all the time. Uh, Lava Scaber with Orange Calicos. Orange Calicos with Michigan uh, Scaber. Mix all kinds of stuff together. It's fine when you're making hobby lines and you're making new cultivars and all that stuff. Not a problem with it. But the problem is when you mix stuff carelessly and then you go to sell it as pure and it's not 
and things don't look like the photos five years down the line. That's my that's my my feelings there. My suppose Montenegro show only white sometimes, and I get concerned. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I'd have to. I, I'm, maybe I'll have to mix. I haven't mixed the Kluge eyes yet. Maybe I will to see what sort of comes out of it in a very controlled fashion. Um, all right, we'll put an X here for these guys. Going once, going twice, sold to be all. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I'm control Ring. Some people are saying it's Beetle Pixel. Some people are saying it's Baked Season. Let's see. I'm seeing Beetle Pixel now that I've control r with a winning bid of 53. Beetle Pixel becoming Pod Pixel. Beetle Podzel. Beetle Podzel is kind of funny. I make masks and collect masks and props from every slasher. Not a big fan of horror. I got an ex who really liked horror, though. I'm not a big fan of horror. <clears throat> I guess it's because most of my uh, most of my fears are existential. Maybe that's part of it. Um, perhaps. Next, we have a group of 25 Porcelio Levis. How now? Starting bid of $20. These, this is perhaps a Dalmatian or a similar mutation in Porcelio Levis. These are from Carmel. So these are actually out of U.S. stock of Porcelio Levis. So if you wanted to, you could house how nows and dairy cows together if you so desire. I, uh, let's see a picture. I'm gonna. I got. I got a picture available. I gotta. I gotta go find it unless uh, photo gallery finds it. Here we go. Take these guys. There we are. So to add to this, <clears throat> Colby Jack is how now crossed with orange, and selected for the orange color on those patches of pigment that you see on these individuals. So, <clears throat> again, uh, uh, Derek spearheaded that. I've just been kind of doing the last-minute tinkering refinements and saying, oh, yes, these ones have the best orange. I will select these ones for this project. And I think by summer or by fall, we will have Porcelio Athlevis regular cow which is the wild type dairy cow species so they're just solid really dark brown slash black ish and uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to uh to, to put out there all right here's an x for the how nows again the roach crossing original out of caramel Kyle fears the great Dizdura uprising of 2034. That would be very scary for all my projects. Uh, I might start keeping Dizdura in a communal. I've heard they're communal if you have a bunch of isopods, and I got a bunch of isopods, so we might try it. Going once. Going twice. Sold. <clears throat> To JoJo, winning bid of 26. Okay. Next, we're going to do a group of 40 Platy Arthris Aya Census, starting bid of $20. This is the much easier and much more prolific prolific species of platy arthris for anybody who wants them much easier much more prolific <sighs> will be an interesting project to select for ice pods that can survive in a distra enclosure yeah you know i'd start with something that's got really good armor i think and work off that these are the blind ones that are found in ant colonies? Yes, they're one of the platyarthrus that are found in ant colonies. What is this species? Uh, they are a non-devil uh, devil's rice. Um, 
wonder if there's an observation on INAT from Alan or somebody. I'll see if Alan's got an observation. Uh, don't really see any from that area. What other members of the genus Platyarthrus are there? Oh, it's a it's a species complex. Great. Genus Platyarthrus. Oh wow, there's a lot of species. Uh, Platyarthrus caught it. I, I think we went down one of these uh, rabbit holes before. Wasn't there a really sick-looking platyarthrus, maybe, with, like, really long tail filaments or something? I feel like there was one that was just really rad, and I can't seem to find it. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Esterolanus are pretty cool-looking. Or maybe it was something very similar to platyarthrus. Has anyone gotten you those mermecophile roaches? We have Compsodes. I failed with either Compsodes cuculatus or uh, Mermecophila, and we're working on Adaphila this year. Uh, Duke and Enzo found an entire family of wild leaves in a black ant colony under stone the other day. Uh, thank you for all the beautiful pics. I'm going to put an X here for the eye census, but it seems pretty natural for isopods to be found in ant colonies. My Porcelanides floria from Montgomery were collected out of a fire ant. I think it was fire ants. Alan, correct me if I'm wrong, a fire ant colony. Uh, they can eat just regular isopod fare, but they definitely seem to do better if you keep them with something larger like a millipede or, an, uh, or a roach or something like that. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Two, going to do a control R. I think Kasherin has them, though. I think Kasherin, uh, Kasheran, Kasheran with a winning bid of 33. All right, 25, CF, Nasodillo, Archangelii, Shiro, Utsuri, Starting bid of ten dollars. Cash ran. I'll bid it. I'll bid himself. I'll bid himself. Uh, these are the Shiro Itsuris. No longer. <laughs> no longer uh, uh, considered to truly be an Archangelii. We don't know what any isopods are. Uh, maybe we should replace all isopod genera with with uh, really good selling common names. Perhaps that's the way of the future. Oh, we didn't do those yet. Okay. Still have plenty of fun things coming up here. Checking, getting down the list. All right. Here's an X. Going once, going twice, sold to OG Original Gecko with a winning bid of 33. Okay. Next up we have... 50 Venezillo Parvis Dalmatian proven out. No wild types. This is a problem with these. Whoever released them didn't prove them out fully, so you'd still get wild types popping up. These are proven out completely. You will not get any wild types out of this stock. It's just a little bit of extra work, you know? So you just do a little bit of extra work to, to get these things proven out. Simple recessive. It's simple recessive, guys. Simple geometry. What is an isopod? A miserable little pile of secrets. Uh, oh, Alan, remember in 2023 when I when I came to visit and you 
you, me, and Satchel uh, went to the Baptist church, and I was pulling apart that, like, trash and there were house geckos and ants coming out of it. And I collected those Perseleonides floria there. Those were fire ants, right? Any more millipills tonight? Nope, we are through millipills. Mill pills. Um, oh, yeah, those are fire ants. Yeah, so my Perseleonides floria come from a fire ant nest, basically. Somehow they were living, maybe they were in a refuse chamber and the outer parts of it where it's dry and uh, there's plenty of like tasty debris for them to eat, but yeah, that was uh, I like getting stuff from fun places like that. <clears throat> All right, here's an X for the Venezuela Parvis Dalmatian, proven out, no wild types. Going once, going twice. Sold. To Arbs with a winning bid of 26. All right. Let's do some 25 Porcelio. Scaber. Excalibur. Starting bid of $30. This was a morph, uh, really cool morph, and distinct from White Tiger as well, that has the, the skirt is very bright white on these. I'm going to see. I think there's a blog post with a picture of them somewhere. Marcelio Scaber Excalibur. Okay, I did, a, I did a blog post. So if you see these, thank you. Photo Gallery has already beaten me to it. Uh, these are... You see these in, in person, you'll notice they're very different from white tigers. There is some similarity in the coloration, but the center color of these tends to be better contrasting with the body versus white tiger, where it's just kind of light stripes across the whole body, and the whole body is very light. I will cross these eventually and see what I can make. Maybe I can I can make a very uh, intricately marked and patterned Porcelio Scaber doing this. It's on my to-do list. So, unfortunately, the person who created these lost his colony for reasons. So, they are completely gone from the originator. So, people, only people that they gave them to and people who've gotten them from me are the only people that have Excalibur at the moment. So, but if he's, whenever he's ready to get them again, we will, with eager, with, with, with eager spirits give give him back some of his creation and yes they do breed true 99 percent of the time every once in a while i will see one solidly or not even fully solidly but one that is more solid lookingly marked than the others it's usually a male that's how it usually goes with isopods but 99 percent of the time so one in a hundred you may have to call it seems to be um, again, this doesn't seem to be entirely simple recessive, and if it is, there might be some modifier genes to it. Um, but here we go, Orang Mango preaching their uh, preaching their truth here. We'll put an X here for the Excaliburs. <clears throat> uh, is there a Scaber Lanceslave for dark coloration? The closest thing to that intentionally is probably Clean Slate for having no other mutations. I'm working on, I'm actually working on the dark uh, color thing. I'm, I'm working on it. Um, Anthony Green says, go Excalibur. Devin says, Excalibur doing well for me. I really like them. That color, the white is just so crisp on the edges. And as much as I would, would have loved to say that somebody uh, did a better job with a morph than me comparing these to White Tiger, they really are very different things when you see them next to each other. But I want to combine them so we can see what happens. The pick I posted is from a mix scaber bin i had that through one of these this is actually a locality they're from wisconsin i believe you know not they're, they're not not all the wild stock there looks like this but they there was no additional um add-ins to the stock um all right going once going twice sold 
to JoJo with a winning bid of 66. Excalibur. Oh, that's another decent anime. I did really enjoy watching Soul Eater. It was the longest anime I'd watched up until uh, watching Inuyasha. I did enjoy Soul Eater quite a bit. I know some people thought the ending was kind of not the best, but I was actually pretty fine with it. All right, 25, Porcelio, Dilatatis, Caramel, starting bid, $10. Uh, these are light brown Dilatatis, and that's thank you, Potato Dog. I'm going to like that. I, I can only think of Excalibur when I think of Skaber Excalibur. These are they're just light they're just lighter uh, dilatatis. I started this project shortly after starting the Carmel Levis, hence the same, uh, hence the same strain name. A person says always cool more projects with you. I can't wait to see where the hobby is in ten years when we've had some of the more unusual species and culture for a while. I am uh, I'm actually more excited what we're gonna do with like Skaber because we have all this momentum we've got. I think there are more cultivars of Skaber than any other isopod currently. So we've got a lot of good genetic diversity, diversity of colors. So now it's just we see what we what we can do with that, what we can combine and tease out of it. Uh, Volgari just don't – Volgari do throw a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of variation across populations. But it, the males – because the males are very resistant to express traits – uh, it's not as easy to get a good, distinct Volgari line going from line breeding and stuff. Um, how? Why are there so many less Levis than Skaber morphs? They're just not as variable uh, as, as Skaber. That's that's my thought. Is there a maroon line of Armadillidium and Volgari? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, actually. Um, that's Dilatata, or that's uh, Levis Caramel. I'm going to delete that. I don't think I ever took any pictures of caramel dilatatus, but they're just they're just like brown. I've never been able to get them the same intensity as the Levis. I think I've hit maybe there's a threshold. I can't get them any browner. Um, but instead of being slate gray or extremely dark brown, they're light brown. That's that's where we're at. All right, here's an X for the dilatatus caramel. Another from the old hobby stock, by the way. Uh, all right, going once, going twice, sold to Amos with a winning bid of 20. Wait a minute. Uh, Attila, you edited a bid without the proper correction. You're not allowed to do that, so I must take Amos. Um, that's, that's your bad. It's okay. Again, first time, what have you, that's fine. I do have to give it to a Moz with a winning bid of 23. Just remember that we have a, a way to correct bids. You are not allowed to edit bids. You must correct them. Anyways, uh, moving on. That wasn't a snipe. That was an execution. Just went out and grabbed some from the courtyard and they have a noticeable red tint to them. Even some of the males. Um, Volgari, I think, are you talking about Loki? All right, let's do 100. I know there's an ID for these now. I can't remember it. Tennyson will correct me. Isopata species, Tarragona, starting bid of $30. Tennyson, please correct me. I know there's an ID now, unless the ID changed, which can happen. These are pretty good as a cleanup crew. I await photo gallery to correct me, which will happen. Or somebody, anybody else can step in. Wait, Kasharin says pro Porcelio. Pro Porcelio what? Also, uh, checking the poll, people are saying the original Dragon Ball is better than Berserk. That's interesting. Uh, these are micros, right? Yeah, the adults are like, I think the biggest I've seen them is like seven millimeters. Interesting. People think the original Dragon Ball is better than Dessert. Pro Porcelio species. All right. I'm going to put Pro 
for Celio species tarragona, edited for proper genus name. Slow and brutal. Here's an X for these guys. Again, I figured I'd just get them out there if somebody wanted them. Going once, going twice, sold to Monk Sloth with a winning bid of 30. All right. Congrats on your first auction win as well, Monk Sloth, at least according to the Excel sheet. Um, uh, this is another one that I might need. We need a hundred... Anki Phyllosia species checker, just starting bit of 20 bucks. I'm watching the, the meme nor, normal Kyle live stream. Kyle Bugapalooza live stream. Kyle Hunter <laughs> Dark live stream. I love it. I'm pinning that. That's a beautiful meme. There ain't mu nothing much like a good meme. Was it Anki Phyllosia, or has that been? I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up. Pretty sure it's Anki Phyllosia. Uh, most current, I believe. Every update I have seen has been proven wrong so far, including that one, I believe. So maybe Isopoda species Tarragona is the most accurate still. Um, don't remember that one being there. Lucasius pallidus. That was what the, the uh, Tarragonas are not U.S. native. Are the, these the one that got started from one female on a house plant or something? At this point, that's pretty much everything. Okay, it says Anki, Anki Ankylophila. Maybe I went to the marine species database. Marine species. What did I go to? Somebody want to, what's this, Anki Phyllosia pilosa. Um, let's see, how did I, how did I do this? Sepia, where, where, where am I? Looking at the World Register of Marine Species, trying to find if it is Anki Phyllosia. A -phy CF A Phyllosia and Ulicornis. Okay, A Phyllosia. Thank you for that. Again, I remember going to the Marine Species, uh, database and trying to figure out what the proper spelling was. Tennyson, I will trust you. And I'm going to put edited Tennyson ID. All right, here's an X for these guys. A good feeder, very fast breeding, likes high humidity. I had a bin with hundreds of thousands of these ones. I really did not need hundreds of thousands of them, though, and they never produced anything unique. I never saw any mutants, any slightly variable individuals, nothing. All right, going once, going twice, sold to Schnapps, winning bid of 25. Let's see what was the numbers for this. It was 100. Okay, let's next do 100 Cubaris, Murina, Bahia, Honda, Florida, the ancestral locality of Cubaris, Murina, from which... I don't know if all lines descend from this now, but at least for the first couple of years that they were in culture, they were all from Bahia Honda, from a couple of boys collected from logs and some leaf litter. Starting a catastrophic chain reaction throughout the world, the likes of which we have not recovered from to this day. When will isopods be done? Isopods will be eliminated. 
I think we'll be done by six, actually. Then we'll take an hour break, and then we'll hop into the really super duper extra fun stuff. Uh, a person matches the house plant story, absolutely zero genetic diversity without some random mutation. That being said, usually soon after bringing populations, uh, including inbred ones or, or very low founding stock numbers into captivity, usually within the first two generations, you will see mutants pop up usually because you've got a lot of closely related individuals breeding and you are, um, you've taken a small piece of the wild population. You're increasing the frequency of some alleles just by virtue of only being a closed breeding group. Fun stuff is everything that's li listed under fun stuff, everything we haven't done already. So uh, in a lightning round and miscellaneous other stuff, all kinds of fun things. Still patiently hoping, waiting for White and Tenny slash Almeria Mountains since I lost on Expanses. Maybe this species is just boring then. That's possible. I mean, a, an orange one people would fawn over. And maybe the Dalmatian would look really cool in a Phylosia. All right. Cubaris Marina, Bahia Honda, Florida. Going once. Going twice. Sold to Attila, winning bid of 23 exotic wilderness with the Mega Mine. Mega Mine 2, a catastrophic failure. Get it out of my face. Okay. 20, Porcelio Silvestrii, starting bid of $20. Silvestrii, uh, don't really see around too much anymore. The uh, the hype has kind of dropped off for them, I guess, from the initial uh, hype that they once had, I, I, I suppose. I do like them. Uh, Morbid Arachnid says, Cubaris Maria will always be the OG Cubaris in my heart. Yes, it will be in mine, too, for, for kickstarting being a contributing factor to Ice Upon Sand. And these 60 likes, 60 viewers. Perfect. Let's go, everybody. We got this. We're going to have a rad evening. I'm hoping we get to 70 likes, 70 viewers at some point this evening. I genuinely believe we are going to get there. A person says, assume it's going to happen at some point. Will you be interested in someone? Inevitably, engineers, glowfish, scavers. Oh, yeah, I'll buy those up. Or I'll, I'll even contribute to the project. I'll be like, hey. You know, use one of these lines. It'll express the best. Um, I can't. I'm really. I'm. I'm. Once I move top priority scaber project, I'm combining all these pigmentless lines that I've kept separate and tracked, and working towards creating a clear isopod. Um, I think some of the deep. I'm going to look up clear isopod. Maybe if there's if there's any isopod on the planet. All right. If there's any isopod on the planet that can be clear then that means it can be done. All right. Here's a picture on Google, on Reddit. From Troglophyllosia species, clear cave-dwelling isopod with no eyes. It can be done. It's happened in another isopod. It can be done in other species, and I will work for that. Um, I found a guy on Facebook who said he could do it. It's actually a little more difficult with, um, organisms that don't lay eggs to get that expression. Um, I have to sit here and talk out to you what the details were uh, because my ex was the one who told me about how that was how they do that. It involves like in, injecting like uh, mRNA into the genitals and then pairing them and then you kind of you do have to do some line breeding after that for in certain stuff so. Um, but yeah, I'm certain that we can get a clear Porcelio Scaber given enough trait stacking. And that's the value of keeping track of all your solid white Scabers and line tracking in general, is it allows you to systematically and controlled breeding for ultimate projects like something like cool. Uh, maybe I would call it glass or not ghost because there's already ghosts and that doesn't sound very cool. Although that would be a nice way to, to stick it to all the people who uh, have their so-called ghost scapers in the West. But, uh, all right, rant ended. Here we go. Here's an X for the Silvestri eye. 
Going once. Going twice. Sold. Oh, could looks like Bob Harrison, but I'm going to control refresh. Will you ship things all together to save shipping costs? No, if you won if you won over $100 worth of stuff, you get free shipping with this auction. Kyle's window. I'm seeing Monk's uh, I'm seeing uh, Bob Harrison with the first 35 bid and Monk Sloth uh, Monk Sloth after. So we got to give it to Bob with a winning bid of 35. All right. Let's do some roly polies that are very near and dear to me. 25 Armadillidium vulgare, Dearborn, Michigan. The roly polies I grew up playing with as a child. I had a purple project going out of this. I lost them during my stressy, depressy, lemon zesty. And the only person that I sent some stock to early on was a flash in the pan isopod keeper. And so I can't get that original stock back anymore. Uh, but Kyle, why? What do you mean, why? I'll go and see if there's any records on INAT. All I can say is that these are the most purplish, wild-type Armadillidium vulgari that I have encountered. And let me tell you this. I know my Armadillidium vulgari localities. If there is anybody on this planet qualified to talk about them, it is yours truly here. And these have the most natural purple coloration that I have seen. I'm going to try and zoom in on my home city of Dearborn. And I'm going to see if there's any observations from my uh, no results. Nobody take pictures. Nobody care about nature in southeast Michigan. you got to be kidding me. Not even any pictures. Okay, somebody took a picture uh, uh, over by Ford Field. Let's see. Here's this Brady Street. I used to haunt there quite a bit. It's a good place. It used to be a really good place to go find stuff. It's uh, it's uh, getting developed and invasive overrun. All right, Kyle Y, no photo. I'm going to put they purplish. The most purplish on any wild type stock that I have encountered. Uh, these were started, I have a sad story about this before I, I'll put the X and tell my sad story. So I had to cobble these together from under rocks and my parents have like little pavers around the flower beds in the front yard. I had to cobble these together from uh, underneath those pavers. I only found like somewhere between three and seven last spring, set them up and got a colony going. Uh, when I was younger, I could go down the street and there's there's a business and they had mulch and a flower bed and they had some some crab apple trees and stuff over there. And I could go look around for bugs there at night. Actually, it was a pleasure to go there on a warm summer night after a rain. Uh, the flower bed was used to be surrounded by like a big six by sixes nailed to the ground and they were in varying states of decay and whatnot. And so, you know, I could go there on a warm summer night. And even though it was in the middle of the suburbs and not really any nature anywhere uh, nearby, I could find a bunch of roly polies. I'd see Microtomus, uh, not Microtomus, uh, Reduvius personatus, assassin bugs at the light by the business that was there. I'd see house centipedes. You could get really lucky sometimes, really lucky, and find a Lucanus. Um, I think I've seen, I'd have seen i seen both Capriolus and... Um, Placidus over there. Uh, but now, uh, whoever bought the building and whatever turned it into a 24-7 or 2012-7 urgent care whatever thing, uh, they gutted the whole flower bed, replaced it with, uh, with uh, a garden bed uh, plastic liner and rocks. They got rid of all the, uh, the road, the uh, six by sixes. They cut down all the trees. It's just rocks there now. There's nothing. There's nothing uh, that, that lives there. Anytime I've gone to check, it's really sad. Uh, and just, is we didn't have anything. There was no nature there, and yet there were things living. And now they even took that away, you know? 
What size enclosure would an adult pair of Dynasties Tidious need? No less than 10 gallons if you want laying. If you want good, consistent laying. Each isopod is individually wrapped. I'm not that crazy. All right. Going once for my hometown, Armadillidium vulgari, from my childhood home. Going twice. Sold. Two, I'm control r I think JoJo really wants these, but it looks like may have been out-competed. Two, Tally Sin with a winning bid of $35. Jojo probably feel a little, a little frustrated about that. It's already been clarified. Oh, sorry, everybody's going off on the uh, on the uh, shipping thing. Yeah, all your winnings are in the same box. I don't ship every box separately, guys. Let's do 25 Arma Dilidium Badium Castle Dacia Castle Dacia starting bid of uh, $20. A neat species that one of our auction members sent me as an extra to try and claim a uh, bounty on Porcelio Scaber Whiteout, and uh, they were deceived un intentionally or unintentionally by uh, somebody at an expo claiming that they were pure they were pure Whiteout isopods. I'll give them that much, but they were Porcelio 90's Punosis Whiteout, not Porcelio Scaber white out so that sucked here i was hoping i'd finally get my white outs back thank you exotic wilderness for some good pictures they may not be insanely colorful or intensely vibrant but they there is something nice to this uh species similar to the punta canas they remind me of punta canas quite a bit with the uh what just just the way their color is arranged and the hues that they produce Here's an X for the Badium. Better in person, says Monk Sloth. I agree 100%. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Monk Sloth with a winning bid of 40. Way up before everybody else. Monk Sloth, smart, placing a cryptic high bid before everything else. All right, here we have a really, these are really, 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 really cool. I've been working on these for a couple of years. They've crashed and then rebounded. I finally got them in a good state. Porcelio Scaber, CF Forma, Lusitanus, Lusitanus Magma, starting bid of $40. So... Um, let me write this into my Excel sheet. Da, 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 da. We're going to go find the lava. I'm trying to make a couple of um, of uh, different different lines out of lava. Just pure lavas. I've got a couple of projects going on. Pick is I'm going to put a note here that selected for bottom left coloration proven out 99.9 percent .9 so these are predominantly this nice reddish orange porcelio scaber uh cf forma lusitanus they have always uh, no more than 40% gray coverage on the telson. They've been selected to all look like the bottom lit, the bottom left. Actually, that's a 99.9% added a added 0 0.09. So out of a thousand, you may get an individual that has more gray on it. Um, than that. Any more green spots? We may have some more green spots. Somebody tagged me. Roach Crossing, how many more ice spots pieces? We had scheduled to end at six or go longer. I'm always down for more, of course. It's looking like we have a good chance of wrapping up isopods uh, before 6.30, which is when I think I'm going to take a break. Take an hour break, come back, and go as long as I can because we've got a lot of stuff, and hopefully uh, not have to do an auction extension. Maybe we'll bring the pace up, make it more brisk and fun. I don't know. We're going to see how it goes. But anyways, Morbid has placed a bid already. Uh, 
these are, I think, what people expect when they buy lavas. They expect them to look like the bottom left uh, continually. Uh, so if you, uh, Joy, that's not a good good uh, thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete that from Joy. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a millennial, so I don't have the speed to circle the bottom left individual in that picture. All right, there's a 45. We won't dawdle on this then. Going once for the magmas. Going twice. Sold. To JoJo with a winning bid of 55. This will be a lot nicer when I have pictures of everything. But JoJo and I, it's probably going to be a three-day effort to go through all my isopods and get pictures. All right. 25 for Celio. Skaber, Portland, Oregon, starting bid of twenty dollars. Uh, Rose, heritable, yellow, calicos, East Coast stock does not. Thank you for the late picture, Morbid. All right. So Derek had some really nice yellow calicos isolated from this uh, from this locality. I screwed up and killed them in 2021, I think. Uh, so we lost the, the small amount of work that Derek had put into trying to refine for good yellow calicos. I was surprised that they were actually sticking. East Coast yellow calico is not heritable. It is not strongly heritable at all. Those individuals you see of people posting on the, the base of the eastern half of the U.S. and they say, I found this in my backyard. I'm really hoping I'll prove it out. I think this is going to be a really cool new morph. And it's like, I, you, you can you can keep trying. Uh, photo gallery, That's that was a thank you for putting that. We're on to the next thing, though. Um, but anyways, so then I lost the stock. And then uh, a, a, an acquaintance went to Portland and asked me, hey, you, you told me there are these cool scabers here. Where do I collect them? So Derek gave us the exact log that he found them at, and this guy went and collected uh, a restart from there. Unfortunately, it's not throwing a high proportion of yellow calicos. It does need some. Those need to be teased out of the stock, but at least they're there. The genetics are there. Here's an X going once, going twice. Sold to JoJo with a winning bid of 20. I wish I had a refined project to uh, to put on the table here, but that's all I got, folks. Okay, let's do 25, Venezuela, Arizonicus, Florida, Canyon, Arizona. Let's see how much the other Arizonicus went for. Starting bid of $40. We're going to move briskly. I'm eager to wrap up before 6 or at 6. Just a different locality of Venezuela, Arizonicus, collected from Florida Canyon. Uh, these have not really been circulated that much. And somebody said, you, Portland. How many Scaber localities do you have? Localities or strains? I'll pull that information up really quick. I'll put an X here for the Venezuela, and I'll pull up that information on Scaber strains. So we have... Roach Crossing currently maintains, and there's more projects than this. This is just uh, this is just the number of projects and localities that are uh, ready for release or are on the site. Um, Twenty six. That's not including project bins among other things. Twenty six. Um, confirmed locality slash cultivars of Skaber. Uh, Satchel, the tusks are doing well. The vulgari from your backyard are doing well. I don't know if I'm going to list any here. I think that's something I need pictures to sell as I'm finding out. But All right, Venezuela, Arizona, Kist, Florida Canyon, Arizona, going once, going twice, sold. To Monk Sloth with a winning bid of forty dollars.
Long Sloth getting a very neat species. All right, 25 Cubaris Murina Anemone. Starting bid of $10. I thought these were really neat. I think the original photos that people took of them definitely cherry-picked the coolest individuals. I still think they're neat. I'm wondering if there's some refinement that needs to be done or if it even can be done. But uh, nifty, nifty, nifty. Not as cool as I thought originally, but still nifty. All right, going, we're going to put the X here, going once, going twice, sold. Control R, let's see who won in this, this, this fray. Looks like Patrick with a winning bid of 20. Again, we're kind of going through, kind of trying to cover some ground here. Next up, we're going to do 20 Armadillidium Klugii Pudding. I don't know if this is pure Montenegro stock or not. I think it came out around the time that, that those uh, were the only thing in culture. So uh, maybe this is pure, the stock is a, is a pure locality, but I do not know enough to say for sure. What do we say? We said a ten dollar starting bid for some pudding. Uh, let's see. Imagine a Nemni variant with with uh, white instead of black. That'd be pretty cool. Little swirls. It would look like cookies uh, with like a orange cream prunosis. I'd like that. Maybe that can be worked on. All right. Here's the X for the Klugii pudding. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Two, control R. These have been very close. McCheeseburger with a winning bid of 26. Okay. We'll do just a small group of these for the heck of it. Porcelio Aff Levis Dairy Cow. Starting bid of $1. Anybody need some dairy cows? I feel like I should put them out there just in case somebody needs them. Maybe somebody needs them. They're lovely. I've always liked dairy cows. Um, they're, they're just everywhere now, and that's okay. They're also not Levis. We've confirmed they're not Levis for sure. We just don't know what exactly they are. So that, that makes things uh, fun and complicated for some groups of people. All right. Going once on the dairy cows. Going twice. Sold. To Patrick, winning bid of 15. All right, not so bad, not so bad. Again, we're just we're covering some ground. Somebody probably wants some of these species, so we'll get it to them. All right. Next, we have a utility line of Skaber. We have 25 Porcelio Skaber, clean slate, solid gray, zero hats, zero calicos, starting bid of $30. This is a utility line for people who are working on Skaber morphs. Let's say you purchased lottery ticket or whatever. You found an individual and you say, Oh, good heavens, I love this. I want to breed for this. It speaks to me. Look, it's staring at me with its little beady eyes. And you really want more of exactly what you see. You can use Clean Slate. Cross it to Clean Slate. See uh, what the genetics are. You can cross the babies to each other and see if it's, oh, I fall in love with an individual that's het orange. That's why it's this weird, cool color. Uh, it's because it's heterozygous. This can't be proven out over time. So it is a uh, it is a utility line. 
When is lightning round? Again, after the break, eat your meat McCheeseburger. You can't have any pudding if you don't eat your meat. You can't tell me what to do. I am the cheeseburger. Exotic dot, dot, dot. I can't dot, dot, dot. Stop. That sounds like a creepy pasta. Uh, text from a creepy pasta. Photo gallery. Yep, that'll, that'll work for a, for a pick of just solid gray scaber. All right, here's an X for the clean slate going once, going twice. Sold. To JoJo, winning bid of $30. Again, the, the blandness of this line is the value that it gives you for, for finding things. Let's do 25 Cubara species, Panda King, comma, Citrus. Starting bid of $1. This is the label that this stock was sold to me as. I believe these are just solid uh, red panda king, comma, red pandas, which do pop up in um, the colony of panda king, red panda. We've seen images before. They're just solid ones with a little bit of white skirting. Starting bid of $1. Oh yeah, we do. We do still have some fun stuff come up. Well, I mean, we got plenty of fun stuff. It's the, our, the we're going to be in the uh, isopod finale here. We got to have cool stuff. All right, here's an X. Start wrapping up your Panda King Citrus bids. We're in the last five-ish things also, I should say. Going once for the species Panda King Citrus. Going twice. Sold. To Eliundar with a winning bid of 40. Eliundar's first... Auction win, I think. Ellie Undar, Ellie Under. Congrats on your first win at the Bugapalooza. Sun's starting to go down a little bit. There's some clouds. Um, let's see. We'll set up this next thing and then we'll discuss some stuff in the live stream. 25 Armadillo Officinalis Sicily. That's a one spicy a meatball starting bid of $20. Uh, completely unrelated. There are multiple species called Venilo, Venezilla species red and tenny. That's wonderful. Potato dogs comment on the clean slate scaber being the working man scaber. I like that. A person says, oh, hey, I'm getting the unrelated Cubara species citrus along with the interesting versicolor locale. Will you want any to make life more confusing and sad? Oh, yeah, you bet. You bet. There's a, send it my way. Did Sakinctus happen already? Been gone for a bit. We did Sakinctus yesterday, actually. Doesn't mean there won't be more. Is Sicily the smallest officinalis? The only two localities that I have, and I think the only ones there are, somebody please correct me, are Sicily and Israel. Israel is supposedly a different species. And then there's three strains of red slash orange officinalis that don't have any locality information attached. There's orange crush, there's orange, and there's red. And I have all three, and they all look identical to me. And I have no idea if I should what if I should be aware of any differences between the three of them. But I continue to propagate all three of them because I'm terrified that I may get rid of one and it may have been something different from the others. So um, the Sicily, Armadillo Officinale Sicily, I very frequently take to public programs. And people always say, because I pick the biggest ones in the colony, they look at it and say, that's the biggest roly-poly I've seen in my entire life. So they do get very large. Ones I got were sold as Aficionalis Spain. Uh, Bree, I might have to get some of those from you, although just Spain is a big place and it sucks that's all the locality info they had, but uh, I want it still. I would probably still want them. Hiss in defense rubbing exo. Yes, yep, these guys do hiss. Here's an X for the Sicilians, uh, I mean the, uh, the isopods of Sicily. Going once, going twice, 
sold to Beetle Pixel with a winning bid of 33. All right, let's go downwards in size. Let's do 200 Mictoniscus Medcoffi. I think it's two Fs. Um, from Riverwalk, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, starting bid of $20. This is a small, innocuous, wood and, and detritus feeding species that likes high moisture. Good candidate for a bioactive, I think, not as, as assertive as Trichorhina are. Um, Duke and Enzo confirmed that there seems to be a strain of officinalis from Spain going around. Satchel says, hey, I know that place. Does the giveaway ones go in the same box as the bidding ones are complete? They go, they go in the same box. Uh, but if you only won a giveaway, everything's free. You're, you're, sorry, everything's free. What you won is free. You don't have to pay shipping. You don't have to pay anything. If you win a giveaway, you just get, tell me your address in the email. You get your box of bugs. If you won something in the giveaway along with an auction with auction wins, you get the giveaway stuff in the auction wins box. The long Mictoniscus, uh, greater than all. I love Mictoniscus species so much. They're the best dwarf iPod ever. They breed really well, too. Thank you for the pitch. Photo Gallery's got some good pictures, probably from TJ, I think. Here's an X. Going once for the Mictoniscus. Going twice. Sold. Bob Harrison, winning bid of 25. Simple and clean is the way that you're making me feel tonight. Right there. All right. We have 25. Porcelio, Skaber, Orange... Dalmatian starting bid of $30. There are two orange Dalmatian strains. Uh, both, I think, were labeled as the same thing for a while. Uh, this is the pure U.S. stock, not from crossing to Spanish orange, not from crossing Dalmatian to Spanish orange. Bob Snipe and nobody keeping property values down. You should get a poll going for more engagement. Perhaps I will. Richard just got so excited from you quoting Kingdom Hearts. That's funny. I only know that from the commercial. I never actually played Kingdom Hearts. I just think it's, it's – uh, I know that part of the commercial always stuck with me for some reason as an impressionable – Young youth. Guys, we are down. We're gonna be down to our last five isopods, and things are about to go crazy, I think. All right, here's an X. Going once from for the Porcelio Scaber Orange Dalmatian. Going twice. Sold. To JoJo, winning bid of $40. JoJo, man of culture with all these scaber. Okay. Um, here we go. Things are getting nuts now. The last five isopods that are non -light -night lightning round. We have, first off, we have a group of 12... Uh, let me go look in the records to see. Group of 12, Porcelio Sacinctus, starting bid of $1. Your last chance to get Sacinctus. At this auction, at the Bugapalooza.
can't I find this in my records? There we go. We got to consolidate some things here. Said non lightning round pods. We have there are gonna be some pods in the lightning round. I think I'm not sure which ones yet. So happy I showed up for the finale. This is about to get crazy. At Roach Crossing, is Arizona kiss need a sandy substrate, same as many other ice pods? I've been keeping all mine on sand. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but they like it, so why would I stop doing it? I wasn't paying attention. I would have paid more for McDoniscus, says Chain. Uh, Satchel says, I've never played Kingdom Hearts either, but I watched a multi-hour video essay explaining the story and the lore once. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's like that. Shaking. Kyle vibing for real. I was vibing. I had to head out. All right. Here's the X for the Sakinctus. Porcelio Sakinctus, a dozen. Captain Bread here at Roach Crossing. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Bree with a winning bid of 85. Bree really squeaked in there for the Sakinctus. I tell you what. All right. We're going to keep this momentum, though. Um, I have reevaluated, and I think I'm safe to put another one of these guys up for grabs. 12 Porcello Expanses Orange with the descriptor. It's evaluated for purity, but looks good. Okay. How do I not kill these? Bree will have to have a long discussion about that. You want them to be dry, but not too dry. You want them to have some air humidity, but it can't be stagnant. Come on, webcam. There we go. It's having a hard time with the light. The lighting is very beautiful outside right now. Fourth time I try to win these, GG. Altered Pants is back. I'm back in time for the misc section. I've been making garden beds all weekend. I wish that were me so bad. So, so bad. Satchel, I wish I have too many mictoniscus because I split my collie a while back. If you're interested, chain message on Discord. Yes. All right. Here's an X for the Expanses Orange, looking like it's pure stock. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Bree with a winning bid of 105. Bree really wants these large Spanish guys. All right, keep it up. 20 Troglodillo species green spots, starting bid of $1. I had to, I'm going broke, except Kyle. You say that, but I've got a bunch of fencing to buy for the farm, I've got goats to buy. I've got a, a new mortgage to be slapped on to. Uh, it's, it's, it's sometimes it may look rosy from the outside, but it's, it can be a hard knock life sometimes. Uh, not even going to try to win expanses. Iliundar says, so glad I was able to grab those citrus. I'm going to be starting a Panda King morph project and been trying to get morphs from different surfaces. I like that idea. And I hope you create some cool stuff with them because even though they are rats and they are not worth the money that people were charging for them a couple of years ago, they do have a lot of cool varieties. And I think if you mix some stuff, you do some selective breeding, you can make some really cool, cool looking isopods. So good job. I hope, I hope your projects go as well. Uh, Zen says, I think I'll, you'll be able to buy those goats. If not, find cheaper goats. Hmm, Roid, you could give the casuals a chance for a couple extra seven seconds. Hemroid says, I've killed $800 of them. Oh, Lord, someone stop this man. <laughs> Maybe it's a sign for now. Here's an X going once for the Troglodillo species green spots. 20 count going twice. Sold. 
to Amaz, your bid is very late. Uh, I think we all know who the winner here is. Dr. Humroid with a winning bid of 300. All right. Craziness ain't over yet. We have 100 Armadillidium Vulgari Magic Potion starting bid $1. The original Gangsta straight from the RC. All right. Have at it, everybody. Second to last thing here. Have some fun. Frolic in the field. Dude says apples. You cannot contain the enthusiasm. Bree says, I got to hold off myself and everything else other than white antennae and centipedes and maybe snail if they're caracolis or whatever it's called. If you can, you can. If you can't, you cheer. I've never heard that before. I, or a hyper beam. I'm just going to beam, generalized beam. Also, Kyle, should I mention care of the succinctus in email or is just discussing it over Discord better? Definitely do it in the email. Um, again, I'll just do it really quick here. Uh, good quality, very well rotted bark, horizontal orientation. They like a dryish enclosure, but they don't want to be bone dry. They want a good amount of ventilation, but not, they won't take it as, they don't want as much ventilation as, say, Hilaria. Or um, uh, I guess troglodillo, one troglodillo species green spots likes a lot of ventilation in my experience. So uh, most similar in care, like Magnificus, like uh, Bolivari, but I would say wanting it even more humid than those two species. They uh, they've given people problems for a while for a reason, but I think those days are over. It looks like um, I don't even know what the current bid is here's an x for it though uh for the current bid for the magic potions the originals i'm really looking to monopolize the magic potion market thank you for po spy family everybody was saying current anime sucks but spy family is great love spy family all right going once going twice on the big lot of magic potions sold Two, I gotta scroll up and find out what they are. Dr. Hemroid, of course, with a winning bid of 180, standing proud above the rest. And now for the last thing, I must I must zoom around my phone. And uh, we're gonna have to go into Discord and uh I'm going to have to go through what Discord don't give me notifications. we got to upload a picture that I used in the last sale of these guys for everybody. All right. We have a picture up before the pricing and the description. A group of 15 for Celio Skaber, Roy G. Biv, the culmination of, I think, a decade of work, starting bit of... Uh, okay, Dr. Humroid already put $50 down on them, so um, that's cool. JoJo's putting 50 A lot of people putting 50 in. This is good. I like this. I would have done $1, but I don't want to disgrace Skaber like that. They're too noble. All right, we've got a lot of people interested in what is to this day, I guess other than Magic Potion, but those, again, that's only like three to four generations of selection into those. What is to this day my magnum opus of selective breeding and isopods? Also, please ignore that Project Vulgari in the bottom right. I keep another, I keep a Project of Vulgari in the bin with the uh, Roy G. Bibbs. That's one of them. So you can see some of the beautiful variation in this line of Skaber. Armadillidium contamination. No, they are intentionally co-housed. That's actually that that solid red project that I'm working on. Picks for the culture. They will breed. Humana, humana. Again, that is the brick project in there. All right, here's an X for the... Victor's getting all worked up. I don't know why. Here's an X for the Roy G. Biv Porcelio Skaber. 
Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Kasharin. What an upset with a winning bid of 131. Kasharin out of nowhere. Be, everybody thought maybe Dr. Hemroid. 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 Maybe Beetle Pixel. Maybe Bob Harrison pokes in there. Maybe Logie. Logie. Loki dares again. Maybe Chris Sniper. But no. Kasharin out of. Pretty much nowhere I keep beating myself. That's worse than beating somebody or better than beating someone else, I guess. All right, everybody. That is it. Bidding paused until we're going to do uh, 7.20 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna. I'm going to take a break. Thank you, everybody. For a wonderful isopod section, we got 62 people, 61 likes. You love to see it. I hate to cut the momentum, but I need to eat. Angela needs some love. The dogs need some love. I should probably go for a walk so that all my uh, all those bodily processes that are dependent on uh, muscular skeletal movements don't stop. Um, gonna be back at what I say, 7:20. 720 preparation H. That's great. 720 p.m. Eastern. Next topic is everything else. And grain past insanity. We finally did it, everybody. It's been over two days, but we've made it to put Kyle Jr. by us. That's a good idea, Exotic Wilderness. I like that. We'll let Kyle Jr. come see you folks. Make it 7.30. We'll run until 3 a.m. It will. Maybe we'll have a brisker pace. We'll see. I just need to. Uh, I, I I I I just I just kind of need to go eat some food and move my legs and stuff, fam. Tbh, fam. Kind of need that. All right, here we go. We're gonna give everybody a nice eyeful of this. It's an eyeful of this. I will see you all at 7:20 p.m.
Hello, everybody. Sorry I'm back a little late. Food, uh, Angela uh, made food a little bit after we got back from we went for a stroll. I really needed it to stretch my legs and my soul. But I'm back and ready to fully commit to giving you all a lovely next probably five plus hours. Also on our walk, um, one of my neighbors, I didn't even know they had this. I think this is uh, it's a viburnum. I think it's Wayfarer's tree. It's one of the ornamental or one of the ornamental hybrid, whatever, of viburnums. This is a, a good host for feeding the um, uh, Western Shorthorn walking stick. So I'm, I had to grab this and toss it in with them. So they got some fresh food. And I'm also going to find out if Ecstatosoma will eat a honeysuckle. So we're going to do that. I predict 6.5 hours, 2 a.m. All right, we'll see how accurate Chris is with that. Um, I see somebody's excited about the Roy G. Biv Scavers. I think the line as it is is amazing. Not to toot my own horn too much, but I think the potential for taking it further is really there. Speaking of phasma, I found weird springtails in the water cup that I put fruit branches in. Hey, are you feeding them? My honeysuckle. No, no, this is an introduced honeysuckle species. 61 in chat, 65 in chat, 65 likes, 65 people. Let, hit that, lick that like button. Thank you, everybody. Here we go. So um, we're going to start off with a little bit of the miscellaneous stuff. <clears throat> Actually, we're going to start off. I got I to gotta send the signal to the uh, at everyone that bidding resumes. We are going to start off with uh, with uh, something I'm satchel. We're going to get to your stuff in a bit. Um, uh, where do we start? All right. <clears throat> we have uh, two special – oh, my gosh. Is that somebody I did it, me feeding an uh, enclosure of uh, – Spongy moths, emerald ash borers, and spotted lantern flies with the honeysuckle. Just me feeding my pests. I mean my pets. Um, we're gonna start off with an auction for, and now the sun decides to come out again. For a uh, friend of mine, somebody was. Oh, it's really covered out. Really nice, but. Uh, Uh, we are going to, you are bidding on an exact pair of organisms here. This is the very pair you will receive. We have one adult pair, Cyclomatis Metallifer Finney, starting bid $100, shipping not included there will be a separate shipping cost for these but we have you are bidding on this exact pair pictured pair that you are bidding on all right we'll start off with that let's see what conversations going on in our lively chat this is a pretty good screen cap, maybe exotic wilderness. You gotta get me with the light here. I look like an anime protagonist protagonist. Is there a tentative time from the grain pest will start? Not really. Someone at a bulk cardboard box supply once spelled our biz name Anarchids. So here I am to say I'm excited for the Anarchids. I like that. If I clean wine courts, can I use feed them to glow spot roaches? Yeah, knock yourself out. Start with arachnids, please. Uh, in replacement for softwood, me want beetles. How many eggs they have? I don't know. I've never actually bred Cyclomatus. Cyclomatus. He really said, I don't know what that is. He really said, uh, I don't know this. Kyle, have you watched Interstellar? No, I have not. How long ago did they emerge? I'm unsure. 
Also, please take it to the YouTube comments. I do not know. Um, I don't know the – wait, let me let me double check. Maybe I do know. I know for the next thing I'm going to list. I don't think I know for these. Okay. Uh, I do know they are inactive as of the 6th of April. As of the 6th of – uh, as of the 6th of April, they are, oh my gosh, that's funny. I'll, I'll count that as, uh, it's only implied scenarios. I'll count that as relatively tasteful. Um, we'll put an X here. Anybody want the Cyclominus pair? Uh, Cyclominus metallifer finny. Still dormant as of yesterday. Also, so they are a fresher pair. Going once. Going twice, sold or pass, sold, Beetle Pixel, winning bid of 111. Metallifer, Finney. Trying to figure Beetle Pixel would be interested in this. Um, next up, we have. Who is that? Is that me and Borat? Oh my God. Wouldn't be the first time I've been compared to go Borat. Next up, we have a. You are bidding on this exact pair here of Homodorus Melii. How did I. Uh, we do 1.11. Adult pair Homodorus Melii. Starting bid $100. Shipping not included. Inactive. Roughly four more months of dormancy. Starting bid of, well, I said starting bid of $100. This is the exact. Pair for sale of Homodorus Melii. Um, somebody asked, were you whistling out that one Banjo and Kazooie theme or something while you were coming in? Yeah, Angela and I were playing a little bit of Smash Bros uh, just to help reset my brain. Oh, there's the sun's going. Go. And uh, we always, Spiral Mountain is our stage with the, the Spiral Mountain theme. So I, it's stuck in my head. 100 plus a fun little donation of $11, I guess. Please, guys, I want the next one. Well, here's your opportunity, Phil, for the Homodorous uh, Melii. I really like these, and uh, I might, I might, if nobody else takes them, I might actually end up uh, just, just slipping them into my back pocket. Can you clue whether any of the beetles were bred by you? Yes, these were not bred by me. These and the Cyclominus were not bred by me. 68 people in the chat, 70 likes. Nobody saw me wipe my nose just now. Excellent. Let's try and get over it. Do we, we, had, do we have 70 already? I freaked out about something. Maybe it was the number 68 likes or something like that. 71 likes. Beautiful. Slam Beetle Pixel, please. Let's see what the Beetle Pixel. The Beetle Pixel is typing. Beetle Pixel is ready. Be on guard. These are the only pairs of, of adult beetles, of like larger display beetles that are up for grabs today. These are the only ones. Here's an X. I have a feeling these are going to be sold, so I'm getting ready to type sold instead of pass. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Two looks like Beetle Pixel with 121, a misfire from Beetle Pixel after, but there's no period, so it doesn't count. Uh, 121 with a winning bid of 121 from Beetle Pixel. Congratulations on the Homodorous pair, Beetle Pixel. When you receive these, I will probably buy larvae from you. Just saying. All right, and that's that. Grain Pest Madness is later, so we're going into the all else. We're going to do a little bit of this all else stuff. We're going to do some uh, – Satchel has uh, has asked me to auction some stuff off for him in the same vein as I did in a past auction, so we're going to go and do that. 
Uh, actually, Satchel, I gotta get your list again. Uh, there we go. Okay, I got Satchel's list. Some nifty stuff in Satchel's list. Some things that I uh, did not actually off auction off yet. So, um, all right, let's let's move in. Let's move into. Uh, let's do this. All right, we have a one thousand Tenebrio. This is kind of technically a green pass, but I'm not counting it. 1,000 Tenebrio Molitor Wisman Giant starting bid of, uh, let's say, uh, $40. These are the Wisman Giant Mealworms. We have a couple of offers already. Tenebrio Molitor Wisman Giant 1K. I know at least one person. I see two people who are very interested in them. Now, get this. That image that Photo Gallery posted, while accurate, is out of date. Uh, Kim and Christine, mostly Christine, according to Kim, have been refining these even more. So the larvae are even bigger than at the point in time where I got my colony. So these are actually stock that's coming directly from the premium Wisman lines themselves. They will be as big as they can be, possibly the largest common mealworms on the face of the planet at this point in time. All right, Chris Sniper with a $200 bid. Chris Sniper really wants those big mealworms, probably for, for all those, uh, those uh, poultry, I would imagine. One bid year of servitude to you. A lot of people saying, okay, I'm out 5K. All right, going once. Going twice, sold, wasam, to Chris Sniper with a winning bid of 200 bones. I haven't said that in a while. 200 bones to Chris Sniper. All right. I got to see. Uh, uh, I got to gotta catch up on the live stream chat. We got a lot of people in here. 68 people, 74 likes. You'll love to see it. Let's keep it up. Next up, we're going to do a group of one cup of one, one plus egg masses, Romalia, Microptera. These are fresh as well. Loxahatchee, Florida, starting bid of $40. This is the most colorful Eastern Lubber variety. Let's see if I can find uh, a picture. I know I have a good picture somewhere. These are the bright orange ones. Um, I'm going to go prowl on iNaturalist, actually. Romalia, Microptera. Surely there's a picture of them that I have put up somewhere, but these are the bright orange ones. Uh, da, 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 da. We zoom on in here to the proper area of Florida. See if I can find some on uh, INET. This uh, this locality not only has the oranges, it also has very cool lemon yellow color ones, not like the golden ones you see uh, further north. Very, very cool. I like the, the mix of, mixture of colors in this locality, and there are lots of observations for these guys. We're going to see if I can find one with the... Uh, there we go. Here's, here's one that shows the good colors, unless Tennyson's fetched up a picture. Uh, photo gallery is getting close. Surely somebody's gotten a good picture of one of these, these bright orange localities. I thought I put one on Facebook a long time ago, but obviously I ain't on Facebook, and I ain't going back today. So it's up to – I'm at the mercy of iNaturalist. I swear I had a picture of these somewhere. Um. Oh, here's a good picture. We're going to, uh, oops. All right. So this is what half of these look like. The other ones look like a lemon yellow color that I cannot find a picture of anywhere, apparently. Captive bread. Captive bread. These are eggs from captive bread adults. I've had these going for quite a while. I also don't get the anime reference, but I'm, I'm curious. All right, let's see. Uh, winter produce is less nutritive than summer produce. 
Um, I, yeah, Alex, I guess you can send me a list. I guess I got a bank on James's flash sale. That's a ton of worms. Five five thousand Demodex starting at twenty bucks. You got touch faces with me to get them. Betting there's some aliens culturing them and selectively breeding them to make them huge. Hey Kyle, can I get like one hundred of the giant mealworms since Chris hates the poor? Apparently, uh, send me a message. Send me a message. What do these eat? Uh, lettuce and dog food for the uh, Romalia. These should hatch out in three to eight months. Here's an X on the Romalia. What's the general care for the Romalia? Uh, you can't really see their enclosure, but 10-gallon tank, low-watt heat bulb on one side. Make sure they have a fresh head of romaine lettuce at all times. Give them a bowl of dog food. Spray them once a day lightly and put a new egg cup of sandy... Uh, well-draining soil in the corner of it for the adults to lay into and change that out every couple of weeks. Very easy. Um, just the only limiting thing is feeding them romaine lettuce. But if you live in a more temperate climate than Michigan, you can just go grab handfuls of weeds, of grass, of different trees uh, other than conifers, and just toss that in with them. They're not picky at all. All right, going once. Going twice. Soul to Smugger Smoogler. Thought I was going to have to pass there. With a winning bid of 40 on the Romalia Microptera Loxahatchee Florida Egg Cup. You will not regret this. These, This will be a fresh egg cup taken out of my captive colony. Okay, we're going to do a group of five. I got to double check the Latin. Five Belo Collis Angustapes starting bid of $30. Alan says, friendly reminder to keep the comments unrelated to the bid in general chat so it doesn't interfere with the bid. I think I'm letting it slide a little too much. I might start pe putting people in timeout or even ban. Alan will drop the ban hammer. Again, uh, also, uh, Alan, I really appreciate, um, I, I appreciate you dropping the hammer here. And uh, again, memes are allowed. We are allowed to post images. I do encourage that bit central. Conversation is discouraged, though. Um, these are the black pancake or black leather leaf slugs. Very easy. Feed them calcium and dog food, and that's all they need. Room temperature is fine. They like good ventilation as well. I've had these puppies going for since the last time I auctioned them up. Wow, are you watching the Twin Tower videos while on shrooms as an experience? I think my face would look a little more, a little more distorted in that context, just, just personally speaking. Uh, what do these eat? Somebody else asked this already. Mine just had babies, I think. Orang Mango, are you talking about the Belocollis or the Romalia? Um, can I use grape leaves as leaf litter for roaches? Yes, dead dry grape leaves should be fine. Fresh grape leaves should be fine for uh, very ravenous species of roaches. Turn on the light over here. We're losing light. For very ravenous species of roaches, hissers would probably like grape leaves, blabbers, etc. Um, that looks like a turd. Can any more slugs slash snails today, Kyle? Yes, 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 yes. All right. Here's an X going once on the Belocollis, the pancake, black pancake slash velvet slugs. Going twice. Sold to Jesus Freak with a winning bid of 70. Jesus Freak, congratulations. I was going to say on your first bid today, but it seems you won a, one other thing. Excel uh, Excel betrays me. All right, we have five. Uh, Frinus, Margin Maculatus, Lee County, Florida, these are long-term captive, wild-caught. I should type out long-term captive. Starting bid of $50, all from the same place. They've been eating in captivity uh, Compsodes schwartzi and uh, Carablata. I think I use Minima. I don't think it really matters if I use Minima or Lutea, but they've been eating one of the Carablata species both of which are very natural food items for them. 
Um, Lizard Bean says, good to know I have a – I feed Eastern lovers fresh grape leaves. Zen Monkey, yes. Uh, lovers love grape leaves too. Uh, we haven't done arachnids yet, right? We just started. We just started. We have some up for grabs right now. Frinus margin maculatus, uh, the easiest, probably the easiest of the, the uh, whip spiders just to keep. I actually, I had one from a uh, from a, a locality, and I after a couple of years, uh, I uh, too many crickets in the enclosure started breeding, and I think it was too dry. So I was down to one Frinus of this uh, margin maculatus of this one locality. So I was just like, ah, I kind of need this container for something. So I threw it in with my Blabrous Craniofer. That Frinus lives in my uh, Craniofer US UCR enclosure. And I think it's been there for a year and a half or maybe even two years. It's pretty nuts. It hasn't been eaten. Apparently, it's eating the Blabrous nymphs or something. So that's pretty cool. Here's an X for the Frinus Marge Maculatus. Thank you, Alan, for the picture. Burb, make sure you put a period at the end of your bid. Going once, going twice, sold to Dr. Hemroid with a winning bid of 100, beating out JoJo's winning bid of 100. Fascinating, folks. Fascinating stuff. Okay. Moving on. Sorry, JoJo. Info communal. Everybody's saying don't talk. Um, they are communal, though. All right. 10, Zealous, Longapese, Montgomery, Alabama. Starting bid of $30. These are communal. They can eat fruit flies their whole lives. You can toss them in a mesh cube. Give them a spraying once a day. Just make sure they have infinite fruit flies. And Zam, girl, we have 72 people in the live stream right now. This is blowing my mind, and I have a creeping, sneaking suspicion. It's only going to get crazier, and all of a sudden it dropped to 66. Please come back. Please give me subs. I need subs, everybody. Um, and, yes, Stephen Logan, you can keep the finest communally. Just keep them well fed. They are currently being kept communally as well. They just have – Infinite Carablata and Compsodes. No Horida, but there will be more Assassin Bugs. Like the Assassin Bugs we have up right now. This That isn't an Arachnid. It is a Misk, though. It does count as a Misk. Also, uh, please uh, please, please keep memes and bid central. Keep discussion, etc. in general. Thank you, Photo Gallery. All right. These are communal also. You can keep hundreds of them together. They just need a constant source of food. You can just pop a fruit fly culture in the bottom. You can put half of an apple in the bottom and dump a bunch of fruit flies in. They're able to catch really tiny prey because their forelegs are sticky. So if anything touches them, they just stick to it. And then the assassin bug just kind of takes it and sucks the fluids out of it. They're really cool. Uh, you've probably seen Russ from Aquarimax talk about these. I sent some to him a couple of weeks, months ago. Uh, all right. Here's an X for the Zealous Longipes from, uh, from Alabama. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Ectral with a winning bid of 40. There's also a very pretty uh, striped leg form of these that I had once, did well with, neglected, lost, and I'm now looking for again, and hopefully we'll get – actually, I think that's your first auction win. If it is, congratulations. Um, let's do a group of – hey, everybody, it's time. You waited two days for it. We're going to do a group of these, uh, these puppies over here. We have a group of seven – Extatosoma tiaratum, uh, lichen form. This is for a group of seven of the lichen form for sure. Starting bid of $40 of the lichen form of the tiaratum. Get stick bugged, LOL. We will have the get stick bugged. I think it's, I think that's a, 
I, I think the that one is uh, the get stick bug stick bug is the uh, Western Shorthorn. Look at me using common names. Parabacillus hesperus. I think that is a Parabacillus species in that uh, gif. Let's see. Coming on too strong, Kyle. You scared the viewers away. They are back, baby. Atrax robustus. I got to look that up, what Atrax robustus is from Alex. Hyperbeam says, I did witness two of my adult longipes feeding on a nymph. I think it may be preventable if they're very well fed. Uh, at, its, at its heyday before I split the culture, the longipes had about 200 nymphs in it, but I was feeding whole fruit fly emergences of culture every like three days to keep them uh, caught up and not eating each other. If you slow down on the feeding, they do start to cannibalize, but they won't as long as there's enough food. I've never bred velvet ants. I've kept them for varying periods of time. Wow, neglect results in loss, says the horned one. You sure they were striped, not celiopus? I got to look into that. Care for the ecstatosoma, and there's a lot of huge bids already. Uh, beautiful. Uh, ecstatosoma hate me, says Satchel. I hatched out like 30 of them, and they all died before getting to second in star. I tried multiple different steps. I don't know why I did it wrong. One thing I've been told by, uh, by larger stick breeders is try and throw them in with another species of stick bug or with older ecstatosoma because the chewing on leaves and stuff, the like freshly broken open leaves all the time encourages the hatchlings to start feeding. Kyle, can you show bug, the stick bug, please? Yes, I will, but not yet. We're going to wrap up these bids. Never kept stick bugs. Do they eat mulberry leaves? Many species do. We'll have some species that need ridiculously simple diets after this. Here's an X for the Ecstatosoma tiratum uh, lichen form. Actually, you guys see that right there? This, uh, this dude right here is molting right now. I guess you can kind of see it, but this little guy is in the middle of a molt. So they've been getting rows. And I'm curious if they'll eat honeysuckle because if they do, that makes my life a lot easier. 76 likes, 72 viewers. I love you all. It would be, it would be mind blowing. I would be obliterated out of my mind if we ended up with a hundred people here tonight. That would be great. Uh, Spotlight PZ says that's 100% correct about the um, mixing older sticks with younger ones. Uh, airflow also stimulates feeding. You ship them free in the box, or was I lied to? Uh, that depends. These may be shipped in a box within the box uh, to give them the most space and ability to crawl around, but I will have to decide. If we get 100 viewers, do Rhino Roach giveaway. Honestly, honestly, I would consider doing that. Um, I'm going to lock it in. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. If we get 100 concurrent viewers, and I'll screenshot it, viewers, I'll do a Rhino Roach giveaway. There you go. I'm going to pin that, too. I just have to wait for it to get bumped up in chat. No Horda tonight, Stephen. We do have other assassin bugs planned, though. Any substrates for sale tonight? Flake soil, sand, etc. Yes, but not just yet. For auction, I mean. I don't know where that was. Do they never kept? Do they eat? Uh, I, I'm not sure. We're not. We're not. We're not going to auction off. Uh, we're not auctioning off another pair of rhinos. We're doing a straight up giveaway. If we get to 100 concurrent viewers, not likes, 100 concurrent viewers. Uh, thank you, Exotic Wilderness, for being our hype man. Um, all right, going once. I don't even see where the last bids are. Going once on the Lake and Marth Ecstatostoma. I'm sorry for drawing out the bid. I got excited. Going twice, sold. Two lizard beans with a start with a winning bid of two hundred for the lichen morph Ecstatosoma tiratum. Ecstatosoma tiratum lichen. Uh, I don't even remember what the starting bid was. It's way back up there. Starting bid of $40. Definitely one of the uh, crowd favorite items tonight. There will be more. Again, we're into oddball bugs now. Anything could come out that's not a 
I like that picture. That's an exploitable image from Exotic Wilderness there. Um, shut up and take my money. That's funny. All right, let's do a group of – what species is that? Uh, let's hop around a bit. Let's do 20 Marava Arachidus starting bid of – $30. Alan, if you could remind me the locality, I'll slap it on here too. We're doing an earwig, everybody. Somebody was asking if we were going to do earwigs. We are doing earwigs. Marava arachidus, which is a member of the earwig family Spongiforidae. I love it. Hopefully some big peds. We have at least one big ped coming up. 75 right now. Went back down to 72. The only giveaway I need is a Blatella Germanica one. Um, Duke and Enzo, I was referring to my previous comment. I'm going to scroll up. If I can't find it, I, it's getting buried between other things. If you don't mind restating it, Duke and Enzo, I'll uh, read it over again. The giveaway should be for the first person to have the username, a person, me thinks, fingers flex in preparation for giveaway. We're at 75 viewers. I appreciate all the hype. Obviously, it's counterproductive for you to spread the word about the, uh, the stream because then your the chances of uh, getting the rhinos goes down with more people. But simultaneously, the only way you get an opportunity to win rhino roaches is if we hit 100 people, and thus you must perpetuate and promote the stream. Uh, size. Uh, I, don't, I don't, did Alan post the locality? Um, anyways, these are a beautiful earwig. The adult size is about... I think the biggest I've seen was 13 or 14 millimeters, so smaller than uh, Euborelia arcanum by a large margin. Davy, Florida is the locality. I'm going to go ahead and edit the bid and add that locality information. Davy, Florida, edited for locality information. Very colorful. I love young bugs. That's not a lie, um, especially if they've, they've just uh, matured. And you're getting ready to pair them up. I love those bugs. All right, here's an X for the Marava Arachidus, the earwig from Davy, Florida. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Slam that inner key. Two. I didn't li mean literally hit 100 people. Um, did you ever get labia minor? I never got labia minor. I never did, but I'm sure somebody will provide me with some eventually, so I'm just going to keep holding out. Uh, Dugan Enzo, no, 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 the comments aren't important. I was just worried about confusing you, which ended up confusing you further. Uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You should unironically do a spin a wheel where you had names and spin it. It's random who wins the giveaway if for some reason you can't think of any questions. I like that idea um, if it didn't take me forever to go through and pick names out of the chat. I'll find something, though. Winning bid of 55 to Dr. Hmroid for a colony of Marava Arachidus earwigs from Davy, Florida. I would say that we have um, – I wish I had Polkella ready, Marava Polkella, but unfortunately they are not ready for auction yet. I just got them like a month ago or something or maybe even less than that. Um what about names of people who have won bids? Oh, that, 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 again, that involves me having to scroll up and compile a list. I eat newborn babies, 2024 edition. Have I said that yet? At this point, I'm willing to believe anything you, uh, you, you put an image with text in my face on it. Um, who's this? Who's this fella here? All right. We have a group of 15 Anisomorpha Buprostoides. Ocala, Florida, captive bred, starting bid of $40. These are, uh, oh my gosh, that's funny. These are captive bred, and they're feeding on honeysuckle, privet, and basil. Basil from Walmart. You just go get a whole basil plant from Walmart or Meyer or whatever your big box store is. They sell them right now to all the yuppies who want fresh produce but don't want to grow it themselves. You go get one of those, you slap it in the tank, and you watch as it gets destroyed over the course of two to four weeks. Are they white? Are they white? Uh, yes, these are these are the ones with the uh, the skelly sticks. Photo gallery, that's a that's an okay picture. 
somewhere there's that infamous picture of the Ocala Anisomorpha. This is the best locality. I've worked with a couple of them. This is the best colored locality of Anisomorpha buprestoides for the skeleton coloration. Um, there's this uh, image on the Fl University Entomological Department of Florida page um, that showed the Ocala National Forest fl form. Um, we're going to just we're going to copy paste that link right here. This is exactly what the adults of this locality look like without variation. I love uh, what's the name of this effing angel boss? What's wrong? I need more pictures. Look at this real cutie. I appreciate that meme. I'm going to like that. Can I pin it? I get in infinite pins if I get Discord Nitro, right? Maybe I should invest in that in the near future. We have 78 people in the live stream. Didn't realize you had them. I'm going to need to get some from uh, Will you have more later? Well, I need to be. Uh, Satchel, there will be no more up for bids, but there will be more up for grabs. Uh, not, we're not, there not be any more groups bid on. But for you, my friend, let me know. I can obviously spare some. Have you tried basil with the ecstatosoma? No, I haven't. I'm kind of afraid if they're of them like utterly destroying it and then me being like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to probably have to do this this way now. All right, here's the X for the Anisomorpha uh, from Ocala, Florida. The best skeleton stick strain, captive bred, already feeding on privet honeysuckle and basil basil you can get it in the dead of winter going once going twice sold skadoosh to obey the snarf with a winning bid of 60 congrats obey the snarf i feel like you got a really good deal on these guys all right Let's hop tax again. We're going to do a group of a first-time captive offering. Maybe the first time these have ever been captive bred. I don't know. I won't go be that bold to make this claim. Uh, Citeno Lepisma ciliata. Starting bid of $30. Ecstatosome on basil soup recipe, but first the first 10 years of my childhood. I, I really get that. I was looking for... I just got a sample of sourdough starter in the mail, and I was trying to figure out how to cook sourdough, just like basics, like what temperature in the oven. You go to all these cooking sites, you have to wade through a pile of ads, and then before you can even get to the recipe, you see all this stuff about like, back when I was living in college, and I didn't know anything about nothing, and I was, you know, I was trying this out, and I found a sourdough culture in my, my roommate's sock, and then it tasted awful, but I learned something that day. Shut up and teach me how to make sourdough, <laughs> please. It can't be that difficult. People were doing it in mud huts 2,000 years ago. I just want to know how to make sourdough. Oh, okay. Rant over. Thank you for reminding me again that I need to return to my Tamema spot. Also, yeah, a person, what is the, uh, it is your guys. What is the locality, Walnut Creek, California? Thank you for adding that additional information. But yes. The key to raising many different silver fish is sky high air humidity. It has to be like 90 plus percent air humidity and um, dry enclosure, except for like just a corner or something. They will drown if there's too much condensation, or they will all rot if there's too much condensation. So you need to keep them high air humidity. Um, Dry enclosure except for like a corner or just the backside forming condensation and hot. Most of them over 80 degrees minimum to get consistent breeding. Um, the recipe thing is due to copyright stuff. I, I thanks Tall's Reptiles. I just want on my I, I, I just need to know like put the put the sourdough dough in the oven for two, uh, 250 degrees for four hours and bam bread. That's all I wanted to know. Satchel says, I may start deleting memes. They're really clogging up the bids. I'm okay with it. You know, yeah, I'll let you, Satchel and Alan and whoever else I said as a moderator or whatever, I'll let you interpret at your discretion. Again, don't want to stress you guys up. You can do what you want to. I ain't the boss of you. Well, if we don't get to 100 views, do you give away roach that is just German roaches? Yeah, I guess that's. <laughs> 
German Roach giveaway if we don't get to 100 viewers. Rhino Roach giveaway if we do get to 100 viewers. That's hilarious. I like that. That's the punishment. I'll do that. I will do that. Here's an X for the Tenolipisma ciliatum from Walnut Creek, California. Can I write those down here? Tenolipisma ciliata. Um, they also seem to like sand. I don't know if that's important, but I definitely find the babies on the bottom instead of on the harbor ridge more than any of the other species of Tenolipisma that I work with. Fire breasts, and that's a thing from uh, from Minecraft. Uh, me, I want Serge Tanky Tanky. I have Serge Tankyati at home. Serge Tanky Tankian at home. Hilarious. I'll take that. I'll take that meme. All right, Tenolipisma ciliata going once. Captain Bread going twice. Sold. Bam. To bitter blood with a winning bid of 33. Bitter blood, your first win of the auction so far. I think I hear my sweetheart. Thank you, dear. Where things are getting intense. We're trying to get to, we're at 78 viewers. I'm trying to get to 100. And if we do, I'm going to give away a pair of rhino roaches. If we don't get to 100, I'm going to forcibly give away German roaches to somebody that's the pest species. How will you choose the person? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask you how I should do that. Okay. Maybe I'll ask Angela what we should do for the trivia or the giveaway of the rhino roaches once we hit 100 people. I'll think about it. Thank you, Angela. Love you. Love you, too. <laughs> She's a peach. Uh, should be pesticide resistant German roaches. Yep, we'll do the V5-101s. Put them in a random package so they can't escape them. Good job moderating Discord. Thank you. William Yadeski says, good job moderating the Discord. Tank the tortoise 56. You all take the German roaches. We're not, we're, the night's not over yet. The night is still young. Um, uh, let's do a group of 30. Oligo, Toma, Nigra, Bilas, Arizona, starting bid of $40. I don't. I think these have skipped out on a couple of uh, auctions. I had these at one of them, and then the colony tanked a little bit, and then I I pull them out, and they're doing better than they've ever been before. Uh, these are the black web spinners. Web spinners, everybody. You don't see that every day at a bug auction. Web spinners. Uh, Kai and I had a bet that uh, I bet that people wouldn't know what a web spinner is at the local expo. And Kai was like, oh, you learned that easy in China. Like, that's the first bug everybody learns. And then he watched as all the people at the expo were like, oh, it's an earwig. Oh, it's a it's a cockroach. Oh, it looks like a like an ant. And Kai was just like face palming internally the whole time. Finally, an entomologist person guessed it. And I can't remember what I what their prize was. Um, could you use – what does it care like for the web spinners? Um, you can use a fawnarium, sand, coconut fiber, whatever, some detritus on top, some dry rotted leaves, some dry twigs, dry mulch, whatever. Keep like the back third moist, let the rest dry out. Put some pieces of bark in there. Um, you can put the food – when you're starting the colony, put the food in the drier places. They'll build their web tunnels up to it, and they'll eat it that way. And then as the colony starts to grow in numbers, you can start putting the food kind of wherever you want to. I still do it in a pile because I like seeing them form more and more webs around it. <clears throat> Any jumping spiders? Yes. We will, uh, we will have some jumping spiders. Altered Pants still has the last, uh, another set of web spinners from one of the other auctions. Elsie asking if you could use fig leaves or blueberry leaves. Like, use them for what? For uh, stick bugs? I have watched people ask, like, oh, is this a lizard? Can I keep it with a hamster? And the people running the booth look like they want to kill someone. That's funny, Loki. Are these the ones found under rocks and such with web tunnels? I always thought those were spiders. Yes, these are These are they. Uh, Alan, Alan and I really want there's a native species in Texas that I think that might be one of the things that Alan goes questing for. If we uh, if we fund his adventure, he'll probably go get some of those red web spinners, which I really want. I think they're really I think web spinners are really cool. They have the silk glands are on. I think mostly on their front legs. They've got like these pads and they like 
they kind of wax on, wax off with the pads to like spread the silk around and stuff. Alan knows a spot for them. Uh, Jose Nunez, I was so psyched when I found a web spinner on my pillow of all places. Never found more. Kyle, tell me the species you want. I have so many species of earwigs around. So many species of earwigs. Labia minor. It's a little tiny earwig. Uh, apparently might be more common in Texas, I guess. I've only found them once in Michigan, and I cultured them, and then I screwed them up, and now I'm like, I ain't doing that again. The last thing Livonia, Michigan babies see, hilarious. Here is an X for the Oligotoma nigra from Bilis, Arizona. Going once, captive bred since 2021. Going twice, sold. Shazam. To Jesus Freak, snipe of $41. It's semi last second. Jesus Freak, I feel like this is uh, this is definitely something that you you like, you would like. All right. Um, n not, not related to the auction, but uh, can somebody find me the name of that family of springtails? That, or family of springtails. Family of rove beetles. That's a springtail eating specialist. I can't remember what, it, what it's called. Um, do you have Hapolanda solirii? In culture, let me look those up. No, I don't. I want those. Please get those for me, please. I would really, 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 really like those. If you could get them, I would be very appreciative of the Hapo, Haploembia solieri. I would love that. Um, uh, Staphylinidae. No, is that is that the is that the family of uh, Staphylinids? The, there's that one family, or, or sorry, subfamily, that is a specialist. The one lower taxon of uh, robe beetles that is a specialist of springtails. Mm -hmm. Do you believe you might have a hot spot in Austin, according to INAT? Start finding them. Uh, anyways, we'll we'll do something else while we're buying for some time. We have five Mastigo, Mastigo Proctus Giganteus starting bid of $50. I'm going to edit for the locality. These are from East. These are from El Paso, Texas. Starting bid of 50 Why did I write those on here? Those are definitely not supposed to be here. Oh, well. Um, Stenus? Is Stenus the genus? Uh, dude, Enzo, the Iggies. I'm sorry to say my visit to Mount Scott in Oklahoma showed only that Nazano and Volgari had completely dominated the area. Um, these are wild caught. Thank you, Satchel. I will add that to this wild caught edited for locality and wild caught status. Thank you for clarifying or invite me to clarify. Satchel. Uh, will there be sewer fairies? Yes, they're in the grain pest section, though, even though they're not really grain pests. Um, Stenus is a genus of semi-aquatic road beetles. Uh, maybe they aren't Stenus. Wasn't there a family? Steneny, maybe? I don't think these are they. So I want to put up a group of Staphylinids. They're in a tank, and they're breeding, and the only other thing in the tank that is of size for them to eat is small silver springtails. They've been breeding for months. The only thing in the substrate breeding is small silver springtails. I suppose they could be eating, they could have been eating fungus gnats, but they're not the CF Delodia coriaria, that is for sure. So I kind of want to put up a group of them um, and, and see if anybody wants them, but I'm unsure. We're at 79 people. We are just flirting with uh, bumping up. I feel like once we hit 90, every time we go up 10 people, we kind of get stuck there and it fluctuates. We just have to get over the hump. we got to please the Al gore -ism. All right, going once on the Mastiga Proctus, Giganteus, El Paso, Texas. Going twice... Sold. 
Shazam. To Burb with a winning bid of 105. Mustego Proctus Gigantius El Paso 5. Da da. Winning bid of 105. I like the Burb review. 9 out of 10. He vibing. Burb, your first win at the auction. Congrats. All right. Um, are these adults by chance? Uh, email me about that. Okay, let's do a plant. Let's mix it up a little bit. Let's do uh, one six-inch cutting hydrocotyl ranunculoides. Starting bid of, let's just do $2. we got to mix it up. This is a great emergent plant. Um, I think I can't ship these to Wisconsin. So uh, if you're in Wisconsin, I guess you can't bid. Um, the algorithm, yeah. Can we do a poll, Kyle? We need some hype while we clam down on memes for a while. Are you interested in row beetles in general? Not really. These just showed up on their own. Bri asks, are any of the centipedes going to be bigger ones or just small ones? I'm not sure yet. Uh, you say you were doing D. Coriaria. Um, they're, they've been sent off for ID, but I don't know. They, they, they seem to fit the bill for Delodia Coriaria morphologically, behaviorally, but it's not confirmed. So I sent some off for ID, and now we are going to wait. Let's uh, coolest... Offbeat bug taxon. Snake flies, web spinners, or forcep flies. They would really love to just add flies onto all the like, oh, it flies. We don't know what sort of bug it is. We'll just call it a something flies. We'll throw that up there. I need to look up why not in Wisconsin now because it is, I think it's listed as an aquatic invasive species there, even though it occurs in nat naturally in the state below it. Um, ben Gruber has been actually hoping to find some of those spring beetle hunting rogue beetles. Giveaway soon or only at 100 viewers. Uh, we'll do, we'll stop and do a giveaway when we get to 100 viewers, but we'll probably do another giveaway before that as well. Did Bumblebee or whatever you know them as send you snake flies yet? Not yet. Not yet. Um, springtail hunting mantid flies? 78 viewers, 76. We are flirting with uh, going to the next level here. There are a lot of bids on this hydrocotyl. It also doesn't require winter dormancy. This is from further south in its range, and I have never given it a dormancy. It's been two two years now and it's been fine indoors it's also edible that's nifty i use it i grow it in my uh limnia colony my pond snail colony and uh it's great they climb up and all over it and uh it will also be snail free i'll make sure it does not have any snails on it as well here's an x for the hydrocotyl ranunculoides uh yep Wisconsin DNR listed as prohibited in all counties. That's interesting and good to know. Again, weird because it occurs in the it occurs in Illinois or Indiana natively. So I don't know. There are many cool invasives out there, but thanks to people, no one can have nice things. If something, if a plant is found, especially in a limnal ecosystem close to one place it's very likely it can reach other places close to there so native to indiana yes you can find this species there going once on the hydrocotyl ranunculoides going twice soul shazam to ww with a winning bid of 20. WW, your first auction win, I think. It didn't auto pull you up on uh, on Excel. So, okay, let's do something nifty. Somebody wanted some orthopterans. First time offering, and I have a funny story about these. 
Myogrylis Sauceri, Cape Coral, Florida. Starting bid $30, Kyle Butter. Uh, uh, uh. So if you look up Myogrylis, there is I don't I don't know who this is or why they spoke with such authority on this, but there's a uh, there's a um, there's some entomology page. If you look up the species, they give some information about them, and on that page they go out of their way to say this species does not do well in captivity, and I'm like. Why? What? Have, what? This is all you have to. You don't say anything about like trying to raise them or anything. It just says the species did not do well in captivity. And here I have an F two doing just fine in a large size faunarium, and I've got dozens of them in there. An F two also. Um, any cool millipedes coming up? I'm not sure, but we are past the millipede day. Was Friday mostly. What are dry goods? Do they make good feeders? They breed so much slower than Gryllus. This is definitely more of a enjoy them as, as their own thing. But at the same time, because they grow more slowly than Gryllus, that means they don't burn out as fast as Gryllus cultures can do. So maybe better as, as, a, as a longer term feeder if you don't want to worry about your colony crashing, maybe. Why is the word Gryllus banned in Discord? I don't is it's banned? Did it get did it get blanked out? I don't see it. Is it is it being censored? I don't know why. It's not a Gryllus. I see the word Gryllus. Apple's posted Gryllus. It says Gryllus. Um. Anyways, let me see if I can find that uh, that thing. Myo Gryllus. I'm gonna find that page, so I can so I can mock them. Uh, Orthopterus Society. Uh, blah, 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 bunch of synonyms, uh, uh, Maryland biodiversity product, UF entomology and blah, 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 songs of insects. This might be it. Songs of insects.com. Um, here we go. I found it, everybody. We're going to publicly shame this website and suddenly boost their site traffic. This website, songs of insects.com says in the first paragraph this species is highly variable and poorly studied and in the same sentence says and does not do well in captivity oh also nifty you can hear the song there it's actually pretty nice it's not a very grating thing it's just a little chirp every couple of like every second a person says i've seen this page that feel when you misspell guileless and somehow get is that is that is that a slur? Am I gonna get no it's cost no grindless isn't I don't I don't know what, what word you could prop possibly contort that into. Maybe I need to be educated. Um, but yes, people have seen the page. There you go. It says they don't do well in captivity. I have good evidence to the contrary of that. F2, baby, not just an F1, F2 in four months, actually. So, again, not explosive growth and reproduction like Gryllus, but good enough. All right, going once on the Mayo Gryllus South Sarai from Cape Coral, Florida. Going twice. Sold. Shazam. To Inver Terrarium, winning bid of $30. $40, sorry. My bad, my bad. Winning bid of 40 bones. Okay. Let's do a group of people like Gryllus. We'll give you Gryllus. 25 Gryllus species. Marina, California. Starting bid of $20. Super easy. Super fast. All right. Gryllus species from Marina, California. Another one of the just... Regular black field crickets. These have been doing super duper well for me since last spring, I think. Gryllus murina papaya. That's hilarious. The memeage continues. So if you want a, a Gryllus to breed easily in captivity, go ahead. Bear grills. 
Uh, someone linked it after another person asked if they were breedable. Ah, that's why. We are at 83 people, everybody. We got to get up to the uh, – we, we got to get – we got to cross that boundary to 90, and I think we'll retain it. Tell tell your friends, tell your wife, and t- was it t- tell your kids, tell your wife, and tell your husband because we're giving away all the bugs up in here. Uh, oh, my God. I just got back and saw web spinners in Bid Center. What's the care on them? They're literally my favorite bug. I'm so sad I missed them. Lord Orion, we may do another web spinner bid just for you. Will there be any more web spinners? Cubaris, million dollars. All right. Here's an X for the Gryla species, Marina, California. I'm going to take a big ship. Ah, delicious. Okay, going once on the Gryla's Mar- Marina, California. Going twice. Sold. Boom. Two. It's either Loki or Schlieve McDyckel. Let's see which person it is. And it is Sleeve with a winning bid of 23 Joneses. Sleeve getting in there, sliding in those DMs at the last second. Okay, what's another cool thing we can do? Let's do a group of five Neo Helix Albo Labris Riceville, Tennessee. Starting bid $30. Don't worry, Mew. Their shells are doing really well since. I added more calcium. All right. Neohelix al- albolabris, one of the largest North American terrestrial snails. Any more ass bugs or tailless whips? We should have some more ass ass bugs, ass ass in bugs. Someone must be making alt accounts on multiple different devices. I hope so. I hope somebody cares that much. I don't know who SNH is, but welcome. I see a little cockroach emoji. Uh, Richard Mueller. 84. We're getting so close. We're back down to 79. I'm going to tell my parents. I'm going to tell my parents, please view the, please view the stream. Um, let's see. Hey, mom and dad, can you tune into the auction stream tonight? We are trying to reach 100 viewers at the same time. Time exclamation point. All right, let's log in. We gotta get those devices. All your devices should be on Roach Crossing. All of them should be on me, Roach Crossing today. That's not uh, suggestive at all. Appreciate the note. Yes, Mew. Again, I'm glad that you Mew talked some uh, some sense into me. Gave me some good tips for general snail care, and the shells on these have fully recovered. Might not be Albolabris or Neohelix. Uh, uh, Apples, if you'd like to tell me more about that, should I switch it to a CF? Do you have good evidence to suggest it's neither of those things? If so, let me know and I will edit that. Uh, more arachnids, please. Bonnie D wants more arachnids. We want more arachnids. Um, I'd make my fiance watch if he wasn't asleep. Just go steal his phone. And open up the Roach Crossing live stream, and there you go. 88 people with 80 likes. The largest Roach Crossing stream to date. We can make it happen. The night is still young, and somebody's going to win some roaches. I got to ask Angela what she thinks what we should do for the uh, – What? Who, how should we decide to give – I'll ask Angela for a good – Trivia question. I'll go ask her. We're going to put all the pressure on her. Take it off of me. Angela. Sweetie.
I put all the pressure on Angela, everybody. Angela's got to figure it out, uh, what we're going to do. 93 people! What? All right, we're going to wrap up this here. Wrap up the possibly not new. We're posting it here in case Kyle doesn't remember context. Mew has suspicions they're actually Mazodon. All right, I'm going to put a CF here and note that Mew suspects that they're Mazodon. CF, um, CF Neo Helix Abolabris with more notes edited. Mew thinks may be Mazodon. All right, we have that notes. However, all I can tell you is they are detritivores. They do very well in a human environment. They appreciate calcium supplementation. They eat dog food and they eat apples. So that's what I can tell you. All right, going once on the Bryceville, Tennessee, Detritivore Snails. Captive bred. Going twice. Sold. Two could be Patrick, could be Love with Scales. We're at 93 people. Let's go. 95, it says 95. Which one of you posted this somewhere? Who did this? Who responsible this? Uh, we got to check the actual auction. Patrick with a winning bid of $41 for the Bryceville Snails. How many was it? Four or five? Four or five? It was four or five. Five with a winning bid of 43 No, it's Patrick. Um, I shared it a couple times too. This, we could do it. I just posted my Arizona Facebook group. Hopefully some people jump on. You guys are wonderful. All you roach wigglers and beyond, you are wonderful. Let's keep up the hype and do something else hype. Let's do one. Scolopendra Galapa Go Ensis. Orange question mark sold to me as orange, but was never confirmed. Starting bid of one dollar. The approximate length right now is about 90 millimeters, approximately. Here you are. We have a well, we'll double Z will still count that bid, but you've already been outbidded for this little thing. I've had this for like a year. I have a huge female, and this this thing is not gonna get. This thing is not gonna be big enough for that female in a reasonable amount of time. So, alas, somebody else who's going to take extra special care of this little dude. You are welcome to him or her, unsexed as well. Ninety-four people. Now I gotta start thinking of some sort of uh, some sort of trivia. Um, 96. It says 94 on mine. If somebody can screen cap the 100 if we hit that. Oh, my God. It's going to happen. We're going to do a Rhino Roach giveaway, everybody. It looks like it. But i got to figure out the right question. We're getting so close. What's a good question for such a momentous occasion? Such a – and it's got to be very concrete. It can't be something we're like, okay, we can misinterpret this one way or another. It's got to be something very – there is one answer to this question. Horn one says it says 100. I see 99. We just need one more. I'm waiting for it. It's If you can screen cap it, post it somewhere. 100 watching now. I got, I'm at the mercy of, of the crowd here. We're going to do the giveaway. We're going to do it. We got screen caps. People have, have uh, are showing that it's got 100 concurrent. 100 watching now. I am speechless. I, I got to get a screen cap for me when it hits it on my screen. I've taken pictures of thrips of plants. Okay, we're doing it. People have evidence. I really hope it changes to 100 on my screen. But now I have to come up with the giveaway question. What is the giveaway question going to be? And congratulations, Kyle. You deserve it. Thank you, everybody. We're doing it. I'm going to say thank you, everyone. We will do the Rhino Roach giveaway as soon as I figure out figure out a good question 
Thank you, Exotic Wilderness, for the uh, for the wonderful way to get the engine going on the hype train, the most hype we have had here in the Roach Crossing Bugapalooza, short of all those incredible bid wars with the uh, crazy last minute with uh, Dr. Humroid, Beetle Pixel, Chris Sniper, Lizard Beans, some other people thrown in there. 105. 105! I got a good screen cap, everybody. We have proof now. We have proof. We have not only hit 100, we have gone over 100 people in the Roach Crossing live stream. You are all part of Roach Talking history. There are so many people here. It is hard for me to even focus on the chat. I'm sorry for that, but there's so much hype. We can't stop it. And now I have to sit here and think about what is the giveaway question going to be? I'm going to ask you guys, do we want trivia or something about Kyle, I guess? Something about Kyle, something personal. So we're going to ask. For the giveaway question, do you want trivia or a personal question about Kyle? So I may ask you, what's my favorite food? What's the this? What do you guys think will be more fair for this? I'm going to leave it up to you guys. We'll go with the masses. We are at 102 people still. Hype. There is more craziness going on over the Scolopendra Galapagoensis. Here's an X. We're going to wrap up bidding on the Scolopendra Galapagoensis orange right now. How long can my body keep up this hype? Who knows, but we're going to find out. Going once. Going twice. Sold to... It's either Stella Springtails or Beak Season SS Jaws with a crazy $1,000 bid that is way too late. Trivia, trivia, trivia. People are asking for trivia. I'm going to put up some ideas for trivia topics. And we have the winner of Stella's Springtails with a winning bid of one. No, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Edit. Edit. Thylacine. Thylacine. With a winning bid of, I can't even keep my eyes straight here. 135. I'm in the screen cap. Here we go. So you all can see this piece of history as well. Thylacine. My apologies. Thylacine wins with a winning bid of whatever set up there. 135. <clears throat> there are no breaks on this hype train. Thank you all for watching. I got to keep you all here. Kyle, check the bid. Thank you for saying that. Um, all right. It seems people want, with 52 votes, that's pretty substantial, want trivia. I'm going to put up trivia topics now. Start a poll. What trivia topic do you want the giveaway to be about? Insects. Plants, anime slash video games, we're going to lump them, or what's another good trivia? Uh, we'll do, uh, we'll do specifically, uh, insects covers some bases. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do, we'll throw a bone, we'll throw reptiles out there. All right, Entog Nats. No SS Jaws. SS Jaws was, was late to the party, and that's good for SS Jaws because uh, somebody could have interpreted that as a as a uh, as a as a winning a realistic winning bid in this scenario. Guessing genus of a find on one of your trips. I don't know crap about reptiles. Again, vote vote for what you want. The we rule by the masses here. So happy says SS Jaws to have dodged that. Uh, let's do something else cool. Let's do a group of seven Ecstatosoma Tiratum, just regular. May include some lichen morphs, maybe not. Starting bid of $30. We'll fetch one of these guys to play with while we deliberate on what the giveaway trivias 
going to be about. It would be so nice if these ended up eating if these ended up eating honeysuckle, I would be so happy. You don't know how much of a happy camper that would make me if these actually there are a lot of snake people here. There are a lot of snake people here. I'm almost tempted to call up Kim and be like because kim kim knows a lot more eclectic knowledge about like snake localities and stuff like that tempted to call him up although he might be sleeping a person i'm bullying you specifically voting reptiles is bullying we're not a reptile chat i'm not a reptile person help i've i've lost my way home and i can't get back i ended up in the snake crossing live stream instead Thankfully, I like both reptiles and insectins, says Glow Spot Roach. Do one about Michigan herps. Ooh, that's a very finite category, too. Kyle, run the snakes on the wait list again now. No locality stuff. I'm a lizard person, says Luch. Luch, you have made that quite clear. Sexual culture, parthenogenetic? That's a good question. I'm pretty sure these produce both males and females. U.S. native herbs. Frantically opens INET, says a person. Roach for a roach, says William Yadeski. Hmm. Chameleons made me a, a made me us a, a insect people. Chameleon, says Mary Jane. Circus says, please call Russ. Does Russ know a lot of, of herb trivia? There is more reptiles than just snakes. That's that's also very true. Um all right, I've never had this much pressure put on me before, but uh, especially to pick something. The, the crowd has spoken. They want reptiles for the giveaway topic. Frilled dragons are goat. Russ knows everything. Do Sicilian trivia. Pressure intensifies. It really does. What's some good reptile... I need to double check this, but I have a good one. And I'm going to have to try and do it with this ecstatosoma on my hand. Um, I think I got a good one. I think this is a good one. Uh geez, I really need I not I gotta confirm this though. Um oh, man. I I got a good one, guys. I got a good one and I'm trying to confirm it. I don't want somebody to be like, um actually this is a paper from three years ago and it shows that this other thing is actually the thing that you're talking about. So we don't want that happening. We got to be, again, this has to be clear cut and decisive as of the current moment. And we're, we're going to, we're going to do this. Can I, can I do this? We'll, 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 can I cross reference this on? I know the answer to this question I'm about to ask as of, well, do the worm lizard a walk a knock off slit snake, um, Come on, this is this is we gotta we gotta where's the map? Having this stick bug does not make this any easier, I assure you. I'm gonna put the stick bug somewhere. Mr. Ecstat Mr. And Mrs. Ecstatosoma, you go, you have a good time here. I gotta look up the answer to this because I don't want to disappoint anybody. We need to be definitive. Hmm. Definitive. Let's see. Come on, Inet. Don't fail me now. All right. All right. All right. I think I got it. This is this is uh this this is looking pretty good, guys. This is looking pretty good. I think I got a good one here. Again, the topic is reptiles. And I think I've got our clear 
cut, clear cut question. I feel, I feel pretty confident about this question that we are about to get to. I'm sorry I'm missing out on the chat, but I've had to focus on this because, again, I want the winner of this to feel confident, and I want to be confident in um, in awarding rewarding the person for knowing this fact. And I'm double, triple, quadruple checking it right now. Again, I, I'm feeling pretty good about this. We got going on here. Oh, this is another, this has been a good, uh, oh, more trivia questions. All right. Zoom in, double confirm. We got to be sure about this. There's a lot on the line. We got a lot of pressure for this to be a good question. And you know what? I think I feel pretty good. And if I, uh, I can always go uh, back to INAT. This should be among her people. This might be a pretty well. Are we answering on YouTube or Discord? YouTube. You must respond on YouTube and I should note, I'm going to note right here. Hey, everyone. We are about to do the Rhino Roach giveaway with so many people. There may appear to be several first guessers. I will screenshot and post to discord and the first person there the first person the first shown wins all right we got that right there again i want to i want to make it clear to everybody that if it shows on your screen <clears throat> i understand youtube's just wonky like that but this is how we got to do it so i will screen cap the live stream and whoever has the first correct answer <clears throat> underneath the question will and refresh the stream, everybody. So you have a, so that it's up to date. Refresh the stream. The stream. Um, the very first person who's shown underneath the correct answer will be the winner of the giveaway. So fifty people may have something different show, but we're going with what my screen cap shows for the winner that way we don't have any questioning any debate whatever my screen cap shows is the winner here we go i just noticed uh, alan said refresh the stream just in case and the viewership just dropped for a second it's pretty funny um we are asking for um giveaway for a pair of 2024 rhino roaches the question is give what is the latin name proper capitalization full latin name etc proper capitalization capitalize the genus the first letter in the genus and nothing else proper spacing what is the full latin name including subspecies, etc., of what is the Latin name including, uh, what is the Latin name, proper capitalization, full Latin name, including subspecies, etc., of, here we go, everybody, the northest ranging snake in North America. There is only one correct answer for this question. Make sure you dot your I's, cross your T's, and flick or whatever your cues. Nope, nobody's gotten it yet. Nobody's gotten it yet. And there is official data on INAT for this as well.
there is a again there is official there is province level protection for these uh at their northernmost occurrence people have gotten close and we have a winner from Satchel Watts Kerr, the official. They have official protection in Canada's northernmost provinces for Thamnophis sertalis parietalis is the correct answer. You can cross-reference this with iNaturalist, the iNaturalist as well. This has been a long, this has been a longly known fact also that they occasionally can be found even into Alaska, this particular subspecies, very occasionally. I accidentally Google search instead of copying, my heart beating too fast just to lose. Satchel, wait, is the subspecies in there valid? Yes, parietalis is a valid subspecies currently. Satchel, you didn't have to put the SSP parietalis, but you went the extra mile, and that is still appropriate denotation. Satchel Watts Kerr, you have won. No, no, I mean the subspecies I typed. Uh, Picaringii is, let's see, which one did you type, Alex? I can't even see. It's all the way up there. Picaringii is also still valid at the second. Also, give some props to this ecstatosoma that's just hanging out here. Everybody, thank you for participating. Kyle need me to know Latin is a hate crime against me. You answered my question. Thank you, everybody. Somebody had Sertalis, Sertalis. Somebody had just Thamnophis, Sertalis. You were very, very, very close. I think I said it first. Now, remember, double Z, parietalis. Oh. Oh. Double Z did say it first. It got bumped up beyond satchels. Okay. Well, I have a solution for this because I don't I don't want to, to damage the hype for our, our two people here. Um I guess you'll both have to get a pair. Uh a pair of them for being the, the first two people by a wide margin. So Porque no las dos, everybody. Winners. Because I screwed up Satchel. I want to deflate your bubble. Um, because you did it, you did also put the subspecies. Um, winners are I gotta scroll gotta scroll all the way up to uh double Z. Double Z and Satchel Watts Kerr because I'm a goof. Congratulations to our dual winners, because apparently I'm blind and chat flew up way too fast. So uh, there we go. We got, why, why not both? Congratulations to the first two people. Um, again, if, if I had not hiked up Satchel uh, so abruptly, I would not uh, I would not extend this, but I did, and I don't want to be a party pooper because this is a momentous occasion. Why would I rain on my own parade today? So Double Z and Satchel Watts Kerr are both receiving pairs of Macropanestia rhinoceros 2024 for the giveaway for the first 100 concurrent viewers in a roach crossing. Gen, not general auction bugapalooza any auction stream whatsoever live stream double z congratulations thank you everybody for playing isn't that the second time satchel has co-won a giveaway this year he won masola with vaginulus and i won yeah satchel you uh you have a talent for tying people in these situations my roommate just sent me a pic of a gathering of hundreds of native roaches on a wall outside i'm stuck between going to find them what, what native roaches you may have to go see. Let's go, winners. That's my boy. It's okay. We can get them next time, which is never. Hey, maybe we'll do something at the roach crossing after dark. We still have to get to 1K subs. That's another thing we got to do. Uh, with that being said, uh, somebody just reminded me we have an active bid, and I also just realized I have an active ecstatosoma on my chest. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up the bids. A lot of people saying Diadophus punctatus. I'm going to look into that and see how forth, how uh, far north those uh, extend to. But if you check out INAT, there is provincial uh, protection and information on a very far north ranging population of parietalis. And again, old literature does state parietalis is the farthest north 
ranging snake in North America. Whew! I can see the viewers are just sort of trickling down a bit, but you know what? Even if even if the giveaway is over, we still got the rest of the night, and we still have other giveaways to go through too. Just not as uh, just not as uh, as intense as a rhino roach giveaway. But we did it. You guys have flooded the algorithm too. I'm sure all this hype has brought a lot of attention. I'm going to check my subs. I'm going to check my subs. I don't think I got two. No, we didn't. We got, no, we didn't get any new subs. That's okay. We're good though. We got views. That's all we needed. Congrats on the winners. Grain Pass giveaway. We will do a Grain Pass giveaway. That is for sure. Any dry goods before I got to go to bed? Dry goods, yes. I don't know if it'll be before you go to bed though. Roach Crossing, do they have males and females? Um, I believe males do pop up in this stock. Yes. Here's an X for the Ecstatosoma situation. This might actually. Are you a boy? May actually be a subadult male. A little big, though. All right. Going once for the Ecstatosoma. Going twice. Sold. Two. Daddy looks at his subs. Oh, God. Um, current bid to WW with a winning bid of, thank you, Alan, for bumping it, 81. I got to type Ecstatosoma all over again and get rid of the lichen at the end of it. This is, this is 81. Thank you, Alan, for linking that. Otherwise, I would lose it. WW, another win for WW. Hopefully not the www.com bubble that happened. Look at all those new messages. Uh, Thamnophis Tertalis is the only snake binomial I know. Spood giveaway, maybe. I'm not sure. Sub people, please sub. Please like whatever. You just got nine more subs. Oh, did, does it say that somewhere? Hopefully. Uh, oh, yeah, we got a couple new subs. Thank you, everybody. Please sub. Uh, live streams once a week, um, and then I, I I have these sessions where I torture myself for three days straight, twice a year, and occasionally a little bit of torturing in between the torture sessions, you know? Nine. Nine new subs. Thank you guys so much. It means the world to me. I don't even care about monetization necessarily. I just like I like the metrics. In a thousand, as the fruit fly calls on my nose, in a thousand subs would just be Beyond anything I could have imagined several years ago. Okay, let's do another stick bog. Let's do 20 ova of Mega Phasma dent Dentricus Cedar Eater. Starting bid of $30. This is the cedar eating strain of Mega Phasma. One of the easiest stick bugs to keep if you are at a high latitude and stuff is not reliably evergreen i love these guys so much and you will too they lay a bunch of eggs they're very dry tolerant they i keep them in one of these mesh cages you've probably seen it in the background a couple of times uh bro the stick bug is still vibing yeah that's what they do they just sit there and and not use uh use calories was the glop the only big peed hmm i might have been but i got to think about it the horn one says, I think it's Parkoblata Pennsylvanica from the pick, but it's a blurry pick with a flash like, huh? What what state are they in? Zen Monkey says, I was going to say the same thing. I see about 10 more subscribers than before the giveaway. Uh maybe my uh my view just isn't updating of stuff, but uh oh yeah, there's a bunch more subscribers now. It definitely was not that a couple of minutes ago. We are getting so so close to 1k subscribers. I'm in Kentucky. Uh, yeah, so it could be Oleriana, could be Pennsylvania, could even even maybe be Divisa. Kyle likes the numbers, yes. Number go up good, number go down bad. That's how I think. For all the work you do and how you help us, you deserve it, man. Thank you so much for the kind words. Again, I'm here to entertain. I'm here to show cool bugs, and I'm sh here to share what I know about cool bugs. And try to make it so everybody else can have cool bugs too. Because this is a cool bug certified. 
uh, this is a certified um, exact ecstatosoma tiratum classic. Do cedar eaters take redwood? I don't know. I've only used eastern cedar for them, eastern red cedar. But they do. They will also readily swap back to bramble and rose. So you can raise them in typical stick bug stuff, but those things aren't reliably evergreen in Michigan. Red cedar is always green. Will there be any megaphasma dendritic cedar eater juveniles or adults up for auction? No, just ova. Just ova is the best way to ship these. Not that they're fragile, but they are not as bulky as an ecstatosoma and not as durable as an anisolaba. So the, the way to go is definitely shipping the ova of these guys. How long for ova to hatch? From July, August, September, October, November, December. Six-ish months. And then most of the nymphs hatch over the period about one to two months out of the batches you collect. We're going to get a chance at a small culture of white lilacs tonight. I think we will get a chance at that. Uh, Smugger Smoogler. Smugger Smoogler. I forget. Did I send you eggs? And if I sent you eggs, did they hatch? And if they hatch, do you have a good colony going now? Please, please tell everybody how much we appreciate and love these guys if your colony is doing well. When is lightning round soon? I am, I am going at a million miles a minute right now, right in the high of that uh, of that giveaway, with our hundred plus viewers here at the gallery. Yes, but can roaches have fig or blueberry leaves? Definitely, if they're dead, dry, and brown, fresh. Um, it, just see if they eat it. If they don't want it, then they don't eat it. All right, here's an X. Uh, Megaphasma dendricus is also the longest stick bug native to North America. Should probably have added that. The cedar ones tend to get a little bit smaller than the uh, wild ones that are presumably eating a more diverse diet. I have two left, and they are about L3 and feeding on arborvitae. Okay, so you've tried them just on generic arborvitae, and they seem to be doing well. Uh, well, if you end up with just females, let me know, and I can always send a couple males while I have spares. Uh, they may have to go express mail, maybe, but we'll see. Sorry if you already answered. It says Dewey, but are you still going to keep some ecstatosoma in culture, or this was a limited offering? I should always have some ecstatosoma around here and there. Maybe not always auction material. That is a very big, that is a very big megaphasma dentricus. Definitely much larger than I've seen these strains, unless that's a very small person. If that's a small person, that's a that's that's pretty reasonable. All right, going once in the Megaphasma Cedar Eaters. Going twice. Sold. To Braden with a winning bid of 47 and a snipe. A snipe in there. Let's see, what are we going to do next? We'll do another Belocolis. We might take a quick kind of breakish thing to do some satchel stuff. Satchel, just so we can get through everything, I'll probably do yours at a little bit more accelerated pace, but not so fast that you skip out on getting good value for all the things that you want listed. Um, we're going to do a group of five more Belocolis and Gustapes. I guess we did also spend a lot of time on the hype uh, hype train for those uh, rhino roaches, which is fine. It is what it is. It was an occasion. Dead, dry, and brown fig leaves definitely fine. I use them all the time. The latex and fresh leaves deters most things from eating them, so I don't bother with fresh fig leaves, says Devin. We'll do another set of web spinners right after this. Did we ever do the lightning round? No, we're going to do that. We'll do. Here's the order of operations. We'll do one more web spinners for Lord Orion. We will do satchel stuff. And then we will do the lightning round. Will we be getting more centipedes? Yes, there are more centipedes that will be getting auctioned. I feel like this thing wants to molt. I feel like that's why it's so nonchalant. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back because I don't want it to miss molt. We ain't about that here. I 
I put it back in here, and another one grabs onto my hand. Okay. The Belocallus. Let's wrap that up uh, sooner than later so we can get to some web spinners. I'm going to go ahead and find the uh, Oligo Tuma Nigra. There we are. All right. Going once for the Black Velvet Slugs. Going twice. Sold. To control R, the cabane of all of our existence, control R. And I got to cross them off of my sheet. Sold to Loki with a winning bid of 40. All right. We're going to do own last group of oligotoma of the web spinners up for grabs right now. Last group. Then we're going to do satchel stuff. We're going to do some, some Satchel Watsaki stuff. I wonder if they like the body heat. He looks comfy. You know, I don't know if it likes the body heat. There's also this room heater slash just fan next to me. I think it was more the texture is nice to hold on to. Um, but again, the abdomen looked a little limp and like straightened out, so that's kind of how they look before they want to molt, and it wasn't hanging upside down. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to cause a mismolt. It's not something I want from those little guys. All right, Oligotoma nigra, black web spinner, going once, going twice, sold to goose. Juice with a winning bid of 45. Goose Juice, are you the same as Goose Cannon? Or is Goose Juice different than Juice Cannon? Goose Juice, I'm getting all screwed up here. Somebody's got juice and somebody's a cannon. Anyways, congrats, Goose Juice, not Goose Cannon. All right, we're going to do some satchel stuff, everybody. Um this will be – how are we going to do this? These are uh, – I'm going to put that these all have uh, additional things because they're being shipped from Satchel. Uh, I've got to write something out for that. Darn it, am I going to have to Discord open on my phone and, uh, and here? <clears throat> it looks like that's going to have to be the case. It's a tough it's – a, it's, a, it's hard work, but it's honest work. All right, here we go. We're going to be somewhat brisk with this. Satchel item. Contact at Satchel Watsker to pay for your item. Shipping cost is not <clears throat> covered as part of the Roach Crossing Bugapalooza. All right. I have my disclaimer now. We have a group of 20 small Blabberous Giganteus. Starting bid of $35. Nice, another goose. All right, Goose Juice and Goose Cannon are two separate entities. What are the odds? Welcome both of our gooses. These are, I don't know if anybody's noticed, these are the only Blabberous Giganteus that have been offered this whole auction. I don't have any available. So if you want Blabberish Giganteus, there they are. Satchel says shipping is $15 from me. I will add that into the next thing. Satchel says that uh, shipping is $15. Very, very reasonable. All right. Here's an X for the Blabberish Giganteus, the longest roach in culture. The only set that's available at the auction is coming from Satchel. So if you want Giganteus, Partake in this auction. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To Spider Smooches with a winning bid of 40. 
sh shipping is about fifteen dollars. All right, congrats, spider smooches. Next, we have a group of twenty mixed gyna cappuccino. Starting bid of thirty-five mixed nymphs gyna cappuccino. Starting bid of thirty-five dollars. We're making good time with this. It's easier for me not to have to sit and explain everything. Please buy all the satchel stuff so our snail addiction can be funded. Yeah, that's kind of what this is. It is kind of funding people's snail addiction since uh, Satchel has a crippling addiction to native snails right now. All right, here's an X for the Gyna Cappuccino from Satchel Watsaki. Going once. <clears throat> Going twice. Sold. To Taranchi, winning bid of $39. All right, we have 20 small Elliptorina Javonica Halloween Hissers. Starting bid of $35. If you missed out on getting Halloween Hissers, here's another chance. Uh, Satchel is indeed one of the bug plugs. Satchel along with Alan... Satchel low-key responsible for uh, some of the early isopods as well, folks. Chad Mastbergen says, it isn't a snail addiction. Satchel is enabling people. Um, each or total? Uh, it's, it's $15 for whatever you get from Satchel. Satchel is shipping these from his place, not from mine. These are his bugs. I'm just auctioning them here because we got a good deal of people. A spectacular deal in the cappuccino. Don't sleep on some of these hits, people. Let's put an X here for the Elliptorina Javonica Halloween Hissers from Satchel Watts Kerr. Going once. Going twice. And it looks like Beetle Pixel sold. Winning bid of $36. I'll refresh that, but I'm pretty sure Beetle Pixel got it. All right, Beetle Pixel. Beetle Pixel with the meme, the quick meme. Thank you very much. We love that meme. All right, we have a group of 10 fresh adult Platymeris Bigutatus. Winning bid of uh, seems our mods are, are deleting the meme, but that thank you for posting it, Exotic Wilderness. I appreciate it. Mods are working hard to keep the channel clear. Uh, starting bid of forty dollars. Part of the satchel. What the heck was that? <laughs> Everybody else hear that? Uh, was one of the lovers. One of my lovers must have jumped and hit the top of the enclosure. Uh, any more ice pods tonight? Were those all done earlier? We have a couple of straggler isopods here and there that will probably be in the lightning round. Um, I got them already. Just wanted more. It says Luch about Javonica, a ghost. So what is a ghost? Lubber got concussed. Oh my God, you got lovebirds? No, not lovebirds. Lubbers, my lubber grasshoppers. All right, here's an X. Going once for the fresh adult Platymeris bigutatus. Going twice. Sold. To Taranchi with a winning bid of $61. All right, we're almost halfway through the list. We have a group of uh, 10 small to medium Anisomorpha Bupresstoides uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, starting bid of $30. This is one of the brown phases. Uh, we got, uh, you got me hyped. Yeah, I want, I kind of want lovebirds. I told Angela that she has my permission to shoot me in the head if I ever get a parrot, but lovebirds aren't, aren't like, macaw african gray even parrotlet um and they're they're so very cute so i'm considering lovebirds for the future conservatory 
But as I understand it, their excavation for their nest, they can be a little destructive. So I'm kind of on the fence of over just going with some sort of finch or multiple finch species. Cave crickets. We have cave crickets coming up uh, after the lightning round. The lightning McQueen round. Ka-chow. Ka-chow. All right. Yeah, that's what they look like, says photo, uh, says Satchel at photo gallery's picture. All right. Going once for the Anisomorpha buprestoides from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Going twice. Sold. All right, pass. They've been passed on. Uh, you can claim them with satchel if you want them. All right, we have 100 adults. Spoiler alert for our uh, grain pest auction. 100 adult museum affini. Starting bid of $30. The shiny spider beetles. Starlings are super underrated for a cool bird or Nicobar pigeons. Quaker if they're legal in your state. Um, Quakers are legal in Michigan. I just don't, I want something that's going to be easy to take care of. And that's going to fill the conservatory with a nice, uh, tropical ish sound while also being something that I can catch and sell to help pay the many bills that will inevitably arise from having a conservatory. Lord Orion says all parrots are destructive. I have three over the years. They're messy little critters. Uh, a person does need to recollect um, Crystal Sudophilus. I and TJ lost most of ours. Yeah, they didn't do so well for me either the, the one or two times I worked with them. Um, what type of starlings? Not Europeans, right? I should steal some from the Home Depot parking lot. Quakers or starlings? Uh, Kasharan says, my Quaker is hilarious. Marshall Arachnid says, plus one for Nicobar pigeons, but I had no idea those were available. Are they available? Are Nicobar pigeons available? Oh, those are gorgeous. Can you can you buy those legally? Can I own that legally? Because if I can, I, I think I would I think I would go with that. That's a gorgeous animal. It looks like uh reminds me of the bird from up. I would definitely get that. That's one of the dodo relatives, right? Um, my mom breeds lovebirds. Interesting. They're hard to come by, but the f there are a few breeders in the States. Work with them at Detroit Zoo, just as dumb as any other pigeon. Very positive. All right, here's an X for the Museum of Finney, shiny spider beetles. 100 adults going once. Going twice. Sold. <clears throat> Two could be baked season, could be Jesus Freak. Uh, yeah, I think I like those Nicobar pigeons. That could be a good species for the conservatory. Um, closest relative of the birdo, the, the birdo, the dodo. I live too far into the sticks to see starlings. Really? I thought they formed huge, huge uh, swarms even out in the sticks. All right. The winner is Baked Season beating out Jesus Freak. Uh, we're getting near the end of the list. Here's a cool one. Uh, we're going to skip over one of these for a second. We're going to do... 10 Angui Spira Alternata. I think Satchel has the locality for these. Uh, he's You're free to post that, Satchel, if you do have it. Um, captive bread. Starting bid of $30. Satchel sent me some of these. They're pretty cool. Um, yeah, just European starlings? Can you tell us a little about the conservatory project? Is it built for abandoned animals? Uh, no, the conservatory is a conservatory in the greenhouse plant sense. It's going to be a building approximately, hopefully, again, stars align. I could move out and be like, hey, guys, Roach Crossing here. Uh, we can't pay and afford anything, so I'm running auctions once a week for three hours every weekend. Anyways, hopefully a 50 by 100 foot greenhouse building where I can toss some stuff where I'm like, this doesn't breed in captivity without a lot of work, but maybe in this much square footage, and if I throw a bunch of this stuff in here, it will do it on its own. So that's the basic plan for that. So, all right, Seamast, wanting those, was it flamed, flamed tiger shells? Tiger flame shells, maybe? Going once for the Anguispira alternata. A detritivore, by the way, and native, going twice, 
sold to Seamast, winning bid of $30. We're going to hop right into the next thing, which is a group of 20 Subulina Flame Tiger Snail. Thank you, Apple. Subulina Octona, starting bid $20. We're getting near the end of the satchel uh, list here. We've got just a couple of things. They're constantly filthy, says Apples. That's interesting. Um, I see Grackles and used to think they were Starlings. I wish that was my life. Emerald Superb and Violet Back Starlings are what I more are more what I meant. Are those in trade in the U.S. and exotic bird people? Uh, the snails eat detritus. The flame tiger snails eat detritus and fish flakes and some zucchini and whatnot. The Subulina Octoma also eat pretty much everything and are ridiculously easy. Zen Monkey, they are everywhere in Wisconsin. No limit how many you can shoot. Very invasive. Yes, that's the European starling. There's many more beautiful tropical, subtropical starlings. I'm just curious what species exactly somebody had in mind with that recommendation. At Dewey, racing pigeons are really available. Pretty much the same as messenger pigeons, I think. I still, when I move, I'm going to get a really nice mini pigeon building coop or whatever. Um, and I have my eyes on a couple of strains, but I really want parlor rollers. I was in contact with a man who was going to sell me parlor rollers, and you know what? I think he actually died. I think he was really old. I was in contact with him, and we were going back and forth for a bit, and he said he would contact me back. Didn't contact me a couple weeks, a couple months. I think it's over a year now, and I've sent a couple follow-ups. I think he actually died, which is really unfortunate. Uh, no Platymeris species Mambo, uh, unfortunately, tonight, WW, Potato Dog 64, what do these snails eat? Pretty much anything, dog food, uh, fruits, vegetables, etc. etc. Um, tiny snail, stupid small, um, the Subulina Octona R. Here's an X for those. Uh, going once, going twice, introduced everywhere in the United States, including in miscellaneous greenhouses and far too north places for them to survive outside, and sold to Dewey, winning bid of 35. Okay, we have another group. We have a satchel group of six uh, below callus, not horribly illegal, yeah, every greenhouse in the country would be fine if they were uh, if they were actually illegal because they're everywhere. And Gustapi, Bill Collis and Gustapi's starting bid of thirty dollars. We've uh, oh, I gotta edit this to put the satchel tag above it. Before you bid, be aware. Edited to make a satchel bid item. Okay. We've still retained some crazy viewership, guys. Thank you so much for staying here. Uh, Coney's Coab with Ice Pods, or will they eat them? They did really well with one of my Armadillidium vulgari uh, localities until I got annoyed with the snail slime, and then I nixed them. I am sad. I really wanted some leather leaves. We have the pancakes, but hopefully by the midsummer or the fall auction, we will have uh, leather, like proper Florida leather leaves. Um, Hyper Beam will have more spiny, spi shiny spider beetles and then some in the grain pest auction. This is just the satchel stuff. Sorry to get them. They remind me of some nostalgic childhood snails. Where is pancakes? I don't have pancakes yet. I like Florida pancakes, but not the, the pancake pancakes. Here's an X for the, the black leather leaf slug slash black pancake slugs going once, going twice. Sold to Burb with a winning bid of 30. Um, let's see. And then we have six captive bred Caracolis Marginella Juveniles starting bid of $50. And I got to put the satchel thing here. All right, we are at our second to last satchel item. I love you guys. I love this hobby. Thank you, Hyper Beam. My elementary school in Vietnam had lots of green. There was a colony of similar snails around a patch of moss under a drain drip. That is a nostalgic memory, isn't it? That's kind of like the roly polies at my parents' house. 
I feel you. You go to lift something and you see just this little group of them all breeding and just living their best life. And you're just like, huh, that's pretty neat. You know, the, the, the sparks of the husbandry wheels start to turn. Uh, the, the spark of creativity starts to turn the wheels of husbandry in your head. There we go. Jose, what earwigs do you see? I'm desperately seeking labia minor. I need labia minor. Somebody please send me labia minor. Please, somebody's got to find them. Uh, hey, Satchel, you may want to provide a picture of your Caracolis, considering they're one of the coolest things you put up for auction. Or somebody may want to provide a Caracolis picture. I'm just here to I'm just here to be pretty face. European, never anything else. Well, I have news for you. Supposedly, they split the uh, European earwigs in North America into two species, uh, with one being a Western species, one being Eastern species. So go figure. I'm jealous of Vietnam's isopod variety. Should be jealous of Vietnam's lots of stuff variety. All right. Here's an X for the Caracolis. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To love with scales. Winning bid of 61. And finally, we have our last thing, our last satchel item. We have six Camborellis. Thank you for that meme, Circa. I really appreciate that. That's a good meme. Camborellis shoe felt TI starting bid of $20. This is the last satchel item. Get ready. The lightning round is on its way, and I will be uh, I will be spamming that uh, in a couple of places. I'll be spamming that. Imagine the variety before they all got bombed and Asian orange dropped on them. I wonder if going past an early successional habitat actually uh, benefited the species diversity. Um. No wonder half the people struggle. I always thought that was a joke. Didn't know it was. And actually a real earwig. It is. That's the Latin name. The genus is labia and the species is minor. No, I miss Caracolis while I was away. It says Mozart had a pet starling. I believe that. That's That doesn't sound unreasonable. Um, all right. Good small communal crayfish, I think. The uh, dwarf Cajun, 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 Cajun crayfish. Thank you, Satchel, for those... Uh, those pictures. Huh. 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 Oh, guys, I am so brainless. I don't even know how to do my own auction. <laughs> Everybody put a period after your bid, and then I go to bid on something, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, who's, who's the brainlet now? How does this work? How does this... How does this work? Because I'm the one who calls the end of the auction. How do I... Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I deserve whatever I get for stuff. You can't edit or I kill. Um, need to submit new message with period. Again, uh, I, I actually did want to bid on these, but I realized I can't actually bid because I'm the one who says it stops. I could just keep out bidding people if I really wanted to. So Satchel... Um, I, have, I I don't apologize for starting this bid stampede, but Satchel, I'm going to want some of these eventually, by the way. So, all right. Here's the original geckos putting the axe. I, I'm going to do this, have Satchel call it. All right. Um, Satchel, you call this bid. I'm going to pin this as well. Satchel, get your butt in here. You're calling the bid for these. What are we at, 23 right now? Get your butt in here. Satchel, call the bid. Using the protocol we have established. Because I'm getting in on this. I kind of want these guys. All right. Satchels, there we go. All right. We're, we're, we're getting, getting ready for the countdown. Uh, you know what? There you go. This is kind of fun. I can see why you guys like doing this. 
Where somebody's gonna get some Camborellis. Oh shoot. He has all the power. Satchel, how do you like wielding that power? Will anybody challenge me? Challenge me, I dare you. Challenge me. We're gonna T pose to assert dominance. Yes! I win the Roach Crossing auction. Yeah boy! All of you can eat it. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that was fun. Crying and hitting the wall. The funny thing is, Satchel gave me this list long before the auction. And uh, I could have, I guess I could have just gotten them at any point before that. But you know what? This was more fun. And we had a good time. I had a good time. Really opened my eyes to uh, how addicting this is. I really, I understand. I understand the last minute stuff now sick i guess i gotta contact satchel to uh the auctioneer becomes the auctioneer yes that was some fun all right well i got 40 bucks i gotta make back so let's uh let's do it uh, reclusively we have four thank you <laughs> i love it thank you very much we're gonna go ahead i'm gonna put that on there thank you satchel for hosting this and satchel auctioneer and auction items. I hear some some dog noises outside. I might go check on that, but I was going to put something up while I was gone. What was I going to put up? We were going to do some five Loxo Skelly's Reclusa. I'll be right back. I'm going to go make sure everything's all good in the other room. And Actually, I should get a refill this. I'll be right back, everybody.
Double all right. I'm back. I've got my liquid IV, which I should be an official spokesperson for. I have been told. It's the only thing keeping me alive at this point. Keep the discussion unrelated to the bid to the general, y'all. Thank you, Alan, for being our friendly, dead, friendly, friendly, deadly, friendly neighborhood South Korean policeman. All right, we've had some good bids while I've been gone. Let's see what the com conversation has gone to. I always thought brown recluse is communal. I always thought the opposite. With enough space, you can brown the clues. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, uh, yeah, if you have enough space and enough uh, food and proper whatever, you can find multiple recluses within like inches of each other, pretty much almost touching. Get tied into a separate auction and you can experience it from the outside like us. I love liquid ID, says IV, says Bonnie D. What flavor are you drinking? Let's see. We got the sugar-free electrolyte uh, lemon lime. Really, really into lemon. Look at this. This is those energy drinks earlier. Citrus flavor, probably lemon lime. What's these cough drop thingies? Citrus flavor. What's the liquid IV? Also citrus flavor. When is the earliest you will ship? That is a wonderful question. And probably start the – some stuff like snakes will go out first. So that will be like the week of the 15th. The bulk of things will start going out the week of the 22nd. Week of the 22nd. All right. Brown the clues. Thank you, Obey the Snarf, for that. Um, again, our mods, my mods, I guess, are doing their best to keep the bid channel clear. And I appreciate and respect their efforts. I also appreciate how Exotic Wilderness is our resident meme lord with a couple of others. Neutroba has chimed in with some good stuff here and there. All right. Going once on the brown to the clues. Going, excuse me, going twice. Sold. To Morbid with a winning bid of 30. For the browned the clues. What was the starting bid again? Uh, she would, thank you, Bob Harris. I just see the warning. The shipping is not included. Uh, oh, I never put a starting bid on the brown recluses. That's fine. Um when is starting bid of zero dollars, I guess, and winning bid of uh, thirty to morbid. Sorry about that, y'all. It is getting late. Literally bidding while driving to work. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's do some. Let's do some whips. We have two Frinus Cubensis. Um, I gotta ask Alan Botanical Park. Cal need to ask Kai slash Alan. This is not the old locale that I had. We're going to do a starting bid of thirty dollars for these. I uh, I can't remember what what's what's the name of the place that this stock came from. Alan Kai uh, Kai owed me some stuff and brought them to me, and I he did not write down the name of the place. Uh, ben Groover says, oh, yeah, I guess just the email Tim is due with it. Yep, just get it to me as soon as the auction wraps up, as soon as possible. Uh, payment must be done. It's usually done once we wrap up in the emails. I will give you a projected ship date in your email and things that, you know, I run behind, I run ahead of time, I squeeze a box out I didn't think I could get out. So it's very variable. There's dates that don't work for you. We can work that out. But this is a long process. This will take me about uh, four, four weeks to get under control and probably a month and a half to get everything squared up and sent out. Unsexed. Unsexed whips. Edited for locale. All right. Uh, Kyle, I heard a suggestion of an arachnid channel and roach channel on the Discord server. That may be doable. We might do that. We That will be an after auction stuff. We'll really start looking into some of those things. 
Frinus. Ah, crap. Um, they're pair of Frinus Cubensis. Sorry, guys. If that changed, you are welcome to retract bids. Para Frinus. You are welcome to retract your bids if them being para Frinus Cubensis and not Frinus Cubensis changes anything. Uh, you may you may retract bids if you did not want para Frinus and wanted Frinus. I will allow that. You may attract bids if you did not want pair of Frinus and why Frinus. If you just want a whip spider, here you go. All right. Here's an X for these guys. I think we're going to do some assassins next. Man, I walked away for five minutes and missed the reclusa. That's how it be. Kyle, don't mail my claim thing. Yeah, I'm moving in like three weeks. Don't worry. It's not going out anytime soon. Uh, yes, please. All right. Going once. Going twice. Sold. To... Hadded Tenacity. That is, if Hadded Tenacity with a winning bid of $50, if you did, in fact, um, want these, for, as, if they're paraphrased. If you just wanted a, a Whip Spider, here you go. That's a big boo-boo of mine. I'm giving everything to Mila for free. Um, babe, you might need to work on your brainwashing tactics there. Um, we have a group of 12, Platy, Maris, Bigutatus, Ghost, starting bid of $40. This is the spooky white abdomen and spooky white-legged uh, Bigutatus color form. Uh, it's most impressive on the nymphs, I'll say that. The adults, their legs are just a little paler. So... That's how it be. Ghost as bug. There we go. There's some good pictures of nymphs. Wow, that one picture on the bottom is so old and out of date. It's a little embarrassing. I guess I'll have to have uh, Mr. Jojo Macro get some nice updated pictures in a couple of months. That'll be just swell. Just swell, guys. That uh, the hype from the hundred viewers really took a lot out of me, but I should still be hype. We're still fluttering at eighty viewers. It's the most ridiculous that we've ever had. This is nuts. This isn't the fall. I keep saying the fall bug up blues is bigger than the spring one. You know, these might be orient talents, but I know it has no observations around me. It could be in large numbers in one place. Sounds more like orientalis and Parker Blatt to me. Here's an X for the ghost assassin bugs. Going once. Going twice. Sold. Shazam. To Goose Cannon with a winning bid of 46. Goose Cannon. To differentiate from the other goose person. Multiple goose people. Okay, let's do um, 10 Pseudophilus Californianus, starting bid of $40. These have locality information. I need to dig it up. I think the person who sent these to me might be in this very Discord at the moment, but let me go see if I can find them. In my all of their invertebrates list compendium. Bay Area, California. Bay Area, California. <clears throat> Edited for locality. 
No, what does no diddy mean? Um, dream of Californication. Here's an X. We're going to try and scoot through a couple of things now. <clears throat> ah, there's a picture, I think, from one of my old blogs. Thank you, Photo Gallery. These are F2 captive breads also, I should mention. Going once. Going twice. Very dry tolerant uh, pseudophilus. Sold. <clears throat> To Inverterarium, winning bid of $40. Big McThankies from McSpankies to Inverterarium. Any Chirikawi today? No Tennyson, no Chirikawi. Um, standard Cave Cricket Care with a moist corner. They seem to like some rotting leaf litter and stuff in their diet as well, too. Lord Orion can't tell whether... To like if there's another goose or whether I should fight them to be the one and only goose. Uh, goose on goose violence is never the answer, only the question. I guess it could sometimes be the answer. All right, next. 40, Tenolipisma species Israel, starting bid $30. Tenolipisma species Israel. This is... Currently, the largest species slash strain of silverfish that I culture. Currently, the largest until the person slash people with stylifera get me a box of stylifera from Florida. Then that will be the largest species that I have in culture. Uh, can we get a poll on this? Which crickets is better, K crickets or Gryllus? Let's do that. Let's do a poll. For which is the better cricket? Gryllus species or Pseudophilus species? Good poll idea, Exotic Wilderness. Good